<coughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, we are at day three of the Bugapalooza auction. I did not sleep the best, but I slept pretty okay. And we have a long day ahead of us. And but it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to tell everybody right now. We're going to be taking a break. We're getting through the rest, the last of the roaches. It's like 10 more things. And then we're going to be jumping to uh, isopods, which I still have to go in inventory. So we'll do the roaches. I don't know how long this will take. Who knows? <laughs> Half an hour to an hour. I'll put up the thing, you know, that I'll be gone for, you know, an hour or something. I'll go in, in inventory isopods. Come back up. We'll go through that. Uh, for spider people, there is a small chance that there will be uh, some more. There will be some jumpers. Let me see. I'm working on that right now. Of course, th that's assuming Jojo Macro doesn't just swoop in for all of them. There's Jojo. Let me say good morning to people. Stella Springtails is here. Zen Monkey, Magnificent Animals, Duchess Venom, Alan's here. Oh, man. Alan, you're on like the same time frame as I am. You're just here all the time. Eucaria, Satchel's here. Jojo's here. Uh, Breeze here. Chain's here. Good morning, Vietnam. Chris, what new bug are you most looking forward to? Jumpers, you say. Um... Yeah, that's a good picture there. That's pretty much honestly me when I woke up this morning. I like woke up, I turned over to Angela. I was like, I'm gonna go suffer now for us. And she's like, Aww. so uh I also see I've gotten some message requests. I do have to go through there. I'm going to accept these DMs really quick on Discord. Get something put up here for us to, to, to do some bids on. Let me double check the message requests. Um, okay, a couple people claiming some stuff in the uh, pass. So I'm going to go ahead and say that they are belong to those people i'm gonna put up a couple things again too um so all right here we go um i was gonna do two of these last night but there was not much enthusiasm so we're gonna go ahead and do a group of them now 50 mixed i don't have to say mixed elliptorina you've i got a starting bid of 70 dollars the v horn hissers i think it was the second to last thing that we did last night Again, was not impressed with the uh, reception last night. Maybe I won't be impressed with the reception this morning. Uh, a lot of people saying good morning. Appreciate the energy. I appreciated the uh, Dragon Ball Z uh, gif as well. Sal has been up for three hours waiting for pods. I went to bed like nine last night, so I missed most of the fun. So, Satchel, we're going to have some good fun today. Uh, we're underdog, the underdog. Hello, Ali Last. Yeah, we're going to have some fun today. Again, I think I'm going to see if Angela will get over her, her shyness to uh, come on screen for Green Beetle, Green Pest shenanigans later today. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have some We're, we're going to have some drinks. We've got a full list of uh, Green Pests here. My collection continues to grow, uh, sometimes out of my power. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be good. You know, it's a good good cap and cap on things. So funzy doozy. Go back to bed. It was two a.m. or so. Fell asleep with Kyle still on. Uh, morning, bitter blood. So many people here on this lovely Sunday morning. Let me crack open my Excel sheet, and while things are uh, people are churning over what I just posted, I'll go ahead and. 
uh, finish up with uh, the pass list things. The Fusca are claimed. Again, there's there's some the later things got last night. There's some good stuff on that pass list that has been claimed. Like that group of a hundred blabbers Fusca. We had just had friends. They have lots of friends. Uh, Levi Gata were claimed. Last night's group were claimed. So by Bat Guano Crazy. Highly amusing. And I think there was somebody else who claimed something. Uh, Neutroba did claim some stuff. But there's somebody else who told me they wanted something. And I gotta, I'll gotta, i go to the pass list and see. Uh, again, Bree was so kind as to... Uh, put everything into one place. Lobopterella, Dimidia Typees, claimed by C. elegans, Speckles, Fusca, Levi Gata have been claimed. Um, I'll have to go through and do some updates there. So, oh boy. <clears throat> Another count. Uh, this is another count, Dillo. We the count from last night has been claimed already. Bree, if there's anything not marked on there that you got DMs for overnight, let me know and I'll update it. Uh, Back Guano Crazy claimed the Levi Gata, Where Tay 26 claimed the Blabbers Fusca, but I really swear somebody claimed the Episimplos and something else. Oh, claimed by Lizard Beans. I just uh, see anything they claimed anything else. I think that was it. Was the Sundayaka. And I thought they claimed one other thing, but doesn't look like it. Let me make sure. Episimplos. Claimed by Lizard Beams. Okay, I, never mind. I did write it down. I still have a sneaking suspicion there's something else, but you know the, everybody's coordinating in Discord, so... Morning, WW. Stella, I will be at Taylor next, not this weekend, but the following weekend. I will put my face on, and I will be there. Um, why all the cool people live in Michigan? Yeah, we got a nice little cluster of bug people in Michigan. It's very nice. All right, Bid Central. Here we go. Here's an X for the Elliptorina Levi Gata, the V-Horn Hissers. <clears throat> a very large group. I don't know why. I just had a quick surge of emotion of how much I like hissers. I think I had... Did I just experience childlike wonder? <laughs> I was just thinking about how, how nice it looks when you have a big, healthy colony of hissers. You know, they're all like... You just you got your old adults, and they've all had babies, and all the babies are, like, just maturing. And, like, it's just... There's quite... There's, quite, there's something to that. There's a magic that you don't quite get with some other bugs. Maybe it's because hissers are so big. Um, speaking of big hissers, I lost two Cleveland Portentosa derived uh, males into the office here, waiting for them to turn up. I don't think anything's going to come of it because there's no way they can get into any enclosures, but uh, they did get out into here. But I kind of need them back because they're semi-important for a breeding project. So I'm like, hmm. Turn on my heater too. A little chilly in here. It's only 78 right now. Even though I don't mind if it gets into the 60s. <clears throat> uh, I don't want to be shivering in here. All right. Lipterina Levi Gata going once. V horn hissers. Going twice. And sold. To Bama style AGR. With a winning bid of $85. All right. That's what I want to see. Bama style AGR. This is what I was hoping to see. Everybody would be a little refreshed this morning. I knew the snipe was coming. Snipe on site. Set up an enclosure they can get into. Hissers are my favorite. Next thing you know, you see a victor with a huge hisser half eaten in his mouth. The dogs are so weird. I will tell you about why the dogs are so weird with bugs 
as soon as I put up another group or something. All right, we got a group of 100 Panclora species hobby, starting bid of $40. This is the rotund banana roach, the one that for years we thought was uh, Nivea, but actually isn't, which is kind of mm -hmm. cool because we went from having like what we thought was one uh, Panclora species uh, readily or really easily in captivity to two. Very mm -hmm. amusing. And then, of course, all the stuff that came has come out of Florida, too. So, oh, I just realized I put the, uh, I put the butt pics there. I didn't, uh, I didn't put uh, the picture of the top down. Whoopsies. Oh, I just remembered I got to, it's in my rotund. I have a picture of a colony of rotund banana roaches. But anyways, this shows you the difference between Nivea on the right and species hobby on the left. And yes, they are both adult males. For anybody who uh, who doubts, I have taken there are better pictures showing the segmentation here. And obviously, people have them in person and can confirm. So, um, this is the smallest panclora in culture, too. I'm pretty sure. Actually. I've been talking so much, my throat's been hurting a bit, so I had to take a menthol cough drop last night, and I hate the sugar ones. They make my mouth feel disgusting. So I've got had to buy the expensive sugar-free ones, and actually they work so much better. Like, it's so much more drug-like than just taking a regular cough drop. Um, 72 degrees here in Alabama. Yeah, we're about to go through a heat wave. It's going to be in the 80s, and to reward myself, uh, I rem realized slash remembered that I'm actually having my, my root canal, like the final whatever they're doing, done on Tuesday. So that's going to suck. But I really want to take some time to go out and just look for like some bugs in the evenings the next couple of days. I really need to go out and have a little bit of fun. Um, somebody's uh, exact wilderness is splitting uh, the leaf mimic, uh, Borneo leaf mix with somebody. That's nice. <clears throat> orang mango work something out that's good to hear uh what's it like to keep panclora panclora are pretty easy or you find them in the wild and rotting wood and not maybe not even just rotting wood but just like wood in general you find them in the wild in wood a lot or around woody debris and in captivity they seem to do the best when they have a very heavily wood-based substrate. damn i love the emoji things there um, and so that's, at least for the nymphs, the adults definitely love fruit. So <clears throat> I still haven't gotten it to where like a culture never crashes. Like my species giant, um, kind of went through that couple of months ago. Maybe it was like four or five months ago. They kind of went on the decline. I had a whole bunch of them. I sold a whole bunch and they kind of started to decline a bit. So I did a whole big refresher. Uh, the old females kicked out some babies, and now that's the next generation that's just going to, I know it's going to infest the container. They've got, they're got they growing so fast and doing so well, but I did have to do a refresh of everything. So, Alan, I'm checking on the Laddie Blatella Oots, really hoping that these hatch. I have them right, I have them right uh, next to the computer so that I can see the second that something happens in that container. <clears throat> All right, here's the X for the Panclora species hobby. I'm going to see what else is going going on here in the YouTube live stream. We got a lot of people. My dog ate a Darapsa Myron larva once. <clears throat> These eat grapes. I was really worried. Yeah, that is a danger situation, but she was fine. Um, for the most part, the dogs avoid eating stuff they shouldn't that's organic. Uh, but the weird thing about bugs is, like, they ignore bugs a lot, but then there will be some days where Victor will just – have will get a bug up his butt um, to just uh, snap at flies and eat like yellow jackets. There was one time I was sitting on the patio and again, he normally ignores them, but he found a yellow jacket and he like snapped it and he did like a little to like catch it. And then he was just sort of, he was playing with it. He was pawing at it. He was sniffing it and he was like chewing on it with his incisors it was like, you know, here's this little teeny tiny yellow jacket. And by the time that he's done doing all this, it's just a sh like a, a chitinous smear on the concrete. 
And Nazi came up to like say, "Oh, what you doing?" And he went like food defensive mode, like on her over this smear of a yellow jacket. You know, so the only, only thing that I could think of was that maybe that yellow jacket had gone off. Maybe it found something dead and it had eaten the meat, uh, as yellow jackets sometimes do. And so it was very, you know, it was very appealing to him. It was very meaty. And so that's why he was having such a good time chewing on it. it was so defensive of it was because it was like it was very meaty to him. So Elsie asking about smoky brown roaches being a good feeder. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know if he wants me to name drop, but my contact who used to be the head of the uh, Brighton USDA APHIS uh, uh, Emerald Ash Borer Research Facility uh, used to use paraplanita as feed, he would use Americana, but I see no reason why Smoky Browns wouldn't work too. He used to use them as um, uh, feeders for his whole Manta collection when he was in grad school. He was telling me about that. He would actually he would just wild catch them. Uh, I think it was in, maybe it was in New York, and he would use them. He said the Mantids really loved them. I'll get to some of the YouTube comments in a minute. I'm going to wrap up the bids on the Panclora. Going once, <clears throat> going twice. Sold to Fancy Cloud with a winning bid of $42. Fancy Cloud. Let's get another one up here and I'll go through some more YouTube uh, comments. We'll do a group of 200 Henshutadenia Flexivita starting bid. Of forty dollars, the giant lobster cockroach. Again, for some reason today, I'm saying these names and grabbing the pictures off my site, and I'm feeling awfully nostalgic. For some reason, I want to say my first colony of these came from Bugs in Cyberspace, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Actually, no, they didn't. My colony of giant lobster roaches came from, I can't, I don't know, I can't remember the guy's name. I could I'd probably look it up. It was a local person here in Southeast Michigan who runs the company Animal Magic, which does like, you know, handling and like they bring in like, you know, kangaroo, you know, that sort of stuff. They bring in kangaroos and big uh, boids and stuff to schools, you know, that kind of stuff. And um, he used to post classifieds ads on arachna boards. And in my youth, it must have been like 2009, 2008, 2009, um, I was, you know, I was on arachna boards and I'd be, same with the Roach Forum, I'd be refreshing the threads and seeing like, oh, where's, the, like, who's selling what? Like, where, who's got something I could go and get, you know, something I don't have already or that I've never seen before. For a good price, and that popped up on Arachna boards, and so I emailed him or messaged him on Arachna boards, and I uh, asked him like, "Hey, could like, I see that you're in like Michigan? Could we like meet up?" And he said, "Oh yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm my like kid or my I think my kid or my cousin's birthday is happening at this Olive Garden off the freeway. I can meet you there because he lived um, in." Brownsville, I think, is where Animal Magic is. And so I go to this Olive Garden and uh, pull up, and I think I, oh, man, I had a flip phone then. I think I called him, and he came out, and he had this, what I reckon was this, a 32-ounce deli cup with, like, I don't know, 20 lo giant lobster roaches in it. And he was like, oh, yeah, I got these a while ago from this other guy online. You know, there's not a lot of these, and the, not a lot of people have these. You know, they're kind of rare and all this stuff, and you know, I can't remember. Maybe it was like, I don't know, thirty dollars for the like twenty of them or something like that. And uh, yeah, so I just remember that because we had to drive to the Olive Garden to pick those up. It was uh, quite an experience. So that's where my colony comes from. Uh, here's an X for wrapping up the bids. Let me get them written down here. Is quite a bit of roach meat. So we got uh, <clears throat> I hate the sugar ones too. Yeah, the sugar cough drops. They're just so like first ingredients like 
corn syrup, second ingredients, high fructose corn syrup. It's like it makes your saliva congeal and your mouth feel gross. And then these other ones is like Fisherman's Friend or Fisherman's Delight, sugar-free ones. It is just a blast of menthol, but oh my lord, does it work. It was so soothing. It's very strong, but so soothing. Uh, Luch says, I was saying, Kyle, you're not tired of us yet. I use the sugar-free too. Exotic Wilderness says, Cat ate a hisser nymph before. That's fun. Uh, my Savannah will eat bugs and foam. I haven't seen Baloo eat many bugs. Uh, Dan was telling me that Blue's mom and aunt usually hunt grasshoppers. There's a lot of differentialis on his property. Um, so, I, you know, that, that checks out. What's your favorite native wildflower in Michigan, Kyle? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Stephen Logan. Like the video, guys. We got to get those likes up. Um, I'm a big fan of violets, rudbeckias, hibiscus. Skull caps and asters. I've, I've got kind of a you know I, I do appreciate like you know going out and seeing like a Michigan lily and stuff like that, but you know I I like the utilitarian beauty of rudbeckias and violets and, and all those other things. And there are plenty of you know uncommon and rare species amongst all that stuff. So Mark Rosenthal, thank you, Stella's Springtails. Yes, Mark Rosenthal from Animal Magic is where my and shoot to Denny are coming from. All right, there's the X on the Flexivita. We're going to wrap it up. Going once on the giant lobster roaches. Going twice. <coughs> Sold to Dr. Humroid with a winning bid of $100 fighting against Chris Sniper. Sounds like Victor wants to come in, but I can't let him. Him, him and Nazi got to play. They got to get their morning ruffian energy out. All right. We have a group of. Do a couple of my Yuri Kodis uh, localities. We have a special, very special locality. Not as special as that other one last night, but special in that. It's just not that we would never get these again or that it could never happen again. It's just tricky to get stuff from. Texas, because there's not a lot of... Texas is a huge place, and the places that have a lot of the coolest stuff, there's not a lot of people living there. So, at least not a lot of bug people living there. So, we have 30 Yurikotis Floridana from League City, Texas, starting bid of $40. I'm going to go on INAT and find a picture. So, these look identical to the most of the Florida mainland Yurikotis. But they're very small. They mature much smaller than any of the Florida Eurycotus. So I'm going to see if League City's got any records. Might be from the guy who collected them, actually. Um, all right, not quite. So League City is just south and east of Houston. I'm going to see if there's any. Again, I can't. There's, it's not like a picture is going to convey the size um, of the individuals. Um, I don't know if the, the color and patterning doesn't really seem significantly different, but again, the size, they are noticeably smaller than any of the other Floridana that I've worked with. So I'll just put this picture here. This is from INAT, uh, nearby the collection locality. You can kind of see in that picture that the, the, they're just not as like they're not as robust looking as the ones from Florida. Those Silver Springs ones can get quite massive. Uh, the starting stock of Monroe County were quite massive. I think it was just because they were living in high population or lo low population density in the wild. But then I'm also wondering if I cut the popul population density uh, of the captive ones, if they will also reach that size. So. Um, I'll go through here and look at the uh, 10 out of 10 roach, says orang mango on the Henshu Tidenia flexivitas. Uh, I don't know what it is about roaches that have white heads, but it's very appealing to me for some reason. Uh, yeah, the, the ones that have differently colored heads in their body are very, definitely cute. Oxyhaloa have that. Analacta are kind of like that, too. Um all right, I'll put an X for those Eurycotus in the in the chat. Again, the smallest Floridana locality. 
uh, who needs sleep when you have has when you has bugs to buy. I really want those smoky brown roaches, but how fast do they breed? They're pretty fast breeding. Uh, again, they are a they are a blatted. They lay a lot of of ooths. They're um, Brunea fuliginosa and Australasii under their preferred each's preferred conditions all breed at about the same rate. Alex asks, ask, asking, asking if I like orchids. I do like orchids. I will try to grow a couple of them someday. Um, I like that weedy one, the false hellbore. That uh, a couple of times people have sent me pictures of that for identification. I have to be like, oh, yeah, that's an invasive orchid. And they'll be like, no, that's not an orchid. It's not pretty. It's like they don't have to be pretty. It's a family of plants, you know. They don't all look the same. So, you know, it's kind of culture shock for them. Yukari says, I foresee a day four of auctions. No, I will fight tooth and nail not to do a day four. All right, going once on the League City, Yuri Kodis. Going twice. And pass. All right, they're up for grabs. All right, we next have 25 Bursatria Fumigata, variety Fumigata, <clears throat> starting bid of $40. This is the, what is the common name for these? I'm so out of the loop with common names, guys. Oh, just the Cuban Burrowing Roach. But this is the darker color phase of Fumigata. Uh, photo gallery. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that because I just grabbed the I grabbed the proper photo. There we go. Um, so the kind of like a long winged Bursatria Rothi. Again, somebody's got to do some work on Cuba. I'm sure if somebody go if somebody goes to Cuba and they were to collect across the island the Bursatria, they would find out. So many relationships would be cleared up. We'd find out what's actually related to what, and what yet. You know, it would be this. This would not be actually. Are there any records on INAT? They might be something kind of like Hemoblabra or Blabrus in the Keys, where you have to seek them out nowadays. Genus Bursatria seems to be some observations. Oh, there's some from the Bahamas. Oh my goodness. There's some from what's that? What is this island? I don't know what this island is here. This the. They're so close to the U.S. Oh, that's a beautiful Bursatria that looks like Cabrera Eye on what is this island? I don't even know what this island is. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, so it looks like Cabrera Eyes on the eastern uh, end of, of Cuba. You know, who knows if any of these are accurate? Who knows if some of our hobby stuff is accurate? At least you know Cabrera Eye is an accurate ID for the stripy ones. But for the other ones, you know, um, well, I think they just have everything labeled as Cabrera Eye. Uh, that definitely does not look like Cabrera Eye. There's a Macropterus form. This looks, this Macropterus form from near, from the town of Playa, Playa Giron, Playa Giron or Playa Mach, Machio, um, looks identical to Fumigata variety palata in culture. Looks identical to that you know uh, i would assume that if you find a picture of a bursatria that is very similar to hobby stock uh near a major port or tourist destination there's a good chance our stock came from there so got do i got to love the bursatria again they need more love they used to have a lot more love and then they were kind of i don't know cast aside as time went on even though they're a they're a very large uh blabbered roach Exotic Wilderness says, I don't I don't know if common wilderness is considered wildflower, but it's definitely my favorite flower to find in Michigan. So a diverse amount of bugs that use the plant. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a wildflower. Wildflower is a very arbitrary term. There's people who consider introduced um, species of plant that have pretty flowers, such as wild carrot and chicory, uh, to be wildflowers. Uh, it's kind of an arbitrary, arbitrary thing to slap on things. How many roaches before isopods, says Stephen Logan? We've got six or seven-ish more roaches to go through. Uh, Stop saying 
amount when you mean number amounts for singular descriptors while numbers for plural ones. Um, I will do my best to uh, change that, uh, but I don't know if I can alter my vernacular on this little sleep. Or uh, Luch likes orchids and loves hibiscus. Alex says, I have Cypripedium seedlings if you want any. I'm going to look up Cypripedium. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, when I move, I can put more effort into growing some of that more fancy stuff. At the moment, uh, very pragmatic about what I have, and I'm going to be – I have a lot of plants I need to dig up or get seed of before I move, trust me. There's probably on the property over 200 species of plants, maybe more than that, of native plants alone currently. Just saying that I called the day four yesterday, says Zen Monkey. All right, Bersatria Fumigata, Fumigata, wrapping up the bids. Here's an X. We all knew it would come down to that. Indeed, we did exact of you. Uh, Zen Monkey is unfortunate. My self-control is breaking down over time as we get towards the end. Again, I'm calling in some favors. I, I'm seeing if we can get some nice jumpers for today. I hear the Fresno Hounds. They're outside. <clears throat> All right. Going once on the Bersatria Fumigata. Going twice. <clears throat> Sold. To Mad Dog with a winning bid of $47. By spring auction, I should have some variety palette up for grabs, too. I think the Bursatria will do will will enumerate more by spring. They're kind of coming out of a, sh a slump. All of mine. Otherwise, I would be doing trying to do like 40 counts for this. All right, let's go with another Caribbean species. We have 60 Hemiblabora CF Rosenei. This is the horseshoe crab roach starting bid of $40, which we thought was tenebricosa uh, for a long time. And now we have actual tenebricosa, and we now know that these are not tenebricosa uh, by comparison. I need to update the website. I should probably just do that now, honestly. <clears throat> So this is the horse. It's again. I'll point out same as last auction. These are these guys. These common name of the uh, cube. Uh, not cube. The uh, horseshoe crab cockroach. So there's a there was a while where uh, on the official American Cockroach Society blah 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 list where they're called the broad keys roach and i have always bucked against that and called them the horseshoe crab roach because that's what people were actually calling them when i got into the hobby as a common name and uh now that we have actual tenebricosa i guess the actual tenebricosa can grab the name of the like keys cockroach or whatever and uh horseshoe crab cockroach will remain and is more accurate as a descriptor for the cf rosen rosen's Horseshoe crab roach, or whatever you want to call them, um, but yeah, horseshoe crab roach will remain the name for the CF Rose and I. So funny how that goes. Kyle, do you know any reliable sources for care sheets for Eplant? Best thing I can point you to is my care guide, but you basically just keep them fed, have some organic matter around for them in case they start to run out of food because they have very high metabolisms. Um, and if you end up with too many of them, do not, you know, once you start getting babies and you see the, the tidal wave coming, you got to start culling or splitting the culture. You really got to do that. Hi, right, Dennison. Good to have you back. All right. <clears throat> Hemiblavera CF Rose and I, unfortunately, I did check on my Tenebricosa. I do not have enough to spare for this auction yet. When I received them, they were mostly tiny and small nymphs, and the females are basically just now maturing. So by the spring auction, I should have them available, but unfortunately do not have them available for this auction. All right. 
Emmett Blabbera, CF Rose and I going once, going twice. Sold to Matt. We're going to do a control R. And anytime I open my eyes and I see a bid get posted as soon as I hit the button, I got to do a control R to make sure. We'll cross them off the list here. All right, and the dust settles, and it looks as though Mad Dog has won with a winning bid of $61, beating Dr. Hmroid. All right, and that's the way it was. Mad Dog coming through sniping. Sorry, man. GG's all around. All right. 100 Blaptica Dubia Amber. This is uh, John Frost's uh, poster love child. I don't know what the poster love child sounds kind of weird. Um, but uh, many, I think it was a decade of, of work went into these, creating these Dubias. Yeah, over a decade in the making. There's a blog post on my site about them. They're a group of 100 mixed starting bid of $80. How often does Control R fix order of bids? Um, when it's close, it seems to be about thirty percent of the time. Uh, if I see, if I open my eyes and it looks like there was a bunch of things crammed at the end, it's about thirty percent of the time it will actually fix the order when I Control R. So um, I have gotten in the habit of doing that at this auction. Timber Doodle says, my Schultesia Lampira deformis are hitting a wave of production. Is a standard roach care practice to split or cull during these waves? Not always, but epilamprony, it is recommended because they reproduce and grow so fast. It's very easy to burn your culture out. And this is not just a novice thing. My, me and plenty of other experienced roach keepers have lost different colonies of epilamprony by not being ready for the mass emergence of adults or a huge wave of babies growing up. Uh, it's definitely one of those things of, especially the worst one, the worst one that this happens with is Rhabdobladder rustica. The second you, you're, you get a bunch of babies and they get about half grown, you got to start thinking about, okay, maybe I'll grab like 30 of them and move them to a new enclosure, or maybe I'll start feeding out of this colony hard or something. Well, again, that's why I list them as like intermediate. I think intermediate or, or advanced is because it's not that they're hard to breed. They breed very easily, but they are not adapted to living at densities in the wild. They're probably from uh, tropical rainforest. There's leaf litter. If you run out of food at the little spot you've been hunkered down in, you have wings and you are very good at using them. You can just fly 100 feet away and find more food. They're not... They're not pre-adapted for living at high density and being on top of each other and um, having to, to, you know, either go through periods of starvation or something like that or less food intake. Nothing like a Gromphodorina or a Eublabris or Bursatria or things like that. They don't have any me mechanism for making it through periods of time where there's not uh, good enough food for them around. So that's why they're intermediate. You have to be you got to be ready. And this isn't always, this isn't like a, you wake up one morning, oh no, they're all dead kind of thing. This is, it's not a slow burn, but it's a burn where you kind of start to think, I should do something. And you do, when you get that that inkling, that little tickling feeling you should do something, is when you should do something. You shouldn't say, oh, I'll do it next week or something. You got to do it. Uh, but Schultesia don't have that problem, I've noticed. Dr. Heimroyd is quick on those keys, though. I like the Terranchi thing. Thank you, Photo Gallery, for that beautiful picture of a bunch of them. Um, okay, I'll put the X here for wrapping up bidding. Get another sip of my coffee. It really is keeping me going today. Hmm. You're welcome, Timber Doodle. 
Glad to be of assistance. Okay, Blaptica Dubia Amber. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Dr. Hemroid with a winning bid of 126. Spirited bidding between two heavy hitters. All right, we're getting down to the last things, guys, and you know what that means. I was going to do a big finale last night. Who do you like your coffee? Black, hot, etc. I like it cold, and I like it flavorful. I like very dark coffee. I like dark coffee with a little bit of sweetness. I like to mix vanilla in, too. And I like good whole milk, not cream in it. I like to I like the peak of flavor. I like the the sharp peak of flavor from um, really dark roast, with the mildness afterwards from the milk. And I like the even distribution of the vanilla e and the agave nectar that I mix in throughout it. Give me Noctacola so I can sleep. Any giveaways coming up? Yes, I think we will have a giveaway. Do you keep your dubias and discoids on substrate? Absolutely. Yes, I do. Um, let's we'll do a giveaway after a couple more items here. Somebody was interested in Yuri Kodis, like from Florida. Um, so I'm I'll put up another group of not Florida, not Florida Yuri Kodis, but another one of those like mainland uh standard looking e Floridana from Gulf Shores, Alabama, starting bid of $40. So I'm really trying to – I'm wrapping up my Yuri Kodis Floridana collection. I'm satisfied with the um, number of localities I've acquired. I do need them from Louisiana still. I do still need them. There's some record, rep, records, reports, records of them from uh, like around Nolens. So I do still need to get those. But uh, I do, I am, I'm well represented elsewhere. Let me find a picture from one of these Gulf Shores, Alabama pictures so people can see what they look like. Oh, here's a nice picture of one on some sand. I'm hoping when I go to Destin, I can find some Floridana. The habitat was perfect for them, but they just weren't there. Maybe this year when I can do a more thorough search. So, but uh, I think... To satisfy my Yuri Kodis Floridana, it's my autism. I get to pick the special interest. Um, I'm good. Actually, some from Corpus Christi would be nice. The further across their range I can get, the better. So I don't really need some stuff, some sampling from like the middle of the mainland Florida. I'm well represented through the Keys. If I get an opportunity at more lower Keys Floridana, I will take it. I do still need them from the Tampa area. I have them from the east the east side of Florida, um, central Florida. If I can get them from up in Georgia slash the Carolinas, that would be nice. Um, that's an interesting individual there. You know, I'll just I'll, – I'll use some discretion when I'm traveling through Florida. If I see an interesting-looking population, I'll grab it. But I do still want them from Louisiana to bridge the gap between – the Texas and the Florida populations. So, but again, I won't say no to key, more keys varieties. Um, Alan says, uh, I'll be in Nolens in November. Is that my photo use? Uh, is it? Is that actually your photo, Satchel, of one walking on the sand? I didn't, I don't know what your, uh, your INAT, uh, your INAT uh, thing is. It's from Gulf, from the Gulf Highlands, I guess, technically. Let's see whose picture is it. Oh, it is Satchel's picture. Wow, that's great. That's so funny. Satchel, you took, like, the perfect picture of them. I feel like there's a lot of character in that image. So this is this is exactly the strain that these are. Um, yeah, Al, uh, Satchel, if you find them in Nolens, uh, I'll, take, I'll take a group of them. Alan's found them under barks with pines and some random roadside forests in Destin. Yeah, 
Angel and I, when we go there to visit, we're probably going to do a two slash three day, or maybe more. We got to look at the, our schedule and stuff and how long somebody can take care of the dogs for um, two, three, four day vacation. And then one day of uh, exclusively heavy collecting to get those youth lastoblata. There's a huge uh, pseudoscorpion and Destin that we missed catching last time. We really want to collect those again. Uh, just, you know, just doing a all around. I want to go look for the ivory millipedes, give that a better effort. There's so much just chunks of undeveloped land around Destin. It's pretty surprising given where it is, but they probably also don't want to develop every ounce of it because it's a barrier uh, island, series of barrier islands. So developing that is not the smartest idea entirely. Um, would you be able to reply to my email by Tuesday? Tuesday, I will be – Monday I'm taking off. Tuesday after my root canal finishing up stuff. Um, I don't know if I'll do it before or after the root canal or, you know, a little before before after. But Tuesday I will be going through my emails to coordinate all the auction order things. So I will be able to get to – just uh, put the Firebelly Toad shipping stuff in with the – file it in with your auction winnings uh, department. All right. Chris Sniper wants some Gulf Shores, Alabama, Yuri Cotis, Floridana. Maybe, maybe by the time I die, I'll have a collection of like 20 Yuri Cotis, Floridana. Honestly, there'd be a lot of scientific value to that because you would have like, oh, cool. We can check out the genetics of this, this species across its entire range. Uh, I think that you would, there'd be some interesting stories to be told there with respect to what's been isolated from what and for how long. All right, going once on the Floridana from Gulf Shores, Alabama. Going twice. Sold to Chris Sniper. Bulking out his E Floridana collection. Edekipians are underrated. I do love my Edekipians too. Um, they are pulling out of a sh of, of a slump. I think I probably should have taken the uh, polycarb uh, cover off of them for the summer. So we'll see. I might actually. There's a lot of flower pot fungus in their substrate. So actually, maybe one of my activities tomorrow, to you know, to de-stress and get myself away from work, I might go and redo the Edekipians enclosure tomorrow. You know, it's a nice peaceful. Not stressful, not all related to my work activity. All right, somebody wanted some of these, so we'll just put a group of them up there. We have 15 Noctocola species, Malaysia. Starting bid of, uh, we'll just do $20. Again, somebody was, uh, is that Gulf Shores? What is that, the, the beautiful imagery you posted there, Chris Sniper? Oh, he uploaded the wrong place. It was a beautiful image, whatever it was. We have just a couple of roaches left, and then I'll be taking a break to go inventory ice pods. Thank you, photo gallery bot. When is this Destin trip? I might be able to join for a short weekend trip. We want to do it in January. We're not sure when in January. Um skyline near where i live it's a beautiful skyline see i don't think edikipians nymphs are are boring they're very stripy i mean when they they the first four instars they aren't stripy but then they gain the stripes um around i think fourth or fifth instar uh, but yeah destin what about florida boy trip that's still yes so do not let me confuse you I'm planning two separate southern trips this winter. The first one is going to be a mostly vacation-oriented trip to Destin for Angel and I with a day of heavy collecting because I need those last of bloodos. And actually, I really want that pseudoscorpion. It's the biggest pseudoscorpion I've ever seen. And I know real – well, second biggest pseudoscorpion I've ever seen, perhaps tied in size um, with another pseudoscorpion. So, um, so there's that trip, and then the 
full on boys collecting trip, which is going to be in March ish. So two separate trips. All right. Here's an X. Photo gallery apprentice is resigning from the apprenticeship. I need to study up on roaches. So yes, Florida boy trip is still in the works. We got to figure out who's going. It sounds like we got a whole mess of people. So we may have to find a way to take two vehicles. Uh, we're going to see who's available, who's doing what and what our options are. Um, but I have a couple of, there's a couple of key targets I want to hit. And it's very important that I get a couple of them. For example, more Ocala, Aaron Vega, Floridensis. That's high on my list uh, to actually go to that location and try to find some. Um, Euphoria from the Keys. Uh, there's a couple of things on Key Largo. I would like to collect more Paraphrinus. Um, uh, the Ty was it Tylos isopods and some other misc isopods that are on uh, Key Largo. There's a millipede on Key Largo. I really need to collect again. Quite a few things. All right. Nocticola species Malaysia. This is the last group unless somebody twists my arm uh, at the lightning rounds this evening. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Ryan's Peter. Winning bid of $33. Okay, this is our last one before we get to the juicy stuff, the final juicy roach stuff. We have a group of 100 Panclora species, Radlins, Florida, starting bid of $60. Let me see if I can find the Redlands. Did I take pictures of Redlands species? Mysterious Redlands Surinams, a new Panclora species from um, adult male species Redlands. Oh, okay. I posted the right image before. Okay. So here we go. Thank you, Photo Gallery. You are really on it. So let me put that. Uh, Yavia on left. Let me put Redlands on right. So this is an unidentified species of Panclora from Redlands, Florida, found on the papaya plantation that the uh, CF Surinamensis came from. A lot of weird stuff in Florida. We find about, at, at the last couple of years, it's been about three, not, not, just, uh, not just new stock of roaches from Florida, but three species per year, roughly, of roaches in Florida that the state of Florida agriculture government, whoever's in charge of wildlife and all that disaster, has no idea about. So this year, this year alone, I, was it this year alone was, or maybe this year, and within the last 365 days, I think, was the Nocticola. Those are completely unreported from Florida. Um, the genus Alacta which we found when we went to Redlands, but we only found an adult male. We had no idea what it was, but now we finally have, um, uh, we finally have some stock of that in hobbyist hands, Alacta. Um, we now know about well, the Hemiblabra tenebricosa, I guess we've always kind of known about. There's one more, I, I guess there's probably a Panclora or, or something else. The, um, uh, the Neoblatella from Miramar. Uh, was another one that's very new. So um, the roach hobby is very ahead of the Florida government in fig finding out things that are uh, introduced or even native to Florida. Eulastoblata is completely unrecorded from Florida, and we know of at least two species occurring in Florida. So uh, they got to they gotta get their act together. Florida, state government of Florida, you need to start uh, listing your introduced to native species so your hobbyists can keep them. March isn't the best time for Euphoria, though. You probably won't find them. Um, I got, again, I'm kind of restricted by what time I can go and can't go. They're cold in Michigan. Put them in your mouth. All right. Here's an X for the species Redlands, Florida. 
Uh, Pro Steven said, well, I'll go Eric Matthews says, anything eat fungus gnats and not millipedes, eggs, and young? Yes, the fungus gnat roe beetles eat fungus gnats, but not millipedes, eggs, and young. Uh, Pro Steven, are B Bolivians is okay in Florida? I won their bid last night. Uh, they are not okay in Florida. They are not uh, introduced or native to Florida. So you will need to find somebody to take your bid from you. So you all, you can go ahead and do that in the Discord, in the general, or in the, the um, unclaimed list. You are responsible for them that, now that you've won the bid, but I'm sure somebody will will happily take them, or maybe two people will split them with you. Um, Jojo heard Parafrinus and finally got, exci got excited. Yukari says, my feeder assortment is finally done. Rest in peace. Timberdoodle, any little Kenyan roaches? No, there will not be any paraplecta. Uh, I'm one of my colonies isn't doing well it's for some reason. I think they got too dry and then I overwatered to compensate. So I got to be careful because they're my primary assassin bug feeder. I got to be careful with them. Um, anything else unique about the Redlands Panclora? Uh, they're they're very light colored. Uh, they're they're more whitish, uh, especially the females the underside of the abdomen. Uh, this is just an old picture from the blog post where I was just showing the clear difference between the male Nivea and the species Redlands. So introduce every roach to Florida and make them legal. All right, species Redlands going once, going twice, pass. So they're there if somebody wants them. All right, now we kick it into high gear with our finale. I'll find the picture so I can post it with stuff. Next up, we have 100 Panclora CF Nivea from Little Manatee, Florida. Starting bid of $80. This is the population of Panclora that sometimes throws these bluish individuals it's strongest when they first mature this is a freshly molted adult male but some do retain this bluish turquoise color into adulthood i am working on isolating it it's looking like it's going to take some time but i'm optimistic within five to ten years that i can get a good consistent strain going uh, I like to think, I feel this way about isopods too, every phenotype that you see in roaches, you know, with some exceptions, maybe along some of the bigger like group splits, like for example, the caridioid roaches, and then there's the blatoids, and there's the blabroids, and there might be a couple up there, I need to update myself on the taxonomy. In roaches that are roughly related to each other, or semi-closely related to each other, and in isopods, I believe that any trait you see in one species can pop up in another or be bred for in another. Some evidence for this is you look at Cubaris murina and isopods, and apparently in Europe, some people have gotten mutations that look like rubber ducky isopods, and they're working on breeding for them. So, you know, there's, com there's a common suite of genes behind related species. And so if you see a cluster of characteristics pop up or that has popped up in a wild or just in, in any species, I think that with enough time, effort, and direction, you can get that phenotype in another species. Where am I going with this? There are members of the uh, tribe that Panclora belonged to. Was it Zestoblada, I think? Is the species I'm thinking of. Uh, so there's here's a discussion on uh, people talking about whether or not uh, is that oh is that still blood as an ectobiid. So whatever the entity is um, that produces the stunning blue roaches from South America which have been called Zestoblata, but TJ points out in his May 14, 2016 blog post that Zestoblata is an ectobiid and not a member of the uh, the clade that Panclora belongs to. So there's probably a Panclora in the picture. I believe that you can breed for 
these colors in related roaches and this stock like this provides the groundwork from which you can do those selections. So, um, Captain H probably isn't listening to the live stream, uh, but okay, Dilo's explaining in the uh, the Discord that I'm working on it, and anybody else could work on it too. Uh, two people can get the same line, and just because one person picks a better individual or has a better method methodology, you can do like I do with things where you do a lot of controlled pairings, or you can raise a gigantic colony and pick the best looking 12, do it again, pick the best 12, do it again. There's multiple different ways to go about this, and sometimes some methods are better than others or more effective uh, for getting results over the long term. So I'm working on it. Somebody else can work on it too. Swaybeck says, well, I managed to make it in time to watch. I'd love to try some new stuff. This is a rough time of year to increase the number of life forms that depend on me to survive. Easy to overdo it. Genes and expression are so complex and not as well understood as one would like. Really think we know it all, but with Gen X, there's so much to understand. Yes, I agree. Uh, fortunately, if you're selecting for phenotypes, uh, sometimes you have it easy if you're patient. Because if you keep selecting for something and the thing has multiple generations a year and you keep trying it year after year after year after year and you don't get results, you have a good uh, metric of just saying, yeah, you can't select for this. You don't have to go into, ah, oh, yes, it is this gene that is activated by this and only if it's uh, homozygous recessive, but also there's an influence of this modifier gene that regulates the this and it's partially influ you You have a very... Uh, layman's way of uh, judging things uh, with a degree of objectivity involved. If you try something time and time again over several years, you can say this does not work is what you can end up saying. So anyways, here's an X. Remember, not all of these have this color. It's most prominent and freshly molted individuals, but some do retain it into adulthood. Not quite as extreme, but Mostly I've seen that, that, that ventral line of deep color or uh, dorsal line of deep color is what I'm, I've been selecting for. I figure, okay, we'll get this. We'll, we'll use this as the first criteria in these selections and I'll just keep going for bigger and bigger and more intense here. And it should distribute through the rest of the body over time. So, all right. Going once on the little manatee panclora. Going twice. Sold. To Dr. Hemroid with a winning bid of 131. Dr. Humroid, I hope that you enjoy the strain as is or that you have some desire to do some selection in them because the best thing that can happen is multiple people working towards the same goal independently. Eventually, somebody will get somewhere. Uh, Satchel says, I'm going to Alabama Coast again this upcoming week. Any requests other than the usual stuff? Uh, nothing in particular. You know, just always shoot me a text if you found something particularly cool. All right. Panchloria, Panchloria CF Nivea. Okay, and now time for the finale. Some of you may have guessed what this was going to be, but we have a group of, we have a pair of Macropanesthia rhinoceros starting bid of $150. The rhino roaches, maybe you guys have gotten used to this being the final bid. You know, might be a little underwhelming for some of you, but you know, that it is what it is. While these are up, I'm going to go run to the bathroom because I got to pee. Drinking a lot of coffee here.
All right, well that percolates. Don't mind me, guys. I just gotta go through and do some husbandry. Springtail cultures need misting. That's my care for uh, a lot of the Intima Brian Morph springtails. Got to come over here and miss some high priority stuff. Pseudoglomerous are getting a mist. Fortioica are getting a mist. Let's see what else. Um, uh, some of you guys have probably watched the leaves disappear in real time in these Anisomorpha and uh, Statosoma, so I'm going to have to go out and get them some food today, probably on break. And then finally, it's time to go miss the mantids. All right, and there's a round of uh, some light husbandry done in here. Plot twist, he's a gynecologist for Dr. Hemroid. I'd like to know what job Dr. Hemroid is working. Uh, Satchel Swayback says, I found the most vibrant corn snake I've ever seen at Fort Morgan. Deep blood red chevrons, the clean white and black around them, far better looking than an Okiti. Uh, Satchel hasn't found any corns down there. Interesting. Love seeing pictures of corns, too. All right. Here are the, here's the X. Why do you have all these roaches of Alta? <laughs> That's hilarious. Nobody like Beetle Pixel last night. Yeah. Uh, everybody should be thankful that <clears throat> Beetle Pixel has gone into quiescence because, well, I mean, I guess Dr. Hemroid, Dr. Hemroid and uh, Beetle Pixel kind of go back and forth, and then occasionally you get slammed into by uh, Chris Sniper or uh, I think Devin Noname had a couple of good uh, snipes and the whatnot in there too. All right. Pair of Macropanesia rhinoceros going once, going twice, sold to Braden with a winning bid of 2 8. Braden also, I forgot about Braden, you sneak in there sometimes too. With a winning bid of 287. All right. I guess that's it for roaches. Unless somebody were to put up something absolutely insane. In which case, it would be the true finale the secret finale after the original finale, but nobody would possibly put up something so insane just now in the discord bid channel that it would cause an absolute uproar. Nobody would ever even fathom doing such a thing. It would be unthinkable. Most unbelievable. If somebody were to list a group of very coveted roaches for a ridiculously low starting bid. But it would be a good secret finale. It would be a very good secret finale. And it's looking like it's a good secret finale. 
And that's exactly why I did it. See, it was it was very smart of me to wait until today to do this instead of last night, where uh, Behorn hisses were not even getting any traction. Definitely made the right call extending to today. Hemorrhoid gets what Hemorrhoid wants. You got to be kidding me. Very amusing. The uh, Anybody who's in the YouTube live stream, it's uh, absolute chaos over in the bit channel right now. With uh, I, uh, I maybe I should have announced it here, but I just I put up a group of thirty pseudo glomerous magnifica with a one dollar starting bid, and uh, people were there's a little bit of scrapping at first, and then Dr. Humroid came in to assert dominance, um, much like some sort of wild animal by lifting his leg and urinating all over literally everything. I don't know if it matters with the four hundred bid. I'll never, Taranchi, I'll never get these so much for $1. See, again, I said a lot of the isopods today will have a $1 starting bid. I cannot control what you guys do with that information. That is completely out of my hands. So I think $1 makes people panic and bid more. Dr. Humroid single-handedly supporting Kyle's business. Uh, Pro Steven... Uh, I'm go ahead and uh, take that to the pass list. That might be a good place to discuss that sort of stuff. Uh, but anyways, we're going to put an X here. Wrapping up the pseudoglomerous. So many Magnifica sold today. You must really have the husbandry down. The base side is where I, oh, we have a little bit of discussion going on about the, uh, when will you call out assassin bugs today? Assassin bugs will be after isopods. Uh, again, I have a good number of isopods, but not a ridiculous number of them. So it's likely that we will get to miscellaneous stuff probably by five. So starting around five, uh, we only have, I'm just going to flash everybody here. Whoosh. You probably didn't see what's on there, but you saw a page full of letters and stuff. Um we only have two pages of miscellaneous arachnids, grain pests, blah, 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 after isopods. So the bulk of today, when we get to the miscellaneous, will be dictated by how many isopods I put up. I would not be surprised if I filled these two pages with isopods. So probably anywhere from 60 to 100 isopod listings. Not that many. All right, X for wrapping up the pseudoglomerous. 30 pseudoglomerous magnifica kuk fuong going once, going twice, sold to Ryan's Peter with the upset of 420, the weed number. He put the weed number in, and he got the win. Nuts. Don't, do not ever think that there's not a bigger fish. There is apparently always a bigger fish. Always a bigger fish. I'm as shocked by this as you guys are. I would have thought that uh, Dr. Humroid would rule with an iron fist. I gotta, I gotta, that, that's a good quote. He put the weed number in and he got the win. Putting that in my little quote book. Wow, someone should have bid 666. The more pods, the better. Now you gotta show us that pseudoglomerous magnificent enclosure. Uh, do you guys think there's interest in pink powder isopods? What about, yeah, I would like those if it's proven out, if they actually are unique from the other. Uh, look out. You activated my trap card. He has like 60 already. He's good. I'll show off the Magnifica enclosure. I guess. So this is it. 
This is the the little faunarium. Oh, I got to change out that apple. It's a bit moldy. That is that is beyond the amount of acceptable mold on an apple in a pseudoglomerous in culture uh, enclosure. So this is like the basal uh, enclosure. You can see uh, the orientation of the bark. You can see the moisture level, which maybe I shouldn't have misted today. I'm kind of thinking maybe I should not have. Um, so this is this is like the culture where I have all of the um, the larger ones, and then I pulled all the other ones for the auction to a different uh, enclosure. So let me go ahead. You know, sometimes they're out during the day and sometimes they're not. Oh, I saw one of the, the hissers on the floor. Kyle, no, I wanted to take to do screenshots. I mean, I. So this is a little moist for them. I should I don't think I should have watered today or I should have watered a bit lighter. So it's um it's I, I put them on uh, sand and coconut fiber cuz the uh Entima Brio Uno Strigata that got in here were getting a little out of control so I wanted to do a more sterile setup and um just a little bit yeah I wanted to get Willosia or small silvers going in here which seemed to be less annoying to roaches sometimes. Uh, at least less annoying to some more sensitive roaches. I put on top of the bark here. I don't know if you can, you can see the pile through the water stains and whatnot. You can see the fish flakes on top of things here. They will be much happier on the watering schedule during the winter when it's drier. And I'll probably water them twice a day. Or I'll watch and see if the condensation has completely disappeared. And then, um, then I'll water them again. Uh, of course, my kid calls me and I miss the rhino roaches. Where are the paper cup things for? Paper cup things. Oh, so um, so I was graciously sent. Uh, Alan sent me the the only Alacta that I think that he had hatch and survive past like first instar or something, and I really wanted to do well with the Alacta. So I just threw them in here because this container gets pretty – it may not look like it with the moldy apple. That actually happened within the last, like, two days. But I do take care of this enclosure pretty much daily. And so I wanted to make sure the Alacta got really good care because I don't want to mess up with them because don't know if we're going to get another chance in the near future with them. So these are just the little paper towels that Alan chipped me the Alacta on. And so I just tossed them in here. Yeah, fingers crossed there's at least a pair. I'm not very paranoid about, like, pathogens from wild roaches and stuff like that. The only time I've had a, like, schizo theory uh, pathogen situation going on um, was with the sand brats, the... Um, Luco Lapisma arenaria, where I used sand that somebody sent me from their native habitat, and within like a week after I set them up in a new enclosure on it, they were all dead. That was like, okay, there's probably some fungus that afflicts them or, or something that, that causes them issues that was in the sand from their native habitat that caused this die off because I was using my own yard sand before without any issues. So that's the only time I've been schizo about, like, introducing a pathogen or something. What you should be more worried about, what's more terrifying than what pathogens is, if you live in the Midwest or anywhere with, like, a diverse assemblage of detritivores, is introducing stuff like worms or centipedes or glass snails to your enclosures using unsterilized leaf litter. Centipedes will wreck – the lithobius centipedes will wreck so many cultures – the glass snails are not a huge problem. They're more annoying because they climb up the sides of the glass and they like cluster up and they leave their little icky trails everywhere. They can get to pretty high densities too and they can degrade substrate over time. They're not as big of a concern. 
uh, as other things are, but also worms. Worms will will slowly churn up the substrate and take it over and make it too moist for a lot of stuff. Wor earthworms are are very bad for cultures long term. How many more roaches we got before pods? That's it. That's the last of the roaches. I'm going to go downstairs to inventory isopods right now because I haven't gotten a chance to do it because I've lost control of my life. So it's 11.25 now. I'm going to give myself an hour to do a pod inventory. Hopefully I'll get through them all. I don't know if I will. 11.25, so 12.25. Well, I'll just say 12, 12.30. Current topic, isopods. Next topic will be arachnids and misc. Got to draw a couple of uh, things on here. You're gonna to have to forgive my my awful um, my awful centipede drawing here. Now let's see what's another thing I can put on here for a little bit of eye candy. You gotta get a little artsy with this stuff. Um, oh. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. For a quick sketch, I think I captured the energy of at least one of these. So, all right, everybody. I'm going to put up that we're taking a quick break so I can go out. Well, a break so I can go identify isopods. And everyone, bidding will resume at 1230 Eastern. Next topic, isopods. All right. I'll do a quick look here. Pod time. Benny Worm. It's Benny Worm. When I get Harry Mole in cages, it's weird to see ice pods dead and encased in mole. It's like they sat still too long and the mole grew over them. That's funny. I've seen that a couple of times. Happy with my cheese answer last night. Allie, you did get the cheese answer. It was very impressive. 30 plus people should be 30 plus likes. Who is holding out? Yes. Give me some likes, please. And finally, Jonathan says, "All of your P expanses grow up after months. You realize that your count is your ten count is nine males and hopefully one female. Um, that female is probably sweating bullets. I can tell you that much. So, okay, I'll see you all at twelve thirty. Drop something. And drop my pen. We got some good stuff coming up. I'm ready to see some blood spilled over isopods, low starting bits. Here we go. I get the eye candy queued up here. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna put this down for that glare for now. I guess I get rid of the glare for now. There we go. That's pretty good. All right. See you all in an hour.
Howdy, folks. I'm back. Sorry it took a little bit longer. Uh, we got some good stuff coming up here. Kyle is ISO late. We'll uh, give some people to start trickling back in now that my voice is here. He's ISO returned. I'll check in on the YouTube live stream again. Let's see. Again, working on getting you guys some stuff here for the auction in a bit. For the later in the auction, of course, family and friends trying to figure out if I'm alive or not. Oh, all right. Get ready for some crazy isopod auctioning. Let's flip on over to my list. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, well, we're not even halfway through my isopods, and well, we're going to have about 60 things. So maybe I was spot on with over 100. I'm going to do at everyone. Bidding resumes. Okay. Let's see what everybody has been talking about. Also, we're back. I'll give it a second. Maybe I'll throw up some, some still cool, but not uh, the highest shelf. Uh, although some of these things are kept on the high shelf, regardless. Uh, stuff to get ease us back into things. I uh, wonder how much caffeine was consumed this morning. I just rolled out of bed. I had like one jumbo cup of, of coffee, and that's all I'm going to have today. I'm going to keep going on this. Um, Luch has lots of orange expanses. I, uh, I need to get some of those good quality orange expanses again. I still have the whites. Uh, not enough to make available. Uh, there is plenty of stuff here to keep you guys busy, though. Uh, there will not be any Porcelio Hoffman's egg eye. No isopods yet. No ice pods all yet today. He finished last night's Russian's inventory ice pods. Everybody's he think he's passed out. Oh, no. I'm here for the long haul. Um, huffing coffee vapors. I really just, the sodium, since I've been drinking so much because I've been talking so much and there's so much airflow, I've been peeing a lot and all my electrolytes are just going whoosh. So the sodium in these noodles is keeping me alive right now. Will there be orange vigor? I'm not sure. I haven't gotten to their enclosure yet, actually. Uh, Kyle's teeth are all going to rot from all those soft drinks. But no sugar. I mean, these have like one gram of sugar in them. So, um, let's see. All right. We'll throw something up here while people start to trickle back in. We're going to start with a group of 60 Porcelionides Prunosis White Out, starting bid of $1. Again, a lot of the isopod bids today um, are going to be $1 starting bids. And also, I'm hoping our photo gallery bot's here because our photo gallery bot also happens to be an isopod taxonomy uh, junkie and can give me some updates on some of the outdated Latin and classifications that I have here. Thank you, photo gallery. Perfect. Wonder, wunderbar. So it's just the whiteout mutation, but in Porcelionides prunosis. I got to eat some of these noodles. Don't worry, guys. We'll get to the world burning. Who did, did somebody? <laughs> somebody? Somebody did a. A super reaction of <laughs> just <laughs> very amusing, very very amusing. Muerte twenty six took Pro Steven up on that winning that they couldn't have shipped to Florida. Told him to DM you as well. All right, perfect. Um, let's see, orange mango. If you don't have them in the thousands.
All right. Let's see. We got a good number of people in the live stream, good number in the Discord, so we'll start moving on. Here's the X for the Porcellonides Prunosis Whiteouts. <clears throat> a roach crossing creation, if you didn't know. Originally came from yours truly, as did quite a few things originally before Southeast Asian stuff became the norm. All right, going once. Uh, where's the ISO nerds at to show the photos? Because I'm not up to date on my ISOs. Uh, I may start picking over some stuff to sign some pictures. Uh, going once. Going twice. Sold. To insect. I'll do a control R. <clears throat> I should also mention... All of these things, I will stand behind them proving out as per what's on my website. So if you purchase things like oranges or whiteouts or Dalmatians from other sellers and then have wondered, huh, there are some wild types in here or a different color or a different something or a different species. I wonder why. That must be normal. Everything here is true breeding within the parameters as it's outlined on Roach Crossing or that I say in the live stream here. So your whiteouts will not produce any wild types. I am very strict with my containment protocol, as you can see, with all the stuff in here. And I use the same protocol, even though they don't climb smooth surfaces. I use the exact same protocol for all my isopods. So I do not have dwarf whites getting in places where I don't want them, or porcelanides, or different strains of scaber mixing. And I also sterilize all of my leaf litter. And I, in the last two years, have absolutely perfected the sterilization methods. Uh, to exclude everything. Refuse to own dwarf whites. All right. Uh, Insect Central is showing as the winner. So winning bid of $20. All right. Let's do a group of 50 Cubara species rubber ducky. Starting bid of $1. I'm the same, Kyle. Yeah, there's, uh, as with everything, you know, larger scale production of stuff, the quality tends to go down. Uh, and unfortunately, with isopods in particular, that's not just restricted to the health of the isopods, which you can raise isopods on a large scale very healthily for them. But as far as the quality of whether or not your strains are breeding true because you sterilize everything or you sourced from uh, re reputable breeders and kept up on their isolation protocols uh, is a different story. So the obviously the uh, Skaber is the one that's closest to home to me. There's also the shenanigans with the uh, Magic Potion Vulgari. And then also sort of out, more outside of my sphere of immediate influence was the mixing of uh, Klugii Montenegros with either the Slanos and or the Dubrovniks. There will be some crispy ducks up for auction. I actually forgot that I did another selection and I didn't start them in an isopod bin. I actually took the selection of crispy ducks and put them in a millipede enclosure. I think it's one of my Narcia species. And so I went to check on them and I was like, wait a minute. Oh, I have like an F4 or F5 of crispy ducks in here and they're looking even better. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's going on. Uh, they may even have an even more refined version to offer. Uh, Derek Niehaus, who has, again, more of a pulse on the Facebook side of uh, IcePod stuff, there's at least one other person who's doing this sort of project. I don't know if they gave their stuff a project name, uh, but I saw pictures, and at least of the pictures they took, the individuals looked pretty good quality. Uh, so I will refrain from judging them, but just know the Crispy Ducks will be a Roach Crossing original produce line, but there are other people working on solid colored uh, species rubber ducky. So we got some good stuff here. I always feel a bit of imposter syndrome with things – uh, where I'm like, oh, you know, they could go on a Facebook auction and get some smuggled in isopods for that nobody's ever seen or even heard of. Um, and that that always is a bit discouraging to me. 
But then when I go through stuff and I think, oh yeah, what would I, what, what should I put up here? And then I see, oh, this colony is doing well. All oh, these are doing really well. Then I'm like, yeah, I got some pretty good stuff here. And of course, I've I've produced all this myself, so I can share that information with you. It's not just going to be a bit on this Cubaris from Southeast Asia. Shut up and give me your money and take these these half dead isopods. <laughs> I got nervous. Crispy ducks are so the species rubber ducky. Uh, the original pictures of them show the very good contrast between the head and the uh, end of the body and the midsection. And it seems over time there are other genetics in the uh, species rubber ducky population that cause more uh, orangish or pinkish color to start to, to um, work through the body. Uh, and it's her heritable. People have been breeding for it um, for a couple of years now. But a lot of people really want the stark contrast looking duckies as they originally appeared when they came in. Uh, obviously, everybody has to trust me when I say this, but in my stock, at least, it's not from being mixed with blonde duckies or with something else because obviously I brag about my containment protocol. But also, none of those things were even in culture or accessible when I got them back in 2017. Uh, my friend, one one of those outrageous first auctions for them it was like i don't want to kill these here i'll send them to you and then you breed them i was like okay and then i'll send you like the same amount back or more when i figured out the husbandry and so i did that so this is from the first wave of imports so this colony has been completely isolated in a gasketed micro screen container since 2017 and so the chances of anything getting introduced to there are in the zero percent range so anyways, this is me pulling a consistent phenotype line out of the original ducky import line. All right, here's the X wrapping up the bidding. Going once. Make sure I have the soul written down there. Going once. Going twice. Sold to looks like Pomo too, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a refresh. Sold to Pomo two as Pomo two had a period on their bid. There will be some more rubber duckies. This is the standard strain today. We will also do crispy ducks later. Crispy ducks will be after the next um, uh, next break. My rubber duckies all turned to blondes. I can't complain. Now, they didn't turn to blondes. I'll get into that later. Um, they didn't turn into blondes per se. There's a whole situation with that. Again, I'll bring it up in a bit when we get, when we get to that. All right. Let's do some 100 mixed Nagiris Nanus starting bid of $1. This is a good cleanup crew isopod. I don't know if it's native or if it's introduced to Alabama. Okay, here's a terrestrial isopod of Taiwan, so it's probably a Asian species introduced to North America. Uh, anybody got a common name for these? Nanus is like, isn't it like smaller, a small wood louse, but not these, these small wood louse. Nanus meaning a person who is markedly small. So the small, small isopod, I guess it's introduced. Thank you, Alan. I meant time out. Thank you for fixing your bid, M. You're good. You're good. You're good. All right. I'm going to say at M. Um. 
there's no need to panic. You're good. All right. Going once on these small isopods. So stupid to say. Nagiris Nanus. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Underdog 101. Before any pictures were even shown. $31 starting their winning bid. I think a lot of people are familiar with a lot of these. Um, let's do 20 Porcelio species Valencia. Starting bid of $1. This is just the regular wild type -y looking Valencias. Uh, there will be oranges later. Uh, Alan says, also maybe we're labeling locality since in another lo locality in the U.S. from New Jersey. These are the New Jersey ones. This was the ones that caused the, 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 that whole discussion. Um, so I labeled there. I've labeled them as such. This is the, I think I auctioned them off before they were being called the New Jersey Mystery or something like that. Let me put an X here, write this down. Basically kind of like gigantic light scabers. I, mean, I guess they're not crazily bigger than scaber. But uh, my oranges from you are doing well. No babies yet, but they are doing good. Alex Baranowski finally got white duckies breeding. Congrats. They're slow. They're, they're kind of like just regular rubber duckies. They're kind of, they, they take their time, but they're, they're pretty good and they're long lived too. All right. Porcelio species Valencia going once, going twice, sold. To Phoenix, Arizona, winning bid of $21. Phoenix, Arizona. All right. I think that's your first win, too, so congrats. All right. We'll do a group of 20 CF Silvestrii Valencia. That's interesting because they – take entirely different conditions than Silvestrii. They may morphologically resemble them, but they definitely do not. The Silvestrii I've had always wanted more moisture than the Valencias, so I'm curious about that. Um, but anyways, take whatever photo gallery is saying. He's more up to date on this stuff. I'm just doing more of an opinion piece on them. So Rick, risky is just speculation, yeah. I appreciate all of your input. Let's do what was I just looking at? Oh, we'll do a group of 20 Porcelio Levis. How now? Starting bid of $20. This is a strain of Levis refined from. Um, Nathan just mentioned they may be a wild phenotype. Okay. Um, this is one of my uh, – oh, wow. Yeah, I'm – wow, I'm lats. I'm late. This is one of my uh, my creations. This is uh, this is truly a project to come to full circle into fruition because these came out of Carmel, which was one of my first selective breeding projects with Levis, and it was a sport that popped up in Carmel, so it's a combination of the Carmel, that sort of lighter coloration, lighter orangish, but not simple recessive orange – coupled with whatever this trait is that gives them this sort of cow patterning. It's not really a piebalding per se. Uh, it may even be like a Dalmatian, the Dalmatian gene in this. It just doesn't present as Dalmatian he is in some other species. Gigantic light, 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 gigantic light sabers, not scabers, gigantic light sabers, that monkey. How can you tell if one species prefers more humidity than vice versa? Well, if you end up keeping them with more or less humidity and they start to die, that's a, that's a good way on a colony, on a, on, a, on a scale. 
You can also set up a big gradient of conditions in the enclosure, and they'll tend to hang out where they're most comfortable. Come on, the big chat is kind of meh. I'll clear that you blasted your own bid. He wants them. Now, as we all are aware, dairy cows are not actually Porcellia levis. They are a different species. We have determined this with absolute certainty. We just don't know what species. So you can actually keep the how nows with the dairy cows and have a mixed cow herd if you want to. All right, here we go. Going once. Yeah, starting bid was 20. Oh, going once. Got to close my eyes. Going twice for the how nows. And sold. Two arbs with a winning bid of 31. I really like my how nows. In fact, I like them so much, and some other people like them so much that we've worked orange into the line. And I need to check the latest refinement of that colony, but I might make some of those available. And they have a cute name too. Derek uh, did a good job. He did the dirty work of doing the first. Uh, <clears throat> crosses of the how nows and the oranges to get uh, the two traits together. I really appreciate that he did that. All right, how nows are. I don't know where they were on the list. Um, I'll have to cross them off later. Okay, we're going to do a 40 count of Cubaris Murina Anemone, starting bid of $1. I do really like these two. I think the expression is probably linked to temperature, humidity, like some of these other splotched pigment uh, traits are in other isopods. Because the batch that I have has not really been showing like some of the pictures I've seen online. Um, could be for any reason. The longer I have this, this strain, the more I'll try and figure out what the deal is. Um, so again, it's, they're not always that high of expression. It might be sex linked. I'm just going to work with them over time and see what the deal is with it. Uh, but they are really cool looking. I appreciate all the Marina morphs and projects are having. I really, really, really want the ones that look like the rubber duckies eventually. Really hoping that those uh, are proven out and gotten stateside at some point. But then, of course, the problem is people are going to start selling those as true rubber duckies because they're going to basically look the same, but they're going to reproduce like 50 times as fast, but they'll end up being smaller. So that's going to be a whole other can of worms for somebody else to deal with. All right, here's the X. Now, is it possibility that dairy cows are Porcellio obsoletus? They look pretty similar to Levis. Nathan Jones has examined them under a microscope and physical specimens and has not come to an absolute answer as to what the levis are um, or what the uh, dairy cows are. So for now, he has informed me the proper label for them is aph levis. It's like a finis. It's another another one of the, the weird taxonomy terms. Isopod is people. Aren't those sferillo? species dwarf ducky uh last time i checked somebody was breeding marina they had actually marina that had the, the characteristics i'm not too surprised honestly again traits that pop up in one member of a group of organisms i feel have a high chance or can pop up in other members of a related group and then you could breed for that that's my my thoughts all right going once for the marina anemone Going twice, sold to Tarantula Jake with a winning bid of $45. Congrats, Tarantula Jake. 
I remember the period. Yes, very important. Okay, let's do some 30 Porcelio Scaber Orange Calicos, the original Calico strain right from the man, the myth, the snarky legend himself, Oren McMonagall, starting bid of $20. This is pure Spanish stock, the same stock that Spanish orange was isolated out of. It maintains very high heterozygosity. Uh, for some reason, I feel like some of those, those pictures may not actually be orange. Or unless, you know, they, maybe they took a picture of a couple of the best looking individuals. But the main appeal in, these, in this orange stock is there is a high diversity of phenotypes I have worked multiple projects out of this stock over the years. And again, I think Orange just did a little bit of initial selection with them and then just sort of let them run wild after that. So, but these are straight from him. And yeah, so again, you know, there's like the Scaper Gene Machine and whatnot that I, that I will have available later in the auction. But if you want just some pure Spanish stock with a really high diversity of phenotypes, go with these. We don't know where they're from. Same with the Spanish oranges. We just know that they came from Spain back in like the 80s. So again, you see the pictures in the Discord, but there is much more variability in these. You do get solid individuals. You do get some like almost solid orange individuals. Might even be simple recessive oranges in there still. Ooh, a green darner dragonfly just flew up to the window. Um, so there's a great diversity of stuff. This is not a consistent strain they do not have a consistent confirmation to a phenotype all right <clears throat> there's the x warren wished me a happy birthday on facebook and i died of happy any agni kai planned yes there will be some agni kai any tips to try and refine my scaver allows to have great patches throughout their body as opposed to just on the rear segments um keep picking <laughs> Keep picking. Sometimes you will be swimming against the river. You'll be swimming against the current sometimes with stuff like this. And with Scaber Lavas, picking for just the for anterior gray over posterior gray might be swimming against the genetic current. You could probably do it. Just, just stay with it. Just stick with it and keep trying, keep calling, keep pairing good individuals. But just know there may be an inclination for that coloration, in my experience, to be more towards the posterior heavy. All right, going once. Going twice. Sold. To Underdog 101 with a winning bid of $44. Congrats on getting some of Oren's, one of Oren's uh, Pride and Joys. We'll get to Kyle Pride and Joys. There'll be more Kyle Pride and Joys later on in things because those are on different shelves than some of this other stuff is. Um, all right. Next up we have 25 Venezillo Pisum. From the Everglades area, Everglades, Everglades, Florida, starting bid of $50. This, I love these guys. They're like more solid colored Venezillo Parvis. They breed pretty well, but I'm also keeping, I'm actually keeping them with Uricotus right now, and they love eating the poop. They, they eat the poo-poo. Um Favorite isopod. I think I've gone on record saying my favorite before. I think I think I said Scaber before, and if I did, I'm going to stick with that because simply because from a selective breeding perspective, you can do so much with Scaber. They're so variable. We have a good selection of different localities from both the old world and the new world in culture. So there's a lot of stuff that you can toy with and breed and cross and see what kind of phenotypes you can make. So I would probably say Scaber's up there. And then past that, I like the amber duckies. I like the white duckies. I like the rubber duckies. 
I like the Porcelio Verneri a lot. Those are really cool. I really like the U.S. native Venezuelo and Cubaris. So Arizonicus <clears throat> Cubaris Benetensis, the Venezuela Pisum. I really hope a mutant pops up in the Pisum. I have a feeling that the orange mutation would probably turn them pink and or pink or red instead of orange. And I think that would be really cool. Or Dalmatian would look pretty cool in them too. Because you see the Dalmatian Venezuela Parvis, and they do have some nice dark spotting on them. So I'm wondering, in a close relative of theirs, with an already darker body coloration, they may have larger distribution of spots or darker colored spots on them. So I'm really hoping that one of those pops up eventually. Here's an X for this Venezuela Pisum. So expanses are awesome. The spikies are some of my favorites, just super small. I'll have to get some of my silverback verneri. I do, I actually still need silverback verneri. So if you have them, I'd like to swap you for some. Um, favorite isopod on July 2nd, 2021 at 7.35 p.m. <laughs> when I first got into pods, people said dairy cows are more ravenous, but scavers are definitely less shy and willing to eat, just eat. You know, I have a video somewhere of an armadillidium maculatum eating my fingertip. Same with um, Armadillidium parachi and Porcelio ornatus or whatever that clade. All isopods, if they are thirsty and hungry, will be quite bold. Some of them just do it on a slower uh, schedule, like Trichorhina tomentosa. So <clears throat> autumnal equinox expanses are amazing. I think Alan's working on those. Will there be any big pine keys? No, there will not be any big pine keys. That colony has been picked clean in the last couple of weeks. Okay, why did I, Why is the X red? I don't know what turned the X red. For some reason, the X is red in the chat, guys. It's a, it's a normal X. Uh, going once on the Venezuela Pisum. Going twice. Sold. Huh. Um, the X is not going through. Is anybody having issues in the discord right now? X didn't show up for me. Hmm. I'm going to try logging out and logging back into discord because it looks like my stuff isn't going through. Let's see what happens. We may, maybe we got a bump of people to the server and it's causing issues. Didn't show for me. And my bid didn't work. Nothing is sending. I think Discord might be having some issues right now, guys. I don't know if it's just the server or if it's a Discord wide thing. Not your server specifically, Kyle. Um, Discord is having an issue. All right. I think it's back. Should be back now. Messages failed to load. It's a good time for me to take a feeding break. Okay. We're back. It did not register the things that I put in. So I'm putting an X in here now. There's the X. We're doing the closing bidding now. Giving everybody just a quick second here now that we've gotten back on track. Okay. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To... It looks like Orang Mango had the last bid with a winning bid of $60. Sorry about whatever happened with the Discord server, guys. Again, we might just have a bunch of people. I'm doing a quick check in general to see uh, if any new people have, uh, have popped up. We got a lot of people online. We got a lot more people offline, almost over 300 people in the Discord server. Phenomenal. Thank you, guys. 
All right, we did the V Pisum. I think I crossed them off. Okay. Next, we'll do a group of 15 Porcelio Skaber Piebald. Oh, no, not again. Okay, there we go. The most perfect looking isopod you've ever seen. Yeah. Pisum are very much so just, just isopod, pure isopod energy. So um, I'm going to go into photo coming soon for my Skaber Piebalds. Um, all right. So I really need to get my pictures up there. Um, maybe don't use smug bugs images for things. Uh, I have a couple of reasons for that. I'll, uh, I'll just go ahead and delete that one. So whatever you're seeing in this picture, this piebald stock that I have only produces the highest quality individuals. So take the top three from there. And that's what the colony consistently produces from that image that was posted. It wasn't working for me, but not just on the server. Okay. <clears throat> Connection lapsed to servers. Discord won't send F for me. All good now. Some people are back. Some people aren't. But anyways, yeah, I'm still lagging out still. Uh, I'll just take it easy with this one then. We'll take a moment here and let some people think over bids or look at it. And I'll just ramble about Skaber like I always do. So, but anyways, the original of these pure piebalds came from Valerie O'Neill in New York. She was finding them on her barn near her hay piles or straw piles. She sent some to me. I proved them out, and I've been working ruthlessly since 2017 to have the best quality piebalds. It seems to be heritable, but not genetic. But what does seem to be genetic is the susceptibility of the isopods to whatever causes this. So you can upbreed for the piebalding in this strain of Skaber, but the trait itself, if you cross it into other lines of Skaber, is not 100% heritable. So I think what's happening is this is some sort of somatic mutation or it's a pathogen induced something. And by breeding for the best individuals, I've induced a vulnerability to it, which is why I get these consistently very high expression individuals. So these piebalds will blow any other piebalds you've seen out of the water. Mm. Here's the X. I'm hoping people aren't, aren't lagging as much. My Discord worked after I restarted it. Audio here is slightly off the video. Quality is fine on both, but oh, it just synced up. I'll say it again. If you're having issues with the live stream not syncing, do a refresh and it should be a bit better. It will never be perfect, but it'll be a, better, be, bit, be a bit better. Definitely not going to work tonight. I think I knew, caught the new COVID strain, so you're going to hang around with us tonight. All right, that's cool. The more the merrier. Uh, going once on the... Piebald Skaber going twice. Sold to Lizard Beans with a winning bid of $49. You will not be disappointed with these piebalds. Good show, everybody. Good show. Uh, do not confuse this with the koi strain. These are not kois. Believe me. I got those piebalds already. They are dope. Oh, we have... Uh, I'm going to close the window. So my parents came to drop off some stuff from the uh, farmer's market. And Brandon's also here because Brandon needs to check on his frogs and stuff. So Victor's going crazy, all that other stuff. So um, let's move on to set of Skaber piebalds. Let's do one more kind of mid-range thing, and then we will bump things up to – we'll kick things up to 11 in a second after that. Uh, so let's do a group of 50 Cubaris species Panda King, which to my knowledge there's been no updates on what they actually are. 
I'm already not disappointed. That's good to see lizard beans. Um, yeah, you will not be the best. Again, I brag. I brag sometimes. I will brag about these pie balls because I put a lot of work into it, and they've been very conducive to my direction, the direction that I've taken the stock in. <clears throat> so, um, basically, yeah, they they look really good, and they look good for they look really good for a couple of years now. I think we just lost a chunk of people in the stream too. Um, I got those uh, the rats. Something about rats. Hylas. Oh, hi, Hylas. Good to see you. I see a rat. Oh, because the panda rats. That's right. Rats, rats. We are the rats. I did get um, some of the orange mutant. I think they're calling them their species. Panda King, comma, red panda is the strain name. I did get some of those. I don't have enough to share yet, but you know, you all know that by spring auction, I'm going to have some of those to share. And I think I have white pandas too. Or panda species, panda king white or whatever i really need to check they were because of how easy they are they were just sort of a set up and forget species oh. hmm. sounds like victor wants to come in the house with everybody here i have the all red mutation says stella's springtails um, isopod giveaway. That's right. We need to have an isopod giveaway for sure. I still have my Murina papaya from when you sent them as a gift. There's also species white king to confuse things. Tennyson, are the white kings just white panda kings, or is or is that a completely different? I really hate the names. Cubaris citrus. Apparently, there's a black strain. I had the black strain. Uh, I actually was busy unpacking from a show and I wasn't able to, I didn't put them away fast enough, or maybe I put them in with something else. Um, and I did, did not get them two species, both not Panda Kings. Yeah. I love it. Love the nomenclature. Gotta love it. Can't wait till we can call them something normal like Cubaris bicolor. Yeah. Joseph Sarma that. Well, what will happen then is people will call them Cubaris bicolor panda king as the strain there's there's no rhyme or reason um and then people will be mad when there's like hubaris bicolor strain name is red panda and they'll, they'll always be a mess you know it was a mess from the it was a mess from early on it will remain a mess all right here's an x for wrapping up the bids for the panda kings lambda king species panda king Starting bid of one dollar. Cubaric pandemic. Cubaric species names are ridiculous. Cubaric species, give me your credit card info. I like. Uh, I'm still working on the platinum uh, credit card refinance your mortgage. Unfortunately, it's looking guys like a lot of those troglodyllo that are completely unmarked are probably males. So it may not prove out. I may not get to have my meme dream, but we'll see. I'll see if there are any really low expression females. And again, I'll just keep working on it. One day it'll go up there. One day you'll see you'll see something weird like that up on the auction. Okay, going once on the Panda Kings. Going twice. Sold. Two photo galleries apprentice with a winning bid of 62 have you in here under apprentice because otherwise it'll auto fill to photo gallery kibara species we've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty <laughs> oh that would be a good one too all right where are those on my list okay Okay, we'll we'll go up to something a little bit more, um, a little bit more coveted here. We have a group of eight Porcelio Suck Kinktus, starting bid of one dollar. I failed with these one time around at the beginning of the isopod craze, and I'm doing better with them now. The thing is, and Alan might be able to weigh in more with uh, with more information about uh, keeping Porcelio Suck Kinktus. Um, they just, they want 
that kind of they want that kind of uh, level of humidity that I accomplished with airflow. Um, they don't want it. They don't take it really dry. Magnificus can take it very dry. Boulevard I can take it very dry in my experience. They don't want it like that. They kind of want things to be kind of damp, maybe not definitely not wet. Do not keep them anywhere near wet. Kind of damp, but not too wet and not too dry. Alan is a master of managing humidity in bins that don't have air holes or don't have a lot of air holes. Alan somehow has them just perfect in his enclosure. They also get to about the size of, if not bigger than a Porcello Expansus. So um, the public is equally uninterested and ignorant in nomenclature and keeping things straight, which is kind of the goal when naming things. So I really like the Kibara species. We've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. That's the uh, that's the the winner for me, I think. Alan says they seem to like it moister than the expanses that he has. Um, so yeah, they, they do not keep them dry, but don't keep them wet and don't keep them moist. The level of moisture that a lot of Kibaras people keep their cubaris at might be a bit too much for them and they do like flat bark surfaces cork bark seems to be it may work if you have a lot of them they've kind of they grazed away at it a little bit fresh cork bark may be a little bit too tanniny for them um so i've been using elm and box elder bark um and when the colony continues to grow i'll probably put some basswood cookies in there too uh, because basswood's pretty digestible to them. I can get nice cookies of it for pretty cheap. And uh, it's nice and, and smooth and flat on the underside. Also refresh to this. Also refresh to this. The Damp King Pods. Alan says, definitely don't like wet. Horned one says, my manager's calling people to cover for me. Normally, it's our responsibility, but I think he feels bad because he's the one that got me sick. Bree says, I keep my boulevard relatively damp compared to my Hoffs. I just give them better airflow. And they seem to do well like that. Yeah, Magnificus and Hoffman's Eggy Eye and uh, uh, Sev Sevilla's seem to like it a bit more on the drier side overall. Oh, they like Tilia? Guess I know which snags to raise for my bugs or to raid for your bugs. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I haven't, basswood is not abundant enough here for me to collect bark for them, but, uh, it's the cookies are pretty well available commercially. It seems like a very common product for whittling and whatnot. And I have used it for a couple of things with good success, like roaches and a couple of other isopods. And they do seem to like it. It is a, not necessarily a really fast growing tree like an elm or a box elder, but it's kind of lower mid range of growth. So I would assume they would really like the bark, but I've never actually used the bark. I'm talking about the cookies. So, um, okay, let's see. The damp king pods. Here's the X for the Porcelio succinctus. Again, I don't recommend these for beginners. Uh, I'm still, I'm still kind of shaky at the wheel of the ship of keeping the colony going. I haven't had any significant losses, so everything's going well so far. But like winter is coming, and I don't know how they're going to respond, even with the polycarb stuff that I have on the lid to the drier air and the whole airflow situation that I talk about a billion times. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still a little bit green at them. The last time that I worked with them was back in 2017 or maybe it was late 2016. So, um, I hear some, I hear some Victor noises outside. I think that he's probably stressed that there are people in the house that he wants to see. Um, Alan says same strain as Kyle. So I might actually take just a quick break and leave something up in a second. Um, all right. The Porcelio succinctus. Final bids. Going once. Going twice. Sold. 
to oh, I said sold sold to Phoenix Arizona with a winning bid of seventy dollars. That sounds like maybe somebody went out to see him. He sounds like it's fine now. Yeah, he probably wants to see my parents. Again, everything, what's that quote? Everything is happening all the time and everywhere most of the time, sometimes or something. So um, anyways, congrats, Phoenix. I You are probably getting a pretty good deal on these compared to, well, really good deal compared to commercial listings. But All right, we'll dial it back with a group of 60 Porcelionides, Prunosis, Orange, starting bid of one dollar. Porcelionides actually listed the wrong thing. It's fine because we were going to get to these anyways, but now I'm looking here for there. We go, they're all the way down here. Good starter species. Nothing but positive things to say about Porcelionides in terms of just standard uh, isopod keeping. They're a good gateway drug bug. Gateway bug drug. Gateway drug bug. Swayback says, I'm kind of a new isopod keeper. I only have wild caught stuff. I made my early containers with very deep substrate, usually three to four inches of litter with bark and micro environments underneath and a big bark on top. I see everyone use very shallow substrate. Um, is there a reason not to use deep substrate? Deeper substrates help to maintain humidity for longer. And depending on what kind of setup you have and what sort of isopod, you can also, you're giving them an emergency food bank if you, the numbers get too big too fast or if you aren't feeding them as much, I suppose. So for me, the deep substrates, having it as a humidity bank is the primary appeal, especially with my ventilated setups. So you can have a shallower setup in a not so ventilated enclosure. And then as they sort of eat through the material you put in there, you can keep piling it up. It's a very viable strategy. Uh, I think that's what Alan's approach really is. Um, but again, for mine, I can go, I sometimes go two months without taking care of the isopods. And so it's good for me to have that deep bank of moisture so they can retreat into it. Some species will burrow. Some species will just go into the corner uh, under the bark where the, the humidity is staying high. Um, any tips for prunosis? Supposed to be an easier species, but mine are struggling over the other. Do you have them ventilated? That's the only thing I can think of is porcelainides are pretty drought tolerant or dryness tolerant. Not crazy, but a good amount. You usually, Floria, you find in very dry habitats. You find it in like sea grape leaf litter in Florida or in like dry ant nesty areas in Alabama. Prunosis is in kind of more humid habitats when I find them in Michigan. I first found them. All the wild type prunosis uh, that entered culture around like 2011 or 2012 all came from a compost heap at U of M Dearborn's Organic Garden. That's all from like 15 I collected when I was like super tired after work one day. And then they percolated from there. And of course, now everybody everywhere is catching isopods. So uh, your stock could be coming from anywhere. But back in the day, you know, so um, they like a little bit more moisture. But I find them in like the dry manure around like my chicken coop on the outside. It's never soaking wet, but it's never uh, completely thoroughly crispy dried. It's sort of damp conditions where the air is kind of humid, but the uh, substrate's a bit on the dry side. So here's an X for the Prunosis Orange. Powder oranges are great uh, cucks for my Pac-Man frog. Only two sellers I've seen for Succinctus are two fifty for hundred and two hundred for five. Swayback says, "Yeah, that's why I use it. The deeper substrate, harder to see them all, but much easier care." Thanks, man. That's exactly how I've been thinking about it. I've been doing okay, so I figure I must be doing okay. Do not argue with results. You can hear me sit here and talk my stupid head off all day about how I keep my bugs. You can go on Facebook and listen to 5 billion idiots talk about how they take care of their bugs. But if you are getting results, if you're getting good reproduction, do not question what you're doing. Keep doing it and keep doing it to a T, which means keep mimicking your humidity. Keep mimicking whatever your room conditions are. Keep mimicking whatever you're feeding. Keep mimicking the population density. Sometimes it's all about finding out what works for you. 
There are plenty of roach keepers who are successful, who have do not have all these fauneriums and all the stuff that I have. They have their own methods for keeping things. You got to find out what works for you and have just a basic understanding of what the organisms need and then sort of figure out your schedule and what you can provide them and work from there. All right. Porcelanides prunosis group going once. Going twice. Sold to a Maz with a winning bid of 20. Did Tarantula Jake have a higher winning bid? No, sorry. I saw the dot, dot, dots there. I thought he was mad about something. Winning bid of $27. Amo Zero, Amaz. I don't know. <clears throat> Okay, let's do something else a little on the easier end. Let's do 15 Armadillidium Verneri Orange with a starting bid of $1. Uh, I got to check my regular Verneri colony, but we might actually have, I might have just wild type Verneri available too. I got to check them when I do the next break. Um, if I had tanks, a lot of my stuff would dry out and die. Winter's, br Winter's brutal here too. But the difference is <clears throat> my full-time job is taking care of bugs. So spraying extra is not a problem for me. It's just part of my day in, day out. Other people who do not necessarily have that leisure or that, I guess it's not leisure, who do not have this lifestyle or employment and are working with cultures in their dry Midwestern houses or whatever, that's the strategy for you. Use your lower ventilation setups, maintain as much humidity, but just always be cautious when the air humidity and air air humidity goes up and airflow goes down be cautious of what can accumulate and how things can change in your bin <clears throat> alan says with most roaches you just need good ventilation constant access to moisture and food it's very true auburn keeps a lot of their roaches in bone dry enclosures with water wicks and a just a, a, a pile of dog food and nothing else that's how they keep so many roaches but the key is yes you may Keep roaches going in those setups. Um, you will not keep some roaches like Parkoblata going. Uh, you probably would not keep Magnifica going like that. Maybe you would. I don't know. I have to try it. Um, but Auburn has the rooms are heated. It's bone dry, and there's airflow through there. So even if things are very moist, it's not the same moisture as if you had them in a stagnant, dank room. But the other thing is, when you keep things in a setup like that, sure, you may get generation after generation after generation but instead of having <clears throat> a thousand peppered roaches in a 10 gallon tank with good conditions with humidity and substrate and all that stuff you may only end up ever having no more than 20 peppered roaches at any given time so i use absolutely no ventilation and everything i keep does fine yeah it works for you works for you but this provides what i say provides a reference point for people looking to do their own things. If they suspect humidity is a factor in their failures or something, they can look at success and work off and devise their own strategy from there. All right, here's the X for the Armadillidium verneri orange. I really think verneri and Kluge are the same species. I really do, but we'll see what, what, comes to pass in the next in the coming years okay going once for the verneri orange going twice sold to dr dead stuff with a winning bid of 65 dollars I think that's your first win too, Dr. Dud Stuff. So congrats. Let's see. Everybody's still here. Who talking? Angel's talking to my parents. They got lots of conversation apparently. Very chatty. Um, okay, let's do something really fun. Let's do a group of eight Hilaria Brevicornis. And I think all the stock that's in the States comes from the same population. I think it's the same a locality as TJ has listed on his site. Eight Hilaria Brevicornis. Starting bid of, well, let's just say $5. Let's 
they're worth it. I know it's going to go a lot higher than five dollars, but they're worth it. So the largest terrestrial ice, the largest terrestrial rolling isopod. And, you know, there's a couple that are a little orangish in the colony. I'm going to see if I can start teasing something out of that. I think any mutant would just be so cool and hilarious because of how big they are. Nothing, no, no other factor. You know, they're, they're, they're leaf litter colored isopods. Um, yeah, photo gallery. That's showing a good picture of uh, <clears throat> some of the orangishy ones. And yeah, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's just very uh, the wrong locate. Maybe um, you know, uh, just maybe it's just a variation and it's not strongly heritable or something. Maybe it is. I'll 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 start working on it. You know, eventually. But I think like a Dalmatian would just be so cool. Perfect slingshot ammo. Yeah, they're kind of perfect slingshot ammo size. So marbles. Yeah, they're cool. There's they're big. Even if they're they're leaf litter colored, I love them. Mine were sent to me from uh, the infamous Uncle Fungus. I think he sent me mate no. No more than 20, no less than 10, maybe like a year and a half or two years ago. So pelt your neighbors with isopods. I mean, honestly, some of the vulgaria around here get big enough that you could do that. Hello. Hey, everybody. Buy lots of stuff from Kyle. He's a good guy, and he gives you quality stuff. My dad is. Uh, my, my dad says hi. Love you too, Dad. Tell Mom I love her too. Thank you for food. <laughs> oh, that's my dad everybody in case you're wondering uh, what spawned to create me that's my dad so with dad hi kyle's dad bye kyle's dad that was cute yeah something we have some fun here sometimes sometimes here's an x for the hilaria everybody uh, i was worried the guy was an intruder about to execute you no, that's just my dad. They brought me. Uh, they brought some fall decor. They brought some uh, corn stalks for me to put up somewhere, and some stuff from the uh, farmers market. Probably some just regular old corn, and then some fruits and vegetables, which I am well, I'm not in dire need of, but I always appreciate. Raffle classic. Okay, going ending bids for the Hilaria brevicornis, the largest terrestrial rolling isopod species, not in culture, but as far as we know currently, just ever full stop. Going once, going twice, sold. To Dr. Dead Stuff with a winning bid of $80. Congratulations. You are on a hot streak with two wins in a row of isopod victories. Oh, I hear something going on outside. I'll be right back. I actually only put something up for auction first. We are going to do. That sounds like I should go outside. I'll be right back, guys.
Hoi kaloi, all right. Nazig was jumping on my dad, and Victor was trying to stop her from doing that. So, $2,000 for future puppy. My bank account. All right, here we go. My firstborn, 200 Got to pay more than $200 for a newborn, newborn baby. <laughs> That's horrible. What did I just auction off? You guys have had a huge meme while I was gone. Okay, we just did hilarious. So let's do some. We do this already. Uh, I'm going to auction these off even though I despise the name. 15 Armadillidium Granulatum. And again, I am powerless to steer the ship at this point. Magic Potion. Starting bid of $1. These are not the Magic Potion Isopod. This is somebody else who isolated a uh, Dalmatian form of Armadillium granulatum and called the magic potion because for some reason people think Dalmatians are magic potions and, you know, whatever. I've, I've said this a billion times. So these are not the magic potion Armadillium vulgare. This is a different species. I don't know what selection has been done with this strain, but they are not the magic potion as people have learned them for the last... I don't know how many years. Since 2015. Let's see. Still neat. I I love granulatum, so granulatum mutant is cool. I just uh the the trench is getting dug deeper and deeper with isopods and the shenanigans of nomenclature. So um, it's just going to get worse. It's uh, it's like that picture of those people on the back of like a car or something in uh, in some sort of Eastern European war zone. And the guy's wearing like the gas mask. And he's like, are you ready, friend? He looks like really eager. And then the next panel's like, because it's only getting worse. And that's exactly what's going on. So um, yeah, so they're Dalmatian granulatum. But again, there's no, there's no high, ultimately somebody could figure out if they had, had granulatum or vulgari, if they needed to, there's probably enough morphological differences left, even though these are a mutant, like for example, the exoskeleton is granulated. So you could look at these up close and say that they're not vulgari with stuff like the Japanese Dalmatian vulgari where they came stateside and people slapped the name on them and stuff. Um, I felt a personal impetus to try and rectify that as fast as I could. Obviously it's never fast enough, but at least the word is out there about the true state of magic potions. So um, Bree, maybe you've never seen actual magic potion vulgari. Maybe you've gotten some from another retailer that were, uh, crossed in with other U.S. strains or with the Japanese strain. So it's not a losing battle, though, because I have all the info on Roach Crossing. You go to the Magic Potion page, and you can read the full history. You got a lot. Of, there's a full history with email records, uh, date trail, the history, description, a billion things, the original picture of the starting topic of Magic Potion, so I don't see it as a losing battle. The only people who are going to lose out here are new hobbyists who are getting things and are not going to get what they wanted. So from just standard retail. There's the X for the granulatum magic potion. Uh, oh, well. Sometimes these things self-correct over time. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Noi Troba, winning bid of $45. Okay, let's do some 30 Porcelio F. Levis Dairy Cow, starting bid of $1. The Dairy Cow Isopod. I have proposed to Nathan that the common name for these, since they're not Levis, so they're not actually smooth isopods, 
The common name derived from the most popular strain name is the bovine isopod is what I propose. Who knows if it'll gain any traction? Who knows if it even deserves to gain any traction? But the distinction has to start being made. Um, again, this is one of those things where it's not absolutely horrible because people can get their, they'll get dairy cows and they'll, somebody will say, they'll say, oh, they were Levis. And then other people will be like, no, those aren't actually Levis. Those are this other species. And then they'll be able to break down. There's, there's no risk of putting dairy cows with current existing Levis strains. They do not cross. So there's no worry about lines getting mixed up or lost or any of that stuff. Um, so, uh, it's just going to be a thing that's going to slowly creep into circles. You know, a lot of the big sellers are going to be very hesitant because, not even hesitant, they're going to be resistant because uh, you cannot ship. They're trying to be goody-goody with permits, even though people are <clears throat> mislabeling their permits and mislabeling the things they're putting on their permits, which is forgery, might I remind you, when you uh, purposely fabricate official government information is uh, forgery. Um, anyways... So, uh, so basically they're not going to want this because dairy cows are a big seller and it's going to make it technically illegal to ship them across state lines because they're no longer Levis and therefore no longer a native or introduced species to the United States. So, uh, Hylus is seeing more and more things happen with more and more strains. It's only going to get worse. All I can say is that I will continue to do my best to offer pure stock of things to people and compensate people who have kept things isolated. I'm still looking for pure Punta Cana vulgari. If you have an old colony from around 2017, uh, 2016, 2017 of Punta Canas, or you know that they came right from, I believe they came right from Europe, I would like that, and you will be very well compensated. All right, here's an X. Dilo is saying that his uh, dairy cows do really well with cymodos. They do well with a lot of roaches, especially hissers. Hissers and isopods are very good friends. Uh, hissers do like good ventilation, but their poop is very rich, and a lot of isopods find it very palatable. Levis are definitely no exception. Um, technically illegal hasn't slowed the ice spot hobby yet. Doubt it will, but there are people, there are, there's an industry being built up around stuff like this. And for example, pet supplies plus and larger pet chains have been stocking isopods now. And I've seen dairy cows for sale at some of them. And that means that there may be legal, legal repercussions for these larger companies on a government level, and they will not be very happy about that if it happens. So that's the that's where the real kicker lies here. Um, I'm going to go through and answer some of the YouTube chat stuff in a second. Uh, I wouldn't recommend keeping them with ivory roaches. Eventually, they will be um, they will be outcompeted by the ivories. Ivories and pictoskelis just churn up the substrate too much for most isopods to be happy. Even dwarf whites will be kicked out eventually. Going once on the dairy cows. Going twice on the dairy cows. Sold to underdog 101 with a winning bid of $30. All right, let's really watch the world burn. We have a group of three or eight Christarma dilidium species. Um, I don't know if these have been identified. I just received them as Christarma dilidium species. So uh, photo gallery bot, let me know if these have an identity now. Starting bid of $1. This is one of the mid-size spiky species. One's giveaway, see Miracatum. All right. I'll edit it to say Christarmodilidium muricatum. If the bidding slows down for a second. Starting bid of $1, and I'll go through the YouTube here and see. Um, isn't the thing with the real stock, there's also some weird large, yes. Uh, you can find the full story on my Roach Crossing page. If you look up Magic Potion, it's on the sales page I have for them. Um, some of those northern Florida, Georgia populations of vulgari are very strange. They get very large. They grow very slow. 
I remember finding some absolute gigantic ones in a live oak forest in Sarasota, Florida. It was before I really started collecting Volgari localities, so I did not take any, unfortunately. Um, but I really wish I would have because they were very large and very sparsely distributed in the um, forest that I found them in. So Nathan says there are some populations of introduced Volgari that may not actually be Volgari. Uh, the 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 one of the the big ones was uh, in California. The Iluma silita is an introduced ice pod. There it looks first glance. It's like oh, these are just some kind of weirdish looking Volgari. It's actually an entirely different genus. You have to look at the number of ocelli on the uh, on the face and Volgari have multiple. Iluma only has one. It's kind of weird. You look it up close and it's got like the single black eyeball there on each side. So. Um, uh, so yeah, so, uh, some of these populations may have been introduced from different parts of Europe. Uh, for example, for some reason, the isopod sellers have felt it, uh, important to keep like the St. Lucia's and Punta Cana's, at least on paper. Um, a lot of that stock is compromised because people use unsterilized leaf litter, but they, um, they keep those separate and sell them as localities. And yet they disregard the fact that Vulgari is introduced everywhere from Florida they're introduced all the all over the place on the whole planet and in the United States from Florida all the way north to Alaska and that there couldn't be any sort of microevolution going on over the last hun several hundred years that they've been here or that they haven't come from different places in the first place. So, um, so yeah, there is something weird about the genetics in the initial, in the original, the actual magic potions. So... And also, I selected for yellow. They have a higher amount of yellow on them than the Japanese Dalmatians do. So, I multiple things that I've worked with on this this unique strain. So, Hyla says someone showed up on Reddit a while ago with a new line of orange OSLs, and everyone told it was BC Maple. So that's what they. Uh, that explains why there are Dalmatians. Well, so um, I think the person who got the BC maples in or one of the sellers who got them in originally did not have good containment protocol and some of the Mardi Gras Dalmatians slipped in and have contributed their weird genetics combined with their uh, chimerism to the maples. So I received some orange acellus and the guy was like, oh yeah, they throw these Dalmatians occasionally. So I'm working on just pulling out the oranges and I'm just going to call the strain orange and then pulling out, working on the Dalmatians and trying to get those just called something. But there's a whole thing on Mardi Gras Dalmatians and why they've got some weird somatic thing. There's a whole thing. I wrote a whole article on this, on the weirdness of the Mardi Gras Dalmatians and why they are not consistently proving out. Um, St. Lucia and Punta Cana are both localities and not morphs. Those are just wild strains of Volgari. Um, I do also need Volgari from every state in the U.S., all right, here's an X for the Cristarmadilidiums. Spiky pineapple or spiny pineapple is a pretty good name for them. I think that's 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 one of those cute names, just like rubber duckies. Rubber duckies do look like rubber duckies. There's no like uh, uh, homosexual wet dream or species uh, uh, Taiwanese uh, closeted prince or something like that nomenclature. It's just very descriptive right off the bat. So, going once on the Cristarmadilidium, going twice, sold to DUI with a winning bid of DUI, definitely your first win of the auction, so congratulations. Okay, let me get something else up and get going on that. Let's do some 15 Armadillidium Maculatum Angel. This is one of my projects that proved out. Starting bid of $10. Uh, nearly solid white Armadillidium Maculatum. If you keep them drier... They will have more dark coloration on them, more especially on the edges of the segments. They'll have more of the like typical maculatum color. 
If you keep them moister, they'll be almost solid white. Also, temperature plays into that. So, Brie asking, can I buy Cubara species homosexual wet dream? Uh, no photo. <laughs> Don't necessarily Google that. I mean, if it's your kind of thing, go for it. But um, So, Vulgari are, are recorded, I think, from every single state, but that does not mean that they're everywhere in every single state. For example... They're notoriously difficult to find in t Tennessee where they're outcompeted by uh, Armadillidium nasatum and Porcelio scaber and Trichelopus rathkii. They're pretty common in Michigan. They're not very common in all parts of Florida. They're very localized, especially in southern Florida. And they're reported from Hawaii. I have some Hawaiian stock that will be going up later. Um, but again, they're kind of localized. They don't occur like they do. Like in Michigan, like they're almost everywhere. Well, then you go to Hawaii and you have to really hunt and pick around for them because there's so much other stuff there that they're competing with. Uh, I've started to see some orange tones appear in my Acellus from Washington State. Oh, I haven't isolated yet. Yeah, I really wish in 2012 when I found an orange Acellus in Michigan, I really wish I had the brain power to get it isolated. Uh, I think I put it I put it back. I was at a moth lighting night with um, uh, a girl that I was seeing at the time. And uh, it was the night where I think her name is Seabrook Laney, who helped co-author the Moths of the Upper Midwest identification book for Peterson. Uh, she was there and we were doing a moth lighting night and looking at the micro lips and stuff like that. And I flipped a log and I found an orange acellus. And I had, you know, I was familiar with isolating isopod morphs and stuff. But like I'd found like Dalmatian scaber and some other things kind of regularly at that point. So I thought, Oh, you know, I don't need to collect this now. I'll come back and I'll find another one in like, you know, a couple weeks or months or years or whatever. Never found another one. So. I'm surprised YouTube didn't cancel my comment, says Alan. All right. Here's an X. No photo, but basically higher white maculatum. Also, these are not the da high white Dalmatian or whatever maculatum. These are completely unrelated to that stock. Those are from the time when the uh, different strains of maculatum were getting mixed. And these are from the old original import stock. So this is these are consistent. They don't throw a mixture of different colors and stuff like that. Very con Not high white or dimension stock. Thank you, photo gallery. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Bree says, maculatum I got were supposed to be regular, but the babies I've seen some with wet yellow stripes and some that are chocolate. Again, it's the apocalypse. It is the apocalypse where people will start getting uh, a mixture of different things. And eventually, um, from a strictly business standpoint, consumer confidence will, will drop as people buy things and don't get what they're paying for. Um, but that's a strictly, strictly cold-hearted, calculated business approach, though. Um, but anyways, going once on the Angels. Going twice... Sold to Phoenix, Arizona with a winning bid of $47. I should have asked. I think Junior got these from me at one of the last auctions. I should have asked him to give uh, everybody an update on how much he, he liked them or didn't like them. Winning bid of 47 to Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. Um, let's do, let's do a really cool one. I like these a lot. Eight Porcelio species, Almeria mountains, starting bid of $1. This is like a Hoffman's eggy sized, uh, Af North African species. I'm not sure how common they are. Initially believed to be a variant of Hoffman's eggy eye. Blah, blah, blah. Not much information on them. Actually, where are the Almeria Mountains? Again, I thought it said it was in North Africa. That's where I was told. Sierra's. Uh, no, it looks like it's actually in Spain. Chulo is the highest point. Maybe it's in southern Spain. Let me get on a map. Okay, it is not in Africa, as I was really told. It is in southern Spain, east of Gibraltar, and I would assume around the town that is called Almeria. 
So um, they're very similar to Hoffman's Eggii. Who knows if they'll be examined and determined to be Hoffman's Eggii. But the edging is a lot brighter. The antennae are a lot brighter. The coloration difference between the edges and the center of the body is a lot crisper. And I feel confirmed Hoffman's Eggii. So they are a Hoffman's Eggii locality. So I will go ahead and I will update that. So, um, and by a isopod expert, I would assume in Spain. So, but they are different than the, whatever the other stock of Hoffman's Eggii that we have is very diff possibly subspecies because of morphological differences, but not confirmed yet. They carry themselves much more higher than um, the original strain of Hoffman's Eggii do. When you see them, it's almost like they're kind of, when they're moving around, it's like they're kind of lifting their whole body as high as they can when they're walking around. And even the funny thing is, even the small, uh, the smaller individuals will do that too, like the immatures. So uh, if you have Hoffman's Eggii and you get these, you will see a very stark difference. The, whatever the other strain of Hoffman's Eggii is, you will see a very stark difference between them. Uh, and yes, the males do get long uropods. Um, let's see if I don't really care too much about Brie talking about how she had some, some mixture of different colors in her uh, colonies. Brown and patternless acellus here. Can't seem to get a wild caught culture to be successful though. They could be cool. Here's the funny thing. Um, I don't think that acellus need it to be cooler and damper. And this is because of something funny that happened when I, uh, when I initially moved. So I had... I had my Gromphodorina oblongonota in a big plastic tote when I uh, initially moved out of my parents' house, and I had a heat lamp on one side of them because I wanted to get as produce as many of them as I could. Actually, I should really get back to doing that because there seems to be a real dearth of oblongonota available right now. But anyways, so I uh, I put Armadillidium klugii Montenegro in with them. And I also put some meniscus acellus in with them. I don't know why. So this enclosure was getting very hot. Uh, like temperature gun on the side of the plastic was saying like 97 degrees. And all the roaches would be like over on the warm side. Um, and then if you open the container, it was like a gush of, of humid, hot air that would come out. The substrate was dry on half of it and then moist on the other uh, layer of wood chips and stuff uh, for the hissers to grab on and for the babies to hide under. But the acellus thrived in that setup. But the funny thing was they never got bigger than maybe like a little over a centimeter. So they were reproducing at like a centimeter in size or a little bit bigger than that. And it was so bizarre to see. What I think it is is the histories, again, they produce very bacteria, microbiota-rich poop. And I think that whatever the acellus prefer to eat – or whatever breaks down the wood in a way uh, that's ideal for them, likes humid, moist conditions. But the hisser poop is so rich, and they have a constant stream of it, that they were probably able to eat that and get all they needed from that. And the small size was the fact that, yes, they were very stressed from being kept at higher temperatures, but they were still thriving because they had basically perfect food on tap from them. Two of my top three hobby species. Here's an X for the Hoffman's Eggii, Almeria Mountains. Again, photo gallery saying they might be a got a subspecies, uh, saying, God damn it, isopod taxonomy. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of a mess. And like it's funny because you could go 30 miles east, west, or north and probably find a different subspecies or variant of these guys. So, but again. <laughs> If you already have the standard hobby stock of Hoffman's Eggii, you will find these very different, very charismatic. If I had to keep the old hobby stock of Hoffman's Eggii or these Almeria Mountains, if I had to choose between the two at gunpoint, I would, without even hesitating, pick the Almeria Mountains. They have a lot more character to them from a, you know, from a subjective standpoint. Going once, going twice, sold to Arbs with a snipe of $56. 
All right, that was good. All right, almost put one in last minute, but refrained, refrained, sniped me. Luch has that bad luck, yeah. Luch got that bad luck. All right, here's a cool, here's a cool, very underrated isopod. We have a group of Trachelopus caucasius. They are of the Caucasians, like I am, the Caucasians proper, not like all you whiteies have appropriated the term Caucasian, but an actual Caucasian from the Caucasus. Uh, we have a starting bid of $1 for Trachelopus caucasius. Thank you, Alan, for sending me. Yes, sir, watching football so hard. Uh, thank you, Alan, for, for sending me the start of these guys after the first one failed. Uh, my B at first, but pretty cool. A large Trachelopus. Stephen Logan asked about any expanses. Uh, I have to check my whites when I go downstairs. What Caucasius care like? Um, I have them in with my Centrobulus Splendidus millipedes, and that's that's all that I do is I just take care of the millipedes, and the isopods are just kind of there, and everybody's pretty happy about it. Have you ever used rhino roach poop as isopod food? No, but I bet that they would absolutely love it. Bree asking about Almeria Mountains care, the same as normal Hoffman's eggy eye. Um, yeah, they seem to take about the same conditions. Hoffman's eggy I actually don't do wonderful for me all the time. Uh, right now they're kind of in a bit of a slump, so there won't be any Porcelio Hoffman's eggy I. But uh, again, the Almeria Mountains are doing well, but I did set them up in their own special, tightly managed enclosure. Not tightly managed, but I, just, I went all out because it's like these aren't very common. I should really put an effort into keeping these going. Um, sometimes you bring isopods in from the wild and they're the, the food that they're getting their their gut flora, fauna, etc., is just not adapted to what you're going to be giving them. And so you, even just catching wild isopods, sometimes you'll have a big die off because it's just a big shock for them. And it may take a generation for them to start to adapt or for those individuals to just grow up a bit and you just accept your losses. So um, wow, a lot of bidding for the Caucasius. Sleeve McDichael says these are doing these are going great for me. Yeah, I like them. The ones that I have, I wouldn't say that the coloration in that picture is, is that it's quite that strong. I don't know if there was an alteration there or more. Maybe it's a different strain than I have. So I, I wouldn't say that the coloration is quite that yellow. It's more of a creamy from what I can see. But I do like them. They're not reproducing like out of control. I guess they're just reproducing like a Trichalpus because Rathki I don't really out reproduce out of control. So here's an X for the Trichalpus caucasius, my fellow Caucasians proper. Um, happened to me with wild caught vulgari. Every adult die, but tub is full of monkey. Yeah, it's it's a it's a classic phenomenon that happens when you bring some ice pods in from uh, uh, out of doors. Now extrapolate that to all the uh, wild caught cubaris and nasodil and whatnot that have come in, and uh, you've got a recipe for disaster. All right, going once on the Trichelpis caucasius, going twice. Sold to Dr. Dead Stuff with a winning bid of 65. Neat species. Neat. Best way to describe them. Again, nothing nothing to 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 to, to uh, write home about. Not write home about them if I found them. nothing to go crazy for. But cool, but neat. It's okay. Not everything has to be has to be phenomenal and gaudy. Speaking of which, next we're going to do a group of 40 Mictoniscus medcoffi from Auburn, Alabama, starting bid of $30. According to some isopod specialists, the Mictoniscus complex, uh, all of them are, I guess most of them are medcoffi. Actually, Al, uh, not Sa Alan Satchel. When you go back to Nolens, mm. I need some more of those super long boy Mictoniscus. My culture died. I still have all my Medcoffi cultures, but the Mictoniscus from Nolens died. I need those again badly. 
really got to get those. So, um, anyways, so this is a yes, tiny, tiny wood dwelling species. You find these in well rotted wood, um, moist, well rotted wood. They share, uh, sometimes you find them with pachydesmus millipedes in that habitat. Uh, so a cool little, cool little guys. Where is it? Crossing things off too early. So I have kept them on just a wood diet. I have done that before. And for some reason, after maybe like seven months, they crashed and I couldn't pull them back out of it. I don't have that problem anymore. And I'm wondering if it was a ventilation related thing. So back when I lived with my parents again, um, I haven't had any problems since keeping them where I'm currently at. So, all right, we've got a couple of people interested, so I'll go ahead and put this here. They're small, but they're actually not, they, they are not always as tiny as you think they are. They're larger than Phalloniscus baldonii, the dwarf purples. They're larger than that, and they can get quite big compared to dwarf purples, too, under good conditions. So they're not, they're like, I think the biggest one I saw was pushing on like Nagurus nanus size in the colony, actually. Going once on the Mictoniscus medcoffi, uh, Auburn, Alabama. Going twice, sold to Actral with a winning bid of fifty-one dollars. Put something up and check the YouTube in a second here. The Ute. Um, we're going to, I think we're going to do a surge of some high dollar stuff in a second here. So we're just going to go through and go through a little bit of other stuff first. I'm, I'm interested what Photo Gallery Bot says about this. 15 Porcelio Ornatus South starting bid of $1. Um, are these our pseudo Ornatus now? Maybe again at the um, when I do the site overhaul, everything I'm going to photo gallery bot and I'm going to Nathan, and we're gonna get everything all coordinated. All the stock that I have is getting updated with the current accepted Latin names. Um, but yeah, photo gallery are these Ornatus? So these are actual Ornatus, and then the ones that people were calling Ornatus North or something are pseudo Ornatus or pseudo Ornatus. Um, wouldn't switch that name personally for purples. There's definitely multiple species being sold as dwarf purple, unless yours. My dwarf purples are from a very long time ago. Um, and I do have some of the other dwarf purpley looking dwarf purples. Uh, and I've sent them to Nate and he's gotten them to, I think, Hylaniscidae or whatever um, for the family, but not to genus. Uh, but this is from the OG stock of dwarf purples. So I'd imagine that's what was originally identified. And I, something like that. Yeah, photo gallery, you're supposed to be smart. You're supposed to bring me up to date on all this stuff. And correct me snobbily. Pseudornatus. Let's see. So it looks like they are pseudornatus now. So I'll I'll put a star and correct that. I hope that's a valid thing and not just I don't care about ornatus. No offense, ornatus peeps. Something like that. Yeah, no offense. Um, yeah, I got nothing. Again, I expected my, uh, my photo gallery bot to be all knowing and ended up being not knowing. We'll do an, I we'll, we'll do a giveaway in a second here. Photo gallery apprentice. You're fine. Not you. You're fine. It's the just straight up photo gallery that has me, has me perturbed. Here's the X. Funny thing about the dwarf purple isopods, hilarious thing about them. Oh, they were also, I think they used to be sold as Costa Rican dwarf purples, which is the other thing. I had a gaming friend who lived in, in Costa Rica, and I was telling him about, you know, how we were like breeding all these bugs and selling them and like 
you know, I think because those were called Costa Rican dwarf purples at the time. I think I sent him a picture of them and, you know, say like, yeah, these go for like this much here. And, you know, you could find cool stuff if you went out looking. And he responded to me, you know, in kind of broken English. He said like, oh, you flip a rock here and there's like thousands of those here. And at the time I was just sort of dismissive. I was like, he's from Costa Rica, but like, I bet this is some like rare Costa Rican species from like the middle of the rainforest or something. And, you know, there's no way they could be like that. You know, maybe they're not even from Costa Rica or whatever. So then it really brought things full circle when the idea on the dwarf purples was made as it being a Costa Rican endemic. And then I was like, oh my God, he maybe was actually completely right, you know, even though he was not a bug person, like him telling me, oh yeah, they're everywhere here if you just flip rocks and stuff, you know, uh, I, it, was, it was just uncanny that, that he could be 100% right about that. Not even being a bug person, you know, again, kind of being snobby and elitist, like, oh, this normal person would never know um, a, a, a one bug from another bug, so... All right, going once on the Souths. Going twice on the Souths. Sold to the winning bid is Chris Sniper. Because you are not allowed to edit bids. You must correct bids with a separate post. So Chris Sniper has won with a winning bid of $17. Neutroba, you, you must read the rules where it says you cannot edit bids. You must correct them with a bid afterwards. So Chris Sniper has won with a winning bid of $17. The microfauna is insanely diverse in Costa Rica. It's okay. Just remember, read the rules. Uh, let's see. What did we just do? We just did the Pseudonatus. Um, let's do some Porcel 60 Porcelionides Prunosis Orange Cream. Starting bid of $1. Oh, I didn't see Neutroba. I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. I have to go back and retract the bid on that one. I didn't see the edited. I wasn't paying attention. That actually should go to Stella's Springtails. So unfortunately, I have to go back and do that. Make sure you read the rules. Always read the rules. Uh, where's the... I gotta look for this in my records. I must be strict about these things. For without rules and order, we are nothing more but chimps in the dust. So Stella's Springtails, you have actually won the Granulata Magic Potion. Got to be careful. It won't happen again. It better not happen again. All right. Good picture of the orange creams there. The females of this strain, it's just sexual dimorphism, just like it is in the uh, Oreo crumbles or cookies and cream or whatever those prunosis, the other, the basal stock of prunosis are called and changed or traded as that have just the Dalmatian characteristic. The males will have more dark pigment on them, and the fe females will have less. I think some people are trying to breed to get it more even distribution across the sexes, but in just regular unimp unimproved double homozygous recessives for the orange and the um, Dalmatian traits, which is what the orange creams are, the females will have less of the orange on them, and the males will have more. Here's an X for the orange creams. I love these guys. Didn't want to be that guy, but I'll take that dub. Zulo says juicy. Hi, Zulo. I like the word juicy. I don't recommend Prunosis as a cleanup crew for Pictus geckos. I think my geckos ate them all. You can't stop the geckos from eating. That's the thing. I had a Celis or and or Spanish orange as a cleanup crew for crested geckos for a while. And eventually they did eat all the isopods. So, I mean, it's good calcium. Real good calcium. Okay. Going once. Going twice. 
sold to Lil Ninjas 18. Started a winning bid of $43. Orange cream is a cross that anybody could have done, but I will sneak in and say that uh, Derek Niehaus and I were on the ground floor for the project, as I must say, in places. So we picked the name, got it out there, and now obviously everybody has it. It's very surreal to see stuff that you uh, created and named getting out there and sad when you see it bastardized like the precious magic potion vulgari okay guys get ready we're amping things up it's time for some high octane isopod bids All right, guys, get ready because it's going crazy. Um, we're going to start with – we'll do a giveaway after three of these. i got to figure out a question or something. Um, first up, we have eight Troglo Dillo species green spots was once called – um, Troglodilla rotundatus. Apparently, they're not rotundatus. Starting bid of one dollar. I'll do a giveaway in the um chat as well. And the giveaway question is. Um, and you this this is you gotta you gotta pick the exact right answer. There's there's a correct there's a there's a reduced answer and there's a full correct answer. You have to give the specific answer. And the question is, what is Kyle's favorite color for a group of twelve uh, Reductoniscus tuberculatus, the Borneo, the spiky alligator isopods? Again, got to give it's not it's not you got to give a specific color. There's more to it than just one word. It's a very specific color. Skull white. I'm not seeing it yet. I'm not seeing it. Not seeing it. Still not yet. Roach ivory is interesting. Pastel blue. Nope. Still not seeing it. Still not seeing it. Come on guys, everybody went to first grade, right? Keep picking colors. We have a winner. Stella's Springtails wins the Reductoniscus tuberculatus with royal blue is my favorite color. So Stella's Springtails, congratulations. You win a group of 12 Reductoniscus tuberculatus, the Borneo alligator isopods. Yep, I'm I'm a blue boy. It's my favorite color. Give them away. I have hundreds of the of these. Um, all right. Um, Stella is passing. We have a new question then. And that question is, what is my favorite flower color? What is my favorite flower color? Because my favorite color is royal blue, but there's a particular color of flower that I really like. I don't see it yet. Some people have been a little close. It's done. <laughs> Some people are close. Nobody's hit the nail on the head yet. Fluorescent thing pink. That's a funny guess. Some people are still close. Still close. Nobody's there yet, though. 
Nobody's there yet. I'm going to scroll up and double check. I don't think anybody's hit it yet. No, some people have come close, but nobody's hit the nail on the head. How specific? Um, I'll there's you can describe it in one word, but I'll take two words for it if somebody actually gets it. Nobody's gotten it yet. Nobody's gotten it yet. I'm actually a little shocked. I like uh, Chris's with a very specific uh, specific number there. Still close. Nobody's hit the nail on the head. The purple flower for a sweet potato? Nobody's gotten it yet. Huh? Somebody got it. Somebody got it. Arb ZDF. Got it. Scarlet. I would have taken scarlet red too. Scarlet is my favorite flower color. I absolutely love flowers that have or plants that have scarlet colored flowers. Again, I love the color blue in concept, but when I see a really scarlet red flower, what even is that? Yeah, so I would have taken scarlet or scarlet red. I was thinking scarlet. You should have said it then. So Arb ZDF, congratulations. Stella Springtails has passed the win of the uh, reductoniscus to you. Arb ZDF. Congratulations, you won the starter colony of Rhodoctoniscus tuberculatus. Lobelia fan spotted. P yellow, my face. It's the color of the opium poppy. <laughs> That's hilarious. And, uh, you know, you uh, scarlet bee balm is another one. Cannas have scarlet red flowers. Um, catch flies have scarlet red flowers. Uh, scarlet sage, salvia, coccinea. A lot of scarlet flowers. Again, I don't in concept like the color red as much as I like blue, especially um, uh, especially One second. I don't I, I like the color blue makes me very happy. Royal blue makes me very happy. But when I see scarlet red flowers, I really appreciate them. What's your favorite type of flower? Funny, it's not actually a scarlet color, colored flower. It's uh, maybe Rudbeckias or violets, actually. Um, magnificent animals. We can work out. Uh, we can work out the panda king thing later. I actually realized uh, that I have to. I we have a pending bid thing going on here. I already have them. I just wanted to spice it up. That's funny. Here's an X for the troglodillo species green spots. Um, yes, yeah, so we can wrap those things ass because I might do it again. Um, uh, am I correct in saying that I won the Panda Kings for sixty plus ten dollars? I split with someone for thirty six each. Yeah, you, that that that's correct. Or is it a dumb like her? I really like her to Geosasarma. Don't. Fulgida is very nice too. I like all the Rudbeckias, but Herta, Herta is a beautiful weed, and I especially like the uh, tetraploid Hertas, uh, the Gloriosa daisies. I particularly, I guess there's red on those flowers on a lot of the tetraploid Hertas. So, okay, wrapping up the bids for the troglodillos. Going once, going twice. Sold to. I'm doing gonna do a control R, doing a control R. Sold to Hades 2. Winning bid of a hundred and one dollars is what I'm seeing. Dr. Dead Stuff, you got you got at the last minute swooped it in upon. Okay, but we're going to keep the momentum going. We're going to do a group of 20 Cubara, something really boring, uh, species Cappuccino, starting bid of $1, something that everybody, that nobody likes these for any reason. Uh, Cubara species. 
Capu, Cap, and who even knows how to spell cappuccino? Um, there we have him. Good deal. Uh, or is it dumb like Hertz? Uh, Hertz is funny, but damn, I never see bugs on it. I, um, Hertz has the season that bugs use Rebecca or Hertha is usually pretty early on. I've noticed in usually it starts blooming in June here and I'll see a lot of stuff going to it in June. And then if there's any plants still blooming by like the time, like mid to late July rolls around, there's usually not too much stuff on it. And I've noticed that the same amount or maybe even more of bugs go to the tetraploid varieties than to just the straight up wild typey looking varieties. So as far as pollination, if you look at the leaves and the uh, petals, grasshoppers really love eating uh, Rudbeckia herta. Seems like it's probably a good snack for them to switch to between eating grass and other stuff. Just Sarma, I wonder how why some of those big native composites just don't seem to be super popular with pollinators. Uh, again, at least with other flowers, you may already know this, but they may time their nectar releases at very specific, specific times of the day. And again, maybe it's just a very narrow band where they're producing nectar or whatever's drawing in pollinators. Um, for I mean, the easiest example is like, uh, as rosaceous, but just roses, how you can smell them during the day and they'll have a very strong smell, especially by afternoon. And then you go to sniff them in the evening or at night and there's barely any smell. There's just a little remnant of smell. I thought I thought I was mint spending around seventy dollars on cave roaches, but at least I got fifty of them. Uh, oh, we've got some people who actually want the uh, cappuccinos. I want a new isopof, said somebody. Here's an X for the gyna, or not gyna, the uh, cubaris cappuccino. Everything I hear, ga cappuccino, cappuccino. I think of gyna cappuccino or argala cappuccino. That's the way my brain is wired. I was I was raised this way. With the roach wiring, the roach brain wiring. I got the roach on the brains. Or the genus cappuccino, also a cockroach, yeah. Guide a species cappuccino. That's a cursed statement there. Okay. Uh, Cubara species cappuccino going once, going twice. Sold. To many meme entries, but the winner is Lizard Beans with a winning bid of one hundred dollars. Congrats! You got yourself a good, good group of stuff. All right, next high octane eight Cubara species. Amber, I don't know if they're called amber duckies properly or just amber. Starting bid of $1. This is one of my favorite Cubaris. Again, I'm a big fan of the regular duckies, of the white duckies. White tigers are nice too, but I need to get more consistent production out of them. Uh, I'll be working on it this winter. And I do really like these ambers too. They've got a good color, good color distinction going on. Just Sarma talking about Yarrow, the most popular thing you've had flowering. Uh, again, that's another one here that tends to get hit very early on when it's flowering uh, in June and uh, really has a drop off if any of it continues flowering. Unless you get weird, you get weird individuals of yarrow flowering in like October or November. And then I've noticed that um, flies really like to go to them, surfeit flies. Uh, Summit meets annually to address the spelling of cappuccino. This has been a contentious issue, close to a consensus. However, the COVID pandemic disrupted plans. Hope for clarity by 2025. <laughs> I like that assessment. Certified Cubaris moment. It doubles in price so fast. Certified Cubaris moment. Neutroba in here with a 115 bid. Well, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand. I also have a uh, Geosa Sarma. I also have, um, well, I had some patches of Eurasian genotype Yarrow that I've been fighting against this year. <clears throat> I 
Actually, the patch I sprayed down by the street did come back, so I'm probably going to rip that out before the end of the year so that next year, whether I'm here or not, uh, native annuals can seed into there and take it over real quick. But uh, I do have my one little patch of native white yarrow over here, and I will be taking that individual with me when I move. I love that little guy. He's my little homie. He bloomed in December the first year I transplanted him, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. But yeah, thank you for the Bentley. Thank you for that gift. That's the perfect gift. All right, here's the X for the Cubara species amber. We'll do a couple more high octane bids before we decrease things. Mine are probably generic native X Russian G. Eurasian genotype. Yeah, again, they all they all hybridize, they all do all kinds of stuff. The only thing that I've noticed is that the kind of like the Eurasian frag is that the Eurasian yarrow tends to be more aggressive in spots or anything. The ones that have the Eurasian influence tend to be more aggressive in places. The native one seems to be a bit taller, a bit more wispy looking, and it doesn't form like a dense patch. It kind of spreads out and leaves some room in between uh, when it's when it's um when it's forming a little clump. It's more of a loose clump. I actually I do like aroids sway back. Uh, I like a lot of our native aroids. I have a nice patch of green dragon. I can't remember the trisema something tri, tri, uh, dress trice uh, it was erisema dracontium. Um, there's a lot of cool uh, aquatic aeroids in Mich in Michigan. There's um, aero arum, which is a huge uh, kind of emergent vegetation plant. Uh, I would really like to propagate some of that in the future. It's very tropical looking, and I do still need to go to northern Michigan and get some Caltha palustris, the native um, calla lily. I really, really want those. Haven't been able to find them for sale anywhere. And, of course, I would prefer the North American genotype. The real roach crossing bloodline. Very amusing. All right. Look, just look at me and Alan hauling racist insults, says Hakulani. Uh, more Asian than your, I would say. Going once on the Cubara species amber. Going twice. Sold to Neutroba with a winning bid of 115. Congrats. Again, more T posing to a certain dominance in some of these situations. Let's do 15. Reductoniscus tuberculatus, not tuberculosis, starting bid of $1. Borneo spiny alligator, something, something, you know, something, whatever. Uh, these have done well with my flame leg, leg millipedes, and they don't seem to disturb them, and they don't seem to powderize the substrate because they don't reproduce or breed, etc., as fast as or grow as fast as trichorina tomatosa. Satchel says, whoever buys your house is going to be so annoyed by all the weeds that will keep popping up in the garden. Yeah, maybe. Unless if they don't, you know, bulldoze the whole thing and slap in lawn and then wonder why, like, all the places where I planted things where the soil's been building up for years are, like, this beautiful, luscious lawn that needs to be mowed every day and all the other areas where I just had, like, paths and stuff are just barren wastelands. They're going to be like, oh, we've got to pay somebody to rake off the, to remove the whole lawn and put a new one down. It's not working. Fabids and mints. You kind of sound like Will. Will was into fabacious bastards. And uh, after uh, the, uh, uh, was Joey Santor, the uh, crime pays, but botany doesn't. Uh, he's been a big fan of that. I, I enjoy watching. I watch enjoy watching that stuff too. Uh, it is nice. I will say, compared to being a bug person, especially somebody looking to raise like all the bugs, it's nice going out with botany-minded people to just kind of look at things or look for things or just collect seeds of things and know you don't need to immediately set it up. So. 
All right, here's an X for the Reductoniscus tuberculos tuberculosis. They are cute little isopods. Uh, they're quite small. They're like Venezuela parvus size, maybe a little bit smaller. But you can still see the texture on them. And the fact that they're easy makes them very appealing. Uh, I don't know. Some people, I don't know. I, I don't keep enough of in touch with some of the isopod stuff with all the Malaysian spinies and the ones that there's one population on top of a mountain and the collector went and wiped them out uh, for short-term commercial gains. Uh, I don't know how all of those are going, but it's nice that these are just easy without much effort on my part. It's nice that they kind of auto-generate and they keep the flame legs happy or uh, they keep them company. Lawns are delicious if you have grazing animals. This is one of the main arguments, or if you have heavy foot traffic, are the only arguments for lawns, uh, basically. Grass is for geese and not for goats. Geese and sheep, the E sounds, and I guess horses too. And I guess emus maybe. <laughs> All right, going once on the Reductoniscus tuberculosis. Going twice. Sold. To, I'm going to do a control R because it's pretty close there. Swayback asks, are you moving? Yes, I should be moving this this spring come hell or high water, hopefully. Down with lawns. True Green Lawn should take care of that problem and also make sure no one is able to use their well. I forgot. That's a thing. If you have a lawn care service and they're dumping all kinds of stuff on your property, that'll get in your well. I, I completely forgot that that's a thing for some people. Um, uh, I'm going to spoil alert. There's not a comically large amount of dairy cows. I just kind of maintain that colony at like the minimum because everybody has them. Uh, they're not exceptionally rare or special or warranting of a huge amount of space. Part of me wants to get out of bug hobby and go full botany. Uh, well, you can leave me in the bug hobby and send me, send me the things that you find, Alan, but I am fully supportive of your, of your botanical endeavors. Uh, I just kind of circle around fish and bugs and plants and kind of how it is. Okay. The winner was Zulo with a winning bid of 58. It was a veritable snipe there, it looks like. Uh, I do love when it comes down to the control R as nerve wracking as that is. There's something exciting about waiting for it to refresh. Um, and let's, uh, let's do one more semi higher octane thingy ish sort of, uh, before we go on to some, just a regular pace We'll do eight Porcelio. Did I write? Did I write them out here? Hmm. All right, we'll do these first. Porcelio verneri. Am I right? No, not verneri. Um, Flava marginatus. Starting bid of one dollar. It's another spoiler alert. There will be verneri. I wanted to do the Flava marginatus first. Flavo marginatus. Not Flavi. We got to do our proper declensions here. Uh, the Rorsch. Somebody's calling them Rorschach ice pods. Honestly, not the worst common name with the amount of variety of dorsal patterns they can have. I actually appreciate that more than I thought I would. The brain read it at first and was like, "That's so dumb. I I hate this." And then the more I sat there and thought about it, I was more like, yeah, this all happened over the course of, what, three seconds just now? But I like that. I like Rorschach isopod. It's suitable. It's suitable. Suppose it depends on your definition of lawn. If it's green and could possibly be mowed close enough. Yeah, there's, there's a difference between having a big wide open space that you mow and as Angela is finding out, it's kind of a pain in the ass to keep having to do this. Uh, so it's not even like, well, it looks nice, but it's also like, ah, yes, I will spend two to four hours of my day every five to 10 days doing this and uh, spending money to cut it and leave it. Um, so 
Joseph Sarma's trying to pep around potent till a strawberry, C nictitans in heavier foot traffic areas. Satchel's giving them a pass, a lawn's a pass for all the shorebirds they bring in. Very curious. Swayback has drawn several species of salamander into the neighborhood by building wood piles and other cover along the creek behind the house. It's taken years, but the cover draws isopods, which feed other. There's probably more to that statement. Try getting into cacti. Horn one says had like a hundred. Then we got a freak early fall, frost. And they all died. I'll never financially or emotionally recover. Uh, I have a I have a good number of. Uh, well, I'll put some cold hardy opuntia up after this. Cold hardy in Michigan even. Zen Monkey says in the miscellaneous section, consider offering a completely anonymous lot. Bid, and then when you've got a winner, we discover what was won. I'll do that. We will do that. Will there be Marulinella, or was that a joke last night? Oh, there will be. We haven't gotten to them yet. I said this wasn't the last of these high-octane bidding sessions. If anyone, as if anyone paying for lawn care would use a well, much less care that they're poisoning themselves and everyone else, my new neighbor signed up for monthly bug spray exterminator solicit turn the lawn into a raised bed garden raised beds are harder to uh, create than you're more expensive to think uh to create than you think trust me on that well worth the investment worth every penny if you're willing to spend it Orang mango's lawn is 90 percent bindweed must be a kind of drier area if it's the eurasian bindweed 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 all right porcelio flava marginatus wrapping up bids Going once, going twice, sold to Ice Beam with a winning bid of $50. Did not see that coming. Did not see that coming. Good morning, pretend. Will there be any Magnificus? No, unfortunately, there will not be any Porcelio Magnificus. I just sent out all that I could spare last week. Mystery box auctions that you put together based on the price it goes for would be fun. Um, I don't know exactly what you mean by that. But, uh, Kyle, if you got stuff on Friday and today, should you can wait until after today. Again, it's just kind of to let people know there's urgency to getting in touch with me. But after that, it's more laid back. I just need to get everybody's emails and names with everything for coordinating stuff. I honestly cannot believe it. Congrats, Ice Beam. All right. We're going to do a group of 12. Porcelio. Nah, we're going to do 15. They're doing really well for me. Porcelio Verneri. Starting bid of $1. The Greek Shield Isopod. Another common name that I'm that's I feel is pretty okay, even if it's not involving Werner, it's uh, you know it's pretty good. I'm going to go run to the bathroom, check in with Angela really quick, and I will be back. So I'll let these guys sit up there.
Okay, everybody. I'm back. Can we do some bidding for this? That's hilarious. Also, 58. I'm back. We're going to go ahead, wrap this up, put an X here. Actually, I was thanking Angela for doing an amazing job tidying up the house while I was working in here. There is a massive foot and a half by foot and a half pile of Victor fur that she swept up. And I just walked out of there and was like, oh, my God. 50 people in chat, but only four thumbs up on the live stream. More likes, people. More likes. All right. Did I put the X? X. Okay. Porcelio Verneri. Going once. Going twice. Sold. Two. I'm going to do a control R. Maybe photo gallery is saying maybe uh waiting to see what he's talking about there. 40 likes, 44 likes it says on mine, thankfully. Um winning bid seems to go to Bentley, but it's weird. So close title, so close. You did you you, you said what did you say? Um what did you say? Can we do some bidding for this? And a singular finger curled on the monkey's paw. Winning bid of 85. Phone typing speed. Um, photo gallery. This stock does come. Oh, none have confirmed true so or not. This, so or not it works or not it works right now. Does he know what we are talking about bidding on? Uh, I keep an eye on the bidding channel, too. Um, also, 45 likes. Kyle, if you got stuff on Friday, oh, you, you talked about that before. Um, let's see. I'm tapped out, but I want more. Okay, we're going to dial things down a little bit here guys and go through some not uh testicle torsion inducing uh inventory we're gonna go with 15 porcelio species valencia orange starting bid of one dollar uh starting bid of one dollar not exclamation point And these were isolated from the regular Valencias by Derek uh, Niehaus, who, again, I coordinate with on a lot of uh, projects. He's not a big isopod reader, but he does. He is a very good networker and has his, his eyes and ears open on various social medias for isopod information and advances. And But he has produced a couple of things. He did the groundwork for making the Colby Jack, Porcelio Levis, and he also isolated these orange Porcelio Valencia. These are kind of like uh, the great value Porcelio Nichols Eye because <laughs> they breed fast, even faster than Nichols Eye do. Nichols Eye don't breed terribly fast, but they've been very consistent for me and just a good breeder overall. Um, uh, they don't breed terribly fast. They get just shy. They're not just shy, but they get they get like – the biggest nickel's eye will always be bigger than the, the, the biggest uh, species Valencia, but they're still of impressive size. Are those even – this is so crazy with all the uh, things. Are those nickel's eye or are those species Valencia orange? <laughs> it's so difficult to tell. There's got to be something like a point on the, the end of the nose or something about the um, – oh, these are for you. Okay, then they are. They are the species Valencia orange. It's so difficult if you see them next to each other. Uh, the Valencia oranges, again, are always going to be smaller. But if you had a really small adult male nickel's eye next to the biggest uh, species of Valencia orange, they look so damn similar. It's so uncanny. Uh, they want to bid on following you into the bathroom. Hey, real quick, Roach, do you know if the orthopter will be before 12 Eastern time? I got college. I can't stay up too late. 
Yeah. You got a point there. I got to really move through these isopods because it's already three. I want to be done with isopods by six. And I got to take a break at four. So I'm not going to be done with isopods at six. I got to haul. I got to haul some butt. We're going to pick up the pace big time because I need to get through these. So here we go. We're gonna we're gonna pick up our, our knees when we run now. Here's an X for the Porcelo species Valencia Orange. Also, I have an interesting snack here. These are those vine kiwis. I like them. Hmm. That's a good fruit. Okay, going once on the species Valencia Orange. Going twice, sold to Photo Gallery's Apprentice. Winning bid of $45. Okay, pace, pacey pace. Actually, why am I, why am I acting like a, a troglodyte? Yesterday, I had the Discord pulled up and windowed over to the side and uh, today I wasn't doing that because I have an IQ of roughly 108, and today is not my best day. <coughs> we will have Iambia Capensis coming up. Okay, 30, Armadillidium Parachi, starting bid of $1. Yes, I spelled it right. Uh, these are cool. They have a bit of a luster like Porcelionides do, and they're quite dry tolerant. Go vegan. I mean, who knows how many fossil fuels and animals were ripped up and burnt to till the fields to create these, but, you know, yeah, they, I do like fruit. I won't argue with that. Mmm, that was really good. These are really good, guys. If you can get these vining kiwi things, really good. Did I spell Parachi right? Yeah, two C's, two C's. Just trying to get it right from my uh, sheet here. How many did I put up again? Yeah, you are. You're the dementia. 16, wait, what the frick am I doing? I already have these. All right, here's an X for the Parachis. How full of snot my head is. My rough IQ is roughly 0 0.108. I was growing vine kiwis in my yard, but the female plant died. That's very sad. Mm. Really good. Yeah, I wonder why they have the yellowish middle. Out. It might be females with uh, full marsupia, actually. Okay, going once in the Parachi, going twice, sold to, looks like Arbs. I'm going to do a control R, though. Hylas on the control R is showing winning bid of 24. Again, one of those times the refresh made the difference. Very close. Okay. Next up we have 15 Oniscus Acellus Stardust Dalmatian. Starting bid of $30. These prove out consistently. Unlike the Mardi Gras, these are just straight-up Dalmatians. There's no weird uh, chimerism going on for whatever reason. They have consistent speckling of yellow. There's not like some that have no yellow and some that have a ton of yellow. Just consistent overall. Thank you for putting my photo up there. Completely unrelated to the <clears throat> Mardi Gras Dalmatians. And you can look on my website and see the uh, little blob, blog, uh, blarb, blurb blog about them. <clears throat> Isolated and refined by Connor Brescia. 
All right, here's an X for these guys. I just realized I put up just a little bit below retail price, but that's okay. Maybe I'll throw in a couple extras. Going once, and nobody seems to have these either. Everybody's got the Mardi Gras. Going twice. Sold. To Arbs with a winning bid of $38. Congratulations. All right. Next we have 15 Cubara species. Red Tiger starting bid of $1. I like these. I have I, they look kind of like uh improved Species Red Edge. Curious if all these are going to end up being the, let's see, the first thing on Google image results <clears throat> is from, oh man, guys, I think I just stumbled on something I'm going to have to talk about. Uh, I just Googled Red Tiger, Cubaris Red Tiger. The first website on Google is for a site called rubberduckyisopods.com. And the site layout, the amount of annoying pop-ups, and the comment system looks almost identical to that of U.S. Mantis. And I'm wondering... I'm really wondering if it's the same person. The color scheme's even the same. A lot of the interface, like the top bars and all that stuff is the same. And also the wording is the same because you see in the sales uh, thing for, there's nothing about, uh, it is the most convoluted mess. It's the red tiger in parentheses, ultra, ultra rare designer isopods, in parentheses, Cubara species, six count. Breeding skill difficulty, guys. Advanced. This is an advanced species. Oh, it isn't Craig Baker. Okay. Alex, if you know them in, in, in real person in, in real life, I I I I I respect that. Um I am not impressed with their presentation. That site hasn't been updated since like 2020, I swear. To be honest, I have heard, could be a paid for. I, I appreciate, I always appreciate Devil's Advocates, guys. I always appreciate Devil's Advocates. So. Yeah, so they do expos here in our area, but yeah. But I do appreciate reviews. I do appreciate, you know, I, I judge judge the book by the cover. I will apologize for that. However, I am curious. Again, curious about in-person experiences and whatnot with the stock and all that jazz. All right. Did I already put an X here? If I didn't, here it is for the Red Tiger Isopods. Wrapping up bids. They have an interesting Instagram page I follow. All right, all right. I mean, here's the thing. I respect the hustle to make uh, to make some monies. I respect that. Um, but also with things like invertebrates, where there are a myriad of things you know working against you, such as federal, state regulations, uh, your appearance to the general public, your responsibility to scientific contributions, and also not introducing invasive species. And of course, offering basic dignity to the life forms of various shapes and sizes that you share your planet with. Uh, I feel like there's a certain standard that needs to be upheld. I would never betray you, Kyle. All right. I appreciate people giving me more information. But what I will say, uh, what I will say, what I have to say is uh, their presentation on that is uh, very tacky. That's all I have to say. At the bottom of the line, that's all that I can say. Tacky. 
and I will not. I will refrain from anything. I will re- refrain from further comment. Anyways, going once on the Red Tigers, going twice. Sold to email port 22. Also, we're getting a bit chatty in the bid central. Please take it to general with a winning bid of $70. Any idea when ice pods will be done? Looking like seven. I'm going to keep going as, as fast as my brain can possibly. Oh, shoot. Um, all right. We're going to do a group of 15. Porcelio Skaber Shibunkin. Starting bid of $20. And these are... These are uh, Lava X Dalmatian Porcelio Scaber that have been selected for having a balance of both orange and gray in their spotting. So again, different simple recessive, single simple recessive genes do not express the same in, across different populations of isopods, particularly in Porcelio Scaber. And so while you cannot select for larger or more abundant spots in Porcelio Scaber Dalmatian strains. You can, by crossing these strains that have a different basal coloration to them, you can select for basically those spots to represent the underlying pigment as if the isopod was not a Dalmatian. So you can have in these Shubunkins, you have how some lavas have orange towards the front of the body and black towards the back, as I think it was Gio Sasarma was talking about breeding for the opposite. These Dalmatians have orange spots towards the front of their body or more orange spots and more gray spots towards the back of the body. So, oh, that might be one of my pictures. Is that one of my pictures? Kind of looks like my skin. Yeah, that's the F2, and I think now we're on F5. So there's much better see lava x dalmatian maybe if i look that up um a lot more of my uh my screamings about uh various scaver projects yeah there we go so this is f2 that was back in 2021 so we're probably on f5 or f6 now actually so This is a general idea, proof of concept on these Dalmatians, but just know the strain has come a lot further in the last two years and that that there is now a greater dichotomy of color from front to back on most of the individuals. All right, we'll put an X here. And of course, I used pure pure lava and pure Dalmatian stock when creating these to minimize the amount of variation that would pop up or rather the amount of uncertainty that could pop up with using other lines mixed in. Going once on the Shubunkin Skaber. Going twice. Sold. Two. I'm going to do a control R. Close. What if you do an ice pod pack, like several species at once, but that may be hard. I could end up doing that. It appears that Neutroba has won with a winning bid of $28. Congrats. So close to rain number 13. So close. He will have something else fun go up. Uh, and this was on fun enough that I put it on the uh, auction ad. Porcelio species Morocco, a 12 count starting bid of $1. I really like these. It's a good size Porcelio species. Good contrast between the sides of the body and the center. I like the red. I do like them quite dry tolerant too. Yeah, that's a good picture. Yeah, that's a pretty good picture. Again, quite sizable. They get 
maybe like a little shy of nickel's eye size. Definitely bigger than Porcelio Lepinii. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add that here. These are Lepinii now. All right. I will keep the locality and for information with them just in case that is important eventually. So, but thank you for the updates. Again, correct me wherever you can. This is why I have photo gallery and all of you lovely people. We must keep each other in check lest we destroy the planet. Here's an X for wrapping up the bids. You didn't say going twice. Oh, Lorraine, I didn't. Did it maybe cut out? Maybe I should have another drink. What was that for, the Shubunkins? Um, If I didn't say going twice, well, it is, it is set in stone, but... All right, there we are. I see a couple of messages are building up here. I will eventually get to those in the Discord. I need to redo my colony of these bins soon. All right, Porcelio Lepinii Morocco, formerly species Morocco. Going once, going twice, sold. To control R. Sold to control R. Let's see. Showing Poeta Corvi with a winning bid of 32. Remember, if you're having some latency issues, some lag issues, uh, make sure you uh, refresh your page. Yes, I do on Bolivar. I. <clears throat> We will not have any up for grabs, though. All right. Did that already. All right. We have 300 Trichorhina Tomentosa, just a classic hobby stock, dollar starting bid. Is it because they take long? No, actually. They were doing good in a smaller setup, and then I bumped them into a larger setup because I wanted to mass produce them. And for some reason, uh, I ended up with just all males, and I, the females died in the setup for some reason. So um, I needed to get some more of them. So uh, I actually had like hundreds of them when I kept them with uh, Ground for Ryan. With my, I kept them with LLE Mahoganies and uh, Species Costa Rica Panclora, and I had hundreds of them. And then um, eventually the Panclora started to take over everything. Uh, let's see. What did I pull up my phone for? I pull it up for some reason. Hmm. I don't know why I picked up my... Oh, I was going to set an alarm for four. Because I got to go. I'm going to take a two-hour break at four, inventory the last of the isopods, take care of the farm, and then come back for our full night. I've heard too many store horror stories about dwarf whites. Hell of a thing. <sighs> Introducing dwarf whites to a bin... Take away everything it is and everything it'll ever, it, it will ever be, or whatever the quote is. Welcome to the Isopod Hobby. We have low clearance sports car, spaceship, rubber ducky, contagious rice. I prefer the devil's rice name, actually. Very small porcupine and Jeff. It's a good Jeff picture. I, I like that. All right, X for the Trichoranatomatosa, wrapping up. I mean, they're really good for reptile enclosures. There's that. Just maybe not the best for a lot of invertebrates. I mean, you could make it work. 
Going once on the Trichorina Tomentosa. <clears throat> Going twice. Sold to uh seems lizard beans wins, but we'll see which one's the winning bid. <laughs> With a winning bid of $27. All right. And now we have some truly special rice. We have 30 Trichorhina species, Puerto Rico. This is an undescribed species of Trichorhina from Puerto Rico. Starting bid of $30. So they're longer. They actually look more like grains of rice than tomatosa do. They're a lot more active in the substrate. And they are, of course, undescribed. I did auction off a group of these, I think, at the spring auction, or it was the summer auction. Bartus, your chancer. Uh, let's see. Powders are low-key worse. If we miss some auctions and you don't have this piece on the website, do we just contact you for availability? Yes, you can do that. Um, yes, Leo, I don't understand how they get in other bins. You guys got to tighten up your security measures. Leo says, I've had Porcelain pop up in my sealed retired millipede bin. There were none when I closed it. There are hundreds now. You got to tighten tighten up your measures, guys. I use muslin cloth all over the place and brass micro screen. And I don't have any problems. Um, Alan, the, the picture that was linked by photo gallery is uh, from Alan. Uh, yeah, Ellen underscore Jean, and that is them. That is the undescribed Trichorina. They're very quick moving. They're a lot more um, elongated than Tomatosa. They're really cool. These, I think. Yay! And they're not, they're actually larger than Tomatosa, too. They're longer, elongato. So. All right, I'm going to put an X. Y'all are fools. These guys are great. And uh, I'm not in charge of this, but I put in a word that hopefully when these are described, they will be named after Alan. So uh, Insect Central, yes, I do have a submix on my uh, site. Satchel Votes, I like these boys. Alan and I, what was, there was the thing with Alan's house when he showed them to us. He was like, oh, these are just, uh, I found these in the Puerto Rico or something or whatever. These, these came from there or whatever. And Sash and I were both like, well, well, we want, we want some, we want to like look at them. And then we looked and they're like, wow, these are really cool. Like we both really liked them because it's like, well, they look easy and they're pretty fecund. And now we know they're an undescribed species. So. Unbleached muslin fabric from like Hobby Lobby. Yes, that's correct. All right. Going once on the Trichorina. Undescribed. Going twice. Pass. All right. Fools, all of you. Fools, the lot of you. Um, get that. High octane. High octane was before. We dialed it down a bit, remember? Uh, let's do... Twenty-five armadillidium maculatum. Mysterious rice. That's a good name. Final import stock. Starting bid of $1. This is the original stock that entered the United States. Does not have any of the does not have those crazy weird variations you see in the commercially available stock. They actually look like zebras because most of them are striped, and if they're not striped, they have broken spikes stripes that look like spots, um, which is simple recessive in these. So if you fell in love with all the pre-2018 pictures of zebra roly polies, this is that stock without all the weirdness. Which the weirdness is nice for pulling projects out of, but it would have been nice to know what localities things were and also for people to like keep things separate so that when you buy zebra roly polies, you don't get a billion different phenotypes. You get like 
a zebra roly poly. I cannot imagine North Korea has endemic isopods that South Korea does not also have. Also, uh, Korea is not that big. Yeah, no, somebody have to go through INAT and see what the isopod reports are there. Um, Barktus, uh, it posted uh, $11. The starting bid for the Tricorina of Puerto Rico was uh, $30. <laughs> They are not your run of the mill isopod as rubber duckies and uh, scarlets and whatnot are. Bid. He's welcome to claim them. Anybody's welcome to claim them now. All right, Bartus has taken the undescribed uh, trichorhinas. Good on ya. All right, congrats. Fool, JK, JK, definitely not a fool. Okay, what did I even just put up? Oh, the Maculatum. Okay, Maculatum, the original strain. I might start calling them old OG or original hobby stock. They're not really... They weren't really from the old hobby. They're like basically the transition of uh, uh, isopods into the industrial nightmare they are now. It's not really the old hobby. There's very few lines that we have that could be considered old hobby. Levis, Dilatatis, Tomentosa, the old strains of those, Dwarf Purples. Going once on the Maculatum. Going twice. Sold. To Arbs with a winning bid of $29. All right, and next up. I'm pulling something out of my back pocket. We have five. Uh, please correct me on this uh, photo gallery. I have a feeling I'm going to be wrong um, when I finish typing it out. Five Marulanella species Red Diablo starting bid of one dollar. Just your just run of the mill trash isopod. Really hardly worth the carbon and calcium that its exoskeleton is made from. They all put CF Marulanella. Insect Central, do you spag the moss in your isopod bins? Thank you for the special chat thingy. I gotta like that. There we go. Uh, special mm -hmm. chat thingy, super chat, whatever it is. Um, depends. I used it a lot more heavily in the past when I was mixing substrate blends of com like a compositive materials. Now I'm switching more towards my own domestically produced compost that I sterilize and, um, have not, and it depends on species again too, and have not really been mixing too many additives into it. So I still have a big old bag of sphagnum moss, not sphagnum peat moss, but sphagnum moss. And I will, it's a good tool if I overwater an enclosure because it wicks up the water and it'll get it into the, the air column in the enclosure faster than if it's just sitting there. So it's, I'm using it more as a tool for fixing problems than I am as a central component for isopods at the moment. And it varies for roaches too. Again, I'm trying to shift over to, I have a system for producing compost now. I'm seeing good results with a lot of stuff that I'm trying it on. I would like to commercialize that compost eventually. So I'm in a, I'm in a, in a middle state of trying to figure out what direction, what sort of boundaries I can push with making these new substrates based on compost. But yes, I do use it in my bins, sometimes more heavily than I do in other bins. Emma says, I got to work and if you miss, we'll start at six or way after. 
Uh, I would say Misk will probably start at seven or eight. The Marulanellas will probably always be pretty expensive. Um, they, the pictures I've seen of successful setups involve daily intricate care. People have automated misting systems on them. They seem to be micromanaging the amount of leaf litter and stuff that's put in. You know, it's really the, the components of the enclosure seem like they're really kind of like, oh, maybe every two or three days they're adding another pile of uh, leaves in perfect condition um, to the enclosure. Uh, see, and the funny thing is the videos I saw people having success with some of the Marulanellas, uh, they had ventilation, but it was side ventilation, and they also had a misting system uh, going on. Dirt recipe drop, daily care, live moss, special diet. Um, reminder, if you have a dwarf white issue, just add Pycnoscellus, fixes all problems. Stella's Springtails, smashing through all boundaries with a $250 uh, been there. Daily care, live moss, special diet, blah, blah, blah. Um, the intricate care part is people don't want to kill really expensive isopods. Uh, it could be, um, but rubber duckies came into the States very expensive, and I feed them the same stuff I feed my vulgari. And even less so. That and it's automated, semi-automated. All right, here's an X for the Red Diablos. Oh, wait, was it Red Diablos? Yeah. Huh. Still below the... Uh the regular market price going once going twice sold to Stella's springtails hell yeah brother with a winning bid of two hundred and fifty dollars I did say there'd be Marulanellas. This is probably isn't the last showstopper either, but I see you have E. Floridana pass as they always, they easy always wanted them. I've seen them in the wild here in Florida. Yes, particularly localities. Um, so you would think once they're bred more, uh, their price would go down and be more straightforward, but that's not always the case. Um, some people just have more time and more of an act for things than other people do. And especially if it's regular care, not everybody will have them. We'll see if Hemithersosra are any more available commercially in the next three to five years, because I, I've seen some good success from some people, but it's really all about long-term success. And if you can get past multiple generations successfully, and I think, feel like the Marulanella may be a similar situation where they may be regularly imported like some tropical fish and people will keep them in their enclosures and tanks, but they will never quite have a good traction except for in the hands of a couple of very capable individuals. Do you take trades for firstborn child and kidney? <laughs> All right. We have a group of 40 Cubara species, Tung Song. Starting bid of one dollar. Uh, I've said before, I kind of thought these were overrated at first. They were, they came onto the market overrated, and I do not like that. However, I've grown grown fond of them. They do have a nice little shimmer to them, and they are a pretty easygoing species. So I will not speak ill of them. They are quite pleasant, and it would be platin tongue song let me correct that platin tongue song there we go everybody's saying they're rare like these are super dry tolerant and they breed pretty quickly i don't see what's so rare about these guys but you know but again i will say pictures um 
the picture on Morph Market and Buddha Bugs pictures really kind of capture the real life color more. You know, from a distance, they're kind of dull and drab, but you see them up close, and there's something about their exoskeleton that does um, give them a bit more appeal and color. It's not quite as drastic as it is in either of those, but it's definitely this is they're not they're not as ugly as you may think they could be. Kind of mid, a little above mid. The fact that they're easy really pushes them over. Good starter. I want to buy them from you. Sorry, confused a little. Are the E Floridana good starter? They're pretty good starter. Just give them a substrate. They're very good at climbing, so make sure you have a good barrier too, such as the Roach No Crossing available on the Roach Crossing website. Uh, what about gold coins? Do I take gold coins for payment? <clears throat> Every time Rove Beetles are very cool bids, I impulsively try to bid on the Rove Beetles. Like, yeah, I want the Rove Beetles. Bug referring to Ice Pies. If you want nice, boring bug, get Croatian diet, Giant or Dairy Cow. I mean, I do like Dairy Cows. I see the appeal there for 100% for sure. Okay, X for the Platin Tongue Songs. Actually, I need to check my messages from Mr. Nate. I need to get an identity that he sent me on something. Because um, Trichoniscus species, okay. Okay, I got an idea on something that I was going to put up after this. Okay, going once for the Platin Tongue songs. Going twice. Sold. To. Bama style AGR. That's a pretty good deal. $40 winning bid. Again. They're okay. They're a lot better than I thought that the species would be. Yes. The Androniscus. Um. What did I just say? I have goldfish memory and looked at something from Nate. And that was... Trichoniscus species. I got to come up with a name to attach to them. Um, so this is... We have... 30 Trichoniscus species. Uh, what should I call these? Rosy imposters. Starting bid of $10. We have no idea where these came from eventually. I was sold these in 2016. 2016 as um, Androniscus dentiger. Uh, they're not Androniscus dentiger, but you know it was a, it was a wild wild west then. It's a uh, it's corporatized, but it's still a wild uh, wild west now, I guess. Um, so they've been doing well just in standard isopod care enclosure for me. Uh, they seem to like eating leaf litter, rotting leaf litter. Might be the key to a lot of uh, trichoniscus. Um, could barely tell him they were trichoniscids. Uh, Kyle's blurry-ass photo he gave. Um, oh, yeah, I sent that to you. That's right. Um, but, yeah, Nate told me about that, the idea. They came from Europe. They, or they came from the European hobby. I don't know where... 
they came from. Nobody seems to know where they came from. But when people saw those pictures of Androniscus uh, dentiger and, and wet themselves, I guess anything that even looked remotely like it, people started trying to culture and chip over here. So, again, oh, there's my 4 o'clock alarm. I'm going to go a little bit over, though. Again, X might make a good feeder, good dart frog enclosure roach. Very similar to dwarf purples, but... Um, they don't, they don't tend to coat things, and they're a lot faster. Like dwarf purples, you lift up something, it'll be coated with dwarf purples. These, they run a lot faster, more porcelionides y behavior. Um, I, I want to maybe go to one of those spots where they're introduced, where Androniscus dentiger is introduced to. I would like to go somewhere, collect some, and give them a go. Um, Leo uh, asking about ant isopods. Maybe we'll hit that next. Garden part that's hard to culture. Uh, the, a lot of the trichoniscus and hylaniscus are kind of like that. All right. Go, oh, also, these might be parthenogenetic. Uh, Nate couldn't find a male in the ones that I sent him, and I think I sent him a good mix of sizes, so they might be a parthenogenetic species too. Going once. Going twice. Excuse me. Sold. To Hylus with a winning bid of $17. All right. Somebody was talking about uh, ant isopods. We're going to have a bit of a fun meme but cool auction here. We have a group of five. Platy Arthris, the lesser known but equally important uh, P. Hoffman's Eggy Eye. Hoffman's Eggy Eye. Starting bid of twenty dollars this is an ant commensal species that is introduced to the midwest uh i've gotten some quick breathing results from them and i'm feeding them roach poop there's a living roach colony with them and they're doing pretty well this same strategy worked for platyarthris iascensis hoffman's eggy eye supposedly a little bit more difficult for some reason uh, Alan thinks they maybe only reproduce a couple times a year. I don't know. We'll see what happens in my setup. I've gotten some quick babies out of them, though, so it may just keep going. So Rachel W. or Rochelle really wants them. Kyle, I found some small red piece of pot at a local park nearby Schwartz Creek. Uh, Trichoniscus. Was it Hyloniscus riparius or Trichoniscus something? There's a Hyloniscus and there's a Trichoniscus that's introduced in Michigan that are found in riparian areas. They both share the same habitat. They're both parthenogenetic species, but one of them gets larger than the other, and to tell them apart, you have to count the number of ocelli on the eyes. Jonathan Green, you could keep them with your ants, I would think. I don't know how you would acclimate them to the ants, but uh, uh, I, these were collected from a tetramorium refuse uh, thing, refuse area, like refuse chamber. Insect Central has claimed the Uricotus Floridana Monroe County told him to DM you as well. Perfect. Uh, Insect Central, I think I missed your question. In the wild, I found them in dead wood everywhere like fire. I'm guessing I should do that. If you find them in the wild, it's a good place to start for captive husbandry. Yeah, I'm going to go catch them now. Uh, but can you keep them with that? Uncles! Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Uh, the ants just tolerate them. Oh, really? I keep Tetramorium. Yeah, I think it's species E that they were with. I'm not an ant guy, though. But I, from looking into it briefly, that's what they appear to be with. Here's the X for the Platyarthris Hoffman's Eggy Eye. Hoffman's Eggy Eye. Ridiculous uh, spelling on that. All right, going once, going twice, sold to Rochelle W. with a winning bid of $40. See, it was a good meme thing to put up. I mean, it's not a meme. It's still cool isopods. I will say, guys, it is a personal failure of mine that I do not have any Trichorina Donald's, was it Donald's Sun Eye? ready yet i received a very small culture of them a couple of weeks ago and i was hoping they'd squeeze out some babies by the auction 
but unfortunately have not gotten any babies out of them just yet. Um, Tetramorium is basically ice pods of ants, tons of genetic diversity and a very low effort. How could you do this to me, Kyle? Um, well, if you're upset about that, I have something that may make everybody a little bit happier. We have a group of 30 platyarthris iasensis starting bid of $20. This is the southern slash southwestern introduced species of white ant isopod. And I have to ask Alan where this stock originally comes from, but I think it's from one of our first Aya census. It's from one of our first Arizona trips. Alan, I can't remember if these, the stock that you sent back to me are from Cave Creek Canyon or from Pina Blanca. Really need pointless trichoniscids. Sunny Flat Campground. All right. So these are from uh, Cave Creek Canyon. I think I remember you collecting these. Were they with the Lazius? Maybe it was the Lazius species. Um, these are actually smaller than uh, Hoffman's Eggii. Hoffman's Eggii get to about a, one and a half times the size of the Aya census. So very small. Um, but not as small as the next isopod we're going to have up for auction here before I go. Boy, howdy. All right, here's the X for the IS census. It warms the cockles of my heart that you guys are getting uh, worked up over these. I really love that. Uh, and I do wish that people got more enthralled over that undescribed Puerto Rican trichoniscus, but oh well. The trichorina name carries a great burden with it. Hopefully Donald Sunai and... Uh, potentially Alan John I will buck that trend. Going once on the Platyarthris Aya Census. Going twice. Sold to Captain H with a face palm, winning bid of $28. So these I have. Alan and I have both bred for since 2016 in captivity. So these these are tried and true. Um, high list, they don't really – IS Census doesn't seem to have very special care needs. I keep them as a, as a cleaner crew for some hissing cockroaches. I think that's the way to do it. They have to have a stream of poop, and as long as there's no competition from other isopods and no predators, they just sort of do their thing. Kyle, I've already established I don't have money. How could you sell quality spots? This is killing me. Really just toss lots of wood and you're good for a lot of these ant species, it seems. Yeah, I don't even use wood. I think they're still on one of my coconut fiber-based enclosures. They're just eating poop. What a what a way to live. Um, let's do 40 Illumoides species Pycopod, which appears to be undescribed. Starting bid of $30. Uh, the commercial name for these, this particular strain has now, has now uh, seems a couple of people are pushing it as yellow submarine. Um, submarines are big and go underwater. These will drown in a raindrop. So I do not think that is the best. Uh, although the aesthetic is, is, is kind of on, on fleek, I guess. Is this the species I already have, Kyle? Yes. If you got it from Alan, this is that. These are the they. They're easier than the old line of Illumoides I had. I'm going to farm a bunch of these, and then they're gonna, going to tend to my filthy tetramoriums and winter ants. I know if I let myself get cockroaches, it's a slippery slope to needing all the cockroaches. On fleek. Oh, the Zoomer slang. Orange TikToks, yeah. Not very orange for me. Definitely more yellowy. At least in my setups. I wish that I was not a continual F up and did not uh, kill my original colony of picopods. But 
at least we now have another uh, very tiny isopod in their stead. And I am trying to hit a goal point here, guys. So we may have one more auction before I take a break. These better go over 100. All right, here's an X for the Picopods. Um, from me, if they are, it's from Miami Isopod location. Okay, so they are, the locality for these is Miami. How much of a moisture gradient should I give the Sahuarita Arena Vega? Um, if you saw the enclosures I put, uh, I showed yesterday of the Arena Vega just like that. So it's like there's a front and back gradient, and then there's a bit of an up down gradient, even on the wet side. Um, Carlos introduced like two localities. I wonder if they're both the same species. People are selling these over $200 for a 10 count. What is this world for no reason to? They don't breed ridiculously fast, but they breed fast enough that I offered some at the summer of the spring auction and I have more available now and I will always have them available unless I screw up for some reason. Prolific-ish. Not prolific enough for an isopod of the size, but enough that there's no reason to sell 10 for 200 so, did I put an X up already? Yes, I did. All right. Going once on the Pycopods. Going twice. Sold. Two lizard beans with a winning bid of $40. On the Illumoides. I needed them. They're too cute. You sound like Kai. That's a Kai thing that Kai says. Oh, I had to get it. It was so cute. Actually, that's why he got a rabbit from me. It's because it was very cute. Guess this shows the demand of them. Yeah. When you start bids at $1, it really shows the actual demand. And now to push me over a certain threshold, I need to put up something pretty good. Um, let's do... Before I take the break, another group of eight Hilaria Brevicornis with a starting bid of $10. The biggest terrestrial isopod that rolls up into a ball. These are good. Objectively. They will maintain their value as an investment, but also uh, they're easy keepers. They don't reproduce insanely quickly to the point where you know you check on your colony and you they burnt themselves out of all their wood and leaf litter and whatnot uh just a good a good pet isopod just you know kind of on the scale of like dairy cows with kind of how laid back you can take care of them and of course they get huge and i will end up paying whatever ridiculous prices uh pop up if People actually get an orange or a Dalmatian or just some sort of dramatic, simple, recessive mutant isolated from them. Uh, I will dump money on that because it's worth it. Eric, not on the website, unfortunately, but they will be in the fall. And I think this is the same locality that TJ has. It was like Cote d'Azur or something like that. Um. Dynamo Terror says that I should get Mammoth Jackstock Donkeys, a herd of Grevy's Zebras, and a few Grevy's X Mammoth Jackstock Zonkeys, a good range of grazing ecology, and plenty of draft animals. Um, two localities and culture. Tennyson, you know what locality Smugbug has because these came from Uncle Fungus, and I believe that he traded with Smugbug to get them initially. I want the ones from Elba just because of the whole Napoleon thing. I definitely want to get those. Should be the normal one. Uh, which one is that again? The one that TJ has too. I gotta get the Albas for sure. Um, actually, uh, Dynamo Terror. I was considering the Mammoth Jack stocks in the future. It's actually on my list of breeds to look into. Uh, Tennyson, let me know if you can get any Elba Hilaria Brevicornis or point me in a. Oh, only in Europe at the moment. Okay. Well, when it makes a stake side, I'll pick some up then. All right, X on the Hilaria. 
largest terrestrial rolling isopod and very cool pretty dry tolerant um i'm gonna try again with tylos this uh winter slash spring uh i'm gonna i'm gonna try again with tylos from key largo and hopefully get those going going once on the hilaria brevicornis going twice and sold to Lizard Beans with a winning bid of 56. Lizard Beans is a uh, isopod force at the moment. Let's see. All right. There we have it. I will be going on break. I got to eat, take care of some animals, inventory the rest of the isopods. Um, give Angela lots of hugs because she needs them because she's very sweet. Uh, so let's see. We're going to put at everyone. Uh, auction break. See you all at. We're going to do 630 because we did go a little over now. Eastern time. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. And actually, I can put, I can update the, uh, well, never mind. The uh, next topic is already updated. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 6.30 Eastern. All right. It has been great hanging out with everybody. I will see you all in 2 point. Uh, two. How many hours is that from now? Two point two five, whatever hours. And this will be the last inventory break too, because I already did the arachnids and the grain pests and all that stuff. So once we get through isopods this evening, we're gonna have ourselves a heck of a time. It's gonna be great. Could go to three m. Could go to. Could go to uh, four eleven, four fifteen p.m. tomorrow. Who knows? We gonna find out. So I will see you all in 2.15 or whatever it worked out, two hours. You guys can watch the sun go down.
Hello, everybody. Hello there. A little bit late. Ended up finding the moth flies I wanted out with the uh, up by the uh, duck watering thingy. Uh, I was greedy and I wanted to catch these giant psychota looking ones, but I saw some clog me. Clog meal looking ones, and I thought, oh hey, maybe that's that other genus that's not clog meal. I'm pretty sure that they're clog meal. So um, I'm gonna be splitting, separating moth flies in a couple of weeks. These are some huge psychota, though. Uh, if they, there's a there's a clog meal. I'm regretting collecting the clog meal. I really should have just left them and went for the psychota. Let's put them over here. All right, so we're back. I'll do the ad, everyone. I'm uh, losing a little bit of steam here, but we got a ways to go, so needs better Kyle husbandry. Sewer fairies. Hopefully those giant psychota-looking ones <clears throat> work out for me. I think Angel just got back from some shopping. I think we got about another 60 things to the isopod list. So let's start going through them. Let's see. Now he's just under the desk scene, if we notice, at everyone. Bidding resumes. Let's do another 50 count of Cubara species rubber ducky. Starting bid of $1. <clears throat> Oh boy. How's everybody doing this evening? Rip Kyle, sleep tonight. I'm going to try. Can you give Roach's banana leaf litter? Probably. I'm going to try to go through. You need to up, up your price on rubber duckies. $709. Thank you for the correction, little ninjas. I, I see the X's there. Thank you. That's appropriate. Serpa design may be about them. So stocks are going to go up. Um, prices on many things will, for isopods, other than uh, line bread things, are probably going to go down on the website. So. <clears throat> You know, like Shiro's will probably be like 15 for 30 or $20, something like that, uh, after the overhaul. Uh, that's going to be kind of the standard for things moving into the future. But uh, Skaber, Locality Skaber, um, Locality Vulgari, and line bread things of those will continue to creep in price. So Villa, Sevilla, um, I don't think I'll have any of those up for auction. <clears throat> Here's the extra rubber duckies. Again, I'm going to try and speed things up because I want to get us to fun things. Those are hops, by the way. Nate and I had a discussion about that. You should talk to him about that, actually. Um, we, we, we had a talk. Um, about some things there. What are you munching on, bro? Grimdark Lemonade. These are uh, vine kiwis. Uh, and they're really good if they're ripe. They do have the texture of a kiwi. A little grapey also. Uh, the rest of these I think I kind of lead to ripen. But they're right here, so I want to snack on them. Group of rubber duckies going once. Going twice, sold to Rochess. Winning bid of 102. There you are. Very good. Okay. All right, let's go into some of this other stuff. Um, we're going to do 15 Porcelio Ornatus. Which is brew starting bid of one dollar. My duckies. 
Any corrections on that photo gallery? I think they're still or not. Thank you for pulling that up. Again, I do want to, I'm going to try and move us through things a bit faster. You know, if all, Indian almond tree leaf litter is good for roaches, a lot of leaf litter is fine for a lot of things if it's very well broken down. Best plums ever, but you had a mirror house to grab a ripe one before the bugs destroyed them. Yeah, I got, I'm going to plant some plums when I move. Maybe just one or two trees, you know, like one in a pollen partner, see how they do. Um, might be based off of granulation, but the section necessary might be pseudonatus, I mean, for the south anyways. All right, so we, we kind of confirm that for the south. Okay, here's the X for the witch's brews. Going once, going twice, sold to Keen the Snake, winning bid of $50. I'm getting kind of clinical right now, guys. Again, I really am fixing for the, we're going to have fun tonight. Can I DM you something? Yeah, go right ahead. Okay, okay, let's see. We'll do a group of. 20 of the hobby stock of Armadillidium depressum, no locality information, starting bid of exclamation point, starting bid of $1. <clears throat> I do have a locality of these, but uh, they didn't appreciate the two months of uh, hu no husbandry. And so they're, I mean, some stuff did, some stuff didn't. Uh, so they're going to take a little, they should be around for the spring auction. They're going to take a little time to rebound, you know, just got to wait for a cohort to mature and then we'll be good. Yeah, just just that. Yeah, that's a good picture. I do really like my uh, the locality though. It's uh, not very common, the Christ Church, but uh, we'll save those for the spring auction and for the Roach Crossing website. All right, here's the X for Depressum. Going once, going twice, sold. To Arbs with a winning bid of 23. See, yeah, we're getting we're getting through things. I can I can keep up a pace. I have my eyes set on seem overrated. I think they're all right. I do like the over the hobby stock. I do like the um, Christchurch more. All right, we have. I don't even know exactly. This is one of those Corsalia Levis. Maybe not even Levis. They might even be affinity, affin, aff, affinity, affin Levis. Uh, Porcelia Levis cream starting bid of $1. Uh, again, I'll have to do some crossing tests of these. There are some less spotty individuals that come out of uh, dairy cows. And I don't I don't know. Again, I acquired this, this line... A long time ago, so maybe somebody just named it the wrong thing. But they're the, um, <clears throat> they might be the dairy cow with the low spotting, actually. So just dairy cows, but with tiny Dalmatian spots instead of larger ones. They might be called white. <clears throat> Again, it was during the lawless days. I mean, we're still living lawless days. Kyle, uh, why don't people keep kept grasshoppers more? It's sad. I have some some grasshoppers. They're a lot of work compared to a lot of other things. Uh, depressed them are so loved because they are depressed. People identify. Photo gallery, yeah, that seems about right. Again, I think they're F and Levis. Um, so I'll put CF, CF of Finn Levis, CF F Levis cream. All right, here's the X. <clears throat> Going once, going twice, <clears throat> sold 
to Joy, winning bid of sixteen dollars. All right, next up, 15, Porcelio Hasai. Surely there's been some updates on this light starting bid of $1. All <clears throat> oh, some people have it listed as bright. Some people have it listed as light. It seems like the Europeans have it listed as light, and it almost certainly came from Europe, so I will continue to use light as that's – how they were labeled when I received them. Oh, that's an awful picture. <laughs> I say as I'm as I'm picky with the way that they're portrayed. Um, they're definitely they're a lot prettier in person when you see them. I do think they are a little underrated for how crisp the coloration is. Uh, here's a old Facebook page from post from Japan Instagram that catches their color pretty well. But uh, don't go into this expecting the, uh, the the bold, sharp contrast you see on the high yellows. Do not go in expecting that. Not on the website either. But they are quite pretty in person. That picture, again, all these pictures are just kind of awful. This one kind of gets it. Bree, the picture that you took is a good picture. Oh, there we go. It's one from me. So Bree can vouch for, uh, wait, do you have any tri front of triangulum going up this auction? Nah, no, no front of triangulum. Um, I'm really, I'm trying to get the Albanian ones again. God forbid. Toad lubber culturing when? Uh, give me 10 years. Maybe I'll give it another go. I'm working. When I go back to Air Alabama, I'm going to collect those pygmy grasshoppers that eat leaf litter. It's on like the top of my priority list. So. Hmm. Bree's getting putting some good descriptions in. Definitely Bree's picture captures the life color a lot better. That sort of color in the back pops a lot more in person. Here's an X for the Hasai light. What happened was uh, Derek actually sent me a couple on a whim. I was very grateful that he just sent me some cool pods one day. And I tossed them in with uh, one of my Hisser projects because usually that works for stuff. And they took off, and they were actually quite unkillable in there. Um, Satchel, can I just catch some for you? They in my area. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll take some if you can catch some. Got to find a way for you to put photos on this live feed. That would involve overlays and maybe using a different streaming service. Something to look into for the future for me. All right. Porcelio Hasai Light. Uh, the picture, the last picture you posted, the picture, the individual beneath it, I feel is a good portrayal of how the, the colors kind of are very crystal poppy color. It's kind of like how the Big Pine Keys look kind of the way their colors are very, um, it's very neon. All right. Going once. Going twice, sold to Hades 2 with a winning bid of 17 or a winning bid of $18. Very good deal. These will probably in the, the 12 or 15 for 40 to $60 range on the website in the future. Uh, I'll answer some of the questions in the stream in a moment. I'm going to get on to um, – let's do these, the meme, a meme isopod. 30 Armadillidium vulgari from Sandusky, Ohio. Uh, this is – these are the isopods that when Kai and I first went to Ohio uh, – to pick up some stuff from Oren back in 2021. Was it 2021? 2022. 
And uh, it was February, and he dared me to try and find some uh, Volgari at the rest stop we were at. And so I went out there, and I wanted to prove him wrong. So I dug around in the, like, half-frozen grass tussocks and, like, uh, moving all the trash and digging in the leaf litter. I was able to find three Volgari. And, you know, he said, I think he said it expecting I wouldn't find them, and then I actually found them. And then he was like, oh, wow, yeah, that's actually, I kind of respect that a little bit. So it's pretty funny. But the best thing is they ended up throwing some, I don't think it's a, it seems partially hairable, but it's not, does not seem genetic. Um, that sort of piebalding you see in Vulgari sometimes. So there's a lot of those individuals that pop up in the colony that have that uh, uh, piebald look to them. So it was like, you know, oh, you never know what you're going to find. Oh, weird. Mine's lagged. Photo galleries, like, what do I do, man? Did I ever say sold for Hasai? Yeah, I said hot, hold, sold for the Hasai up there. All right, here's the S, X for the Sandusky, Ohio, Vulgari, the Spiting Kai, Vulgari strain. And again, you'll get some of those interesting piebalds um, that seems to be heritable but not genetic. Going once, going twice, sold to Dynamo Terror, 1011, winning bid of $12 for the Spiting Kai isopods. <laughs> uh, okay okay let's put something else up let's put another group of Christarmadilidium. what was the species name again what was uh miracotum yeah learning fast starting bid of one dollar the spiky pineapple ice pods all right let's get to the important stuff the live stream questions obs studio should be a solution for your streaming overlays and slides says uh dui when my priorities in terms of gear and supplies and streaming overlays and all that at the moment are on the back burner last year the big upgrade <clears throat> was the webcam and the boom mic <clears throat> and next year i will after moving and the bug building setup will be, I will be re-examining how I want to take the live stream into the future, the sort of equipment needed to do what I want. And I will have a designated space for live streaming with better lighting with, it will be a space specifically for that or for office use. Um, as much as I love having all of the bugs in here and stuff, I would like to up the ante on these things. Can you use cocoa fiber for Roth's burrowing roaches? Yes, you can. Uh, Insect Central asking if I tried bird grasshoppers. Yes. Uh, Obscura is pretty easy to breed. Americana is easy to breed, you know, with a full grasshopper setup. The only thing is they only have one generation a year. And so you, you kind of, you get a glut of them at one point. You stuck with adults the rest of the year, basically. Horned one just chugged some NyQuil because the store is out of DayQuil. Hopefully, I don't get so loopy. I forget my budget sells. Springtail says Miracatum. OBS is free and open source. All right. Based, well, the other thing is uh, it's a matter of me taking the time to sit down and understand and get it going and figure it out. And uh, at least for the next three months, I will not have almost any spare time to devote to this sort of stuff <laughs> because... This month, I need to focus on auction shipping and also not getting sick and run down. Next month is going to be the beginning of the overhaul. Beginning of December, JoJo's coming for the weekend to do all the macro photography. And then the rest of December, I assume, will be seeing people, festivities for the holidays, um, working on the website. And then at some point, I will probably do a fundraiser to do an isopod care guide or something else like that. 
And then by the time we get to January, you have my vacation and uh, in Destin and a collecting day there too. And then we get to grinding through January, February to March. And then March comes the trip. And then we find ourselves in April at the next auction. And then moving on from April uh, and around April will likely be the move. So as you can see, I got this all planned out. <laughs> Um, Jojo can help an OBS person. Kyle doesn't have time for research and messing around with software for hours. So, Eric, probably the first weekend in April, which is six months from now. All right, X is put up on the spiny pineapples. Going once on the Christarmadilidium. Going twice. Sold. To Ore. We'll do a control R. It's pretty close. Oh, fancy cloud. With the win, I'm gonna for clarity, clearance, clear, clear total clarity, uh, winning bid of seventy eight dollars by Fancy Clude. All right, now we have. Let's see, we did that already. Um, uh, photo gallery. What's the name of that Madagascariensis? What's the genus of that isopod? We'll do that next after I get um, something else put up here. We're going to do a group of 15. Agnara, okay. Armadillidium scabarimum. Starting bid of $1. These are neat. They're rough armadillidium. I think I spelled it right. Scabarimum. Yeah, they're pretty neat. You can see how rough they are when you look at them. It's not quite as dramatic as like the reductinistic reductiniscus, but you know. That's a pretty okay picture. They're more gray in person. And, of course, the next thing we're putting up is uh, Agnara Madagascariensis Thai. All right, X for the Scabarimum. Dang it, I was with a client during the Pineapple Boys. Spoilers, there will be one more group of pineapple boys. All right, going once for the Scabarimum. Going twice. Sold. To Lizard Beans with a winning bid of $26. Lizard Beans really making a splash here. Title was very close. Okay. We got... Now, where'd they go? 40. Agnara Madagascariensis Thai. Starting bid of $1. So, those uh, native to Madagascar, but introduced in Thailand of... Uh, isopods it's really strange how some of that works out uh do you use a water bottle or mist your isopods yes i do a mist that's why i have all these ports on my uh 
I like that flickering there. I'm gonna try and we're gonna get some light in here, guys. As much as I love the natural light, I'm gonna turn on some soft stuff over there. Maybe help with the flickering. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so I do miss them. Silvestria and or expanses shoot soonish. Yes, we have some Silvestriae coming up. Uh, and coconut fiber can work for Burmese beetle mimic roaches. Thoughts on velvet worms. I want them one day, but they seem like a good amount of work. So I don't like that aspect. Walrus says, holotype was incorrectly noted as coming from Madagascar. Ah, okay. It's a Paraplanita um, Americana situation. These ones don't look as orange. I'm pretty sure it's sexual dimorphism with the males being orange and the females being more drab. And the males are definitely, they're very pretty in person. This isn't a very large isopod. They're like the size of a small, or they get about the size of like Porcelionides. Thoughts on tiger beetles? Uh, get them away from me. According to Kai, you can breed every species of uh, tiger beetle if you put it in a container and you feed it dog food. Uh, I think it's more complex than that. I will not touch breeding tiger beetles for quite some time. And if I do, I need to find a tiger beetle specialist who has... Uh, autism is my superpower and I get to choose the special interest of tiger beetles so I can ask them which ones have multiple generations per year. T. Carolina are doable fairly easily. Um, biggest thing is moist sand. Um, show me a setup where I can house about 50 of them communally together without them eating each other and uh, I will uh, I'll give it a go. Show me a colony setup or a not backbreaking setup, and I'll give it a go. Put an X in for the Agnara. Going once, going twice. Sold. To title, winning bid of $44. All right. All right, next we have, do we do any Klugia yet? We have not done any Klugii. All right. Do a 30 count of Armadillidium Klugii Dubrovnik. Pure. Starting bid of $20. These are pure Dubrovniks from Chandra Orr, who acquired them when they first popped up. Circa 2018, first popped up uh, stateside. And she was very gracious enough to maybe fairly pure. Got to be some Euro photos of them. Um, let's see. Exuvium has some uh, pictures of pure Kluge, uh, pure Dubrovniks. <clears throat> it's very different from Montenegro's if you see them in person. Anthill Python, Viv, Communal Montenegro, and they do well. Put 12 in, Ellipsoptera on some heated white sand. Ellipsoptera. Oh, ellipse-winged tiger beetles. <clears throat> Hope you know when Orthoptera shows up, you may buy a mansion. 
Uh, Kyle doesn't look like he spent three days live stream. Angela must be really good for him. Uh, yes, you can put the gold medals on substrate too if you want to. I have them on substrate. All right, here's an X for du the Dubrovniks. Um, again, I don't I don't like personally like swiping photos, but uh, there's a couple of pictures on that Exuvium page uh, where they have groups of them together, and it's almost certainly pure. There's like no yellow anywhere on them. So that's a good good indicator with the Dubrovniks is if they have yellow spots, which is more of a Montenegro thing. Going once on the Kluge eyed Dubrovnik. Going twice and sold to Unin Lagia with a winning bid of $40. Good snipe. Good snipe. Good show. Very good show. All right. We did Dubrovnik, so let's do the counterpart of 30 Armadillidium Klugii Montenegro. Starting bid of $20. Also put pure here. <clears throat> Good news also. Uh, Brandon Mains had some old import Klugii Slanos and was generous enough to sell me some. So I now have, I don't think there's any more uh, localities than Montenegro, Dubrovnik, and Slano in the uh, United States. So I now have pure colonies of all three localities, and I'm very happy about that. Slanos look more, they look more similar to the Dubrovniks, uh, except they seem to have a bit more creamy color on them, creamy and peachy. But pretty cool. I like them. Ooh, we're going to do something super duper special next. We're going to do something skeleton clue. Yeah, I got to look that up. Is that a new thing the kids are, are working with? Uh, quick Google doesn't show anything. But uh, clue. Slano skeleton. Let's see. Let's see. Dubiapaul.com. Uh, will this site ever ever load? Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. That is a pretty spooky, scary skeleton. Uh, it almost looks like uh, almost looks like uh, porcelain disease, but I don't know. We'll see if anybody ever gets some stateside. That is pretty cool. All right, X also being called Parax by Yorubri, but they were given skeleton prior. Here's an X for the Montenegros. Going once, going twice, sold to Bama Style AGR. Winning bid of $35. A real a, a really good deal on both of these groups of Klugii. I would do Slanos, but I don't have enough to share yet. Being bid. Wait, he said 35 first. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Edit, edit, edit. Edit. Hades 2. All right, there we go. It's corrected. Hades 2, you are the actual winner with a winning bid of $35. My, my apologies. I was distracted by the skeletons. Okay, here we go. We got a really good thing coming up next. Really, really good thing. We have a group of, if I can find it on my sheet. I don't think I wrote it down on my sheet. Okay. Well, I remember it from memory. So we have a group of 12 Cubaris species. Blonde ducky. Um, let's see here. 2018 import. Pure 2018 import. Starting bid of $1. So the story with these is people 
started seeing the light-colored duckies pop up in species rubber ducky and assumed they were blonde duckies, and they begun trading them as blonde ducky and mixing them in with their whatever blonde ducky groups that they received. This is not pink lemonade. This is not species rubber ducky bred to look like blonde duckies. This is from the original 2018 imports of blonde duckies. When I saw the wild caught imports of these, they were like four or five for like $300, $400 at Tinley Park, something crazy like that. And the adults were like, they were huge. They were like almost an inch long. It was ridiculous. So definitely stuff came in, wild caught stuff. Um, that's a good picture. So these have no, you get the, the blonde duckies or lemonades or whatever that's being traded now is either um, a hybrid, stop, hybrid between the two species or if they are the same species, which they could be, it's a cross of localities. Um, you see a lot of them have the gray and the, the dark purplish gray from the rubber ducky influence. The blonde duckies have, except for when they're younger, they may have a little bit of it, but by the time they get full size, nothing. They're just completely solid colored. Your small blondes are probably picked out uh, light colored rubber duckies, but this stock is from the original import when they were coming in before anybody started mislabeling them. Again, they came in as species uh, blonde ducky, not rubber ducky blondes or blonde rubber duckies or anything like that. So now we have a couple of places have um, started releasing like pink lemonade um, and whatnot strains of selectively bred, com or of not common, but rubber duckies to look like this, but this it's not the same stock. This was an actual direct import uh, back in 2018. And of course, it's been bastardized. So um, I'm ex extremely happy to have gotten uh, the stock back. My my um, bounty on Roach Crossing was like twelve for like three hundred dollars for these, and I was able to acquire a group. Um, I had regular rubber duckies. I love them, but now they're all just blonde. Yeah, I don't I don't know exactly what the genetics are, but that is the the that yellow coloration and to varying degrees is innate to the rubber duckies uh and i do have a line that i've been selecting that out of to get it more like the original pictures of them as when they came in um so are they still an inch long um i haven't had them more than three or four months i do i did get babies out of them um but we'll we'll see how they what size they end up maturing to in captivity because when i got pure stock the first time i got them um, which was like 20 early 2019 or something. I saw them first at Tinley. I did not buy them because I could not afford them at the time. By the time I finally traded or was able to get some um, of them, they'd already been captive bred. So it might be sort of like um, where certain conditions you can produce some very monstrous dairy cows and Hasais and Magnificus and Expansus. Um, so since they were wild caught, uh, blonde duckies that might be closer to their natural size than in captivity where um, they're at a higher density. They have different food available constantly. They may uh, max out of the smaller size in the typical colony. Uh, yes, photo gallery. That's, that is as they were sold. These are an actually occurring morph as they were sold in 2018 and pink are isolated. But now because people saw that they had these blondes in with their rubber duckies, they mix them with the other blonde stock. And three times I have ordered uh, blonde duckies from places or swapped for blonde duckies and gotten the picked out of uh, rubber ducky individuals instead of the, the old blonde ducky stock, including one person. He's a, he's, he's a good friend in an expo. We do swaps and stuff occasionally. It's not Mike Underwood. It's a different person. But he straight up told me, that the blonde duckies he was selling on his table were just the ones that he picked out of his rubber duckies. So um, I, I did not get any of those from him. Here's the X for the um, species blonde ducky. Pure 2018 imports. Ah, crap. I went all the way back up to my spreadsheet, top of my spreadsheet.
Okay, going once on the species blonde ducky, original 2018 import stock. Going twice, sold to Arbs with a winning bid of $91. A very, very, very good deal. When I list these, it will probably be 12 for it'll probably be close to my current regular ducky pricing. Was it Corey Kyle? I bought them. Um, yes, it was Stella. Corey, Corey's Corey's great. He gets some good stuff from some people sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. I enjoy talking to him and I like going over his table because sometimes I lose stuff and I'll go back and I will I will pester him to find out like where'd you get this from? You know, how long have you had them? Or blah blah blah. Did they throw any weird stuff, etc. Um so, uh, but yeah, he's, 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 he's not, he's not trying to hide anything either. He just tells me, you know, he tells me strands. He's very honest. You know, I have no problems with him. Again, we swap stuff back and forth. Like I lost my Oreo crumbles or whatever. And so I got some from him. Nothing weird has popped up in it, but you know, stuff like that happens. But that's, that's how it is now with the stuff slid in under the tag. Yeah. Okay, let's do some another group of 25 Armadillidium Maculatum. How did I label these before? I really need to figure out a good name for these. Original import stock, yeah. I don't know what I'll what I'll call the strain name, but you guys know the original import stock. I've I've called them that a couple of times. Maybe that'll be the strain name. You know, it doesn't matter if it's long. People people who love to label their stock usually put labels on their containers and they'll print them out or something like that. And they don't care putting all, all, all that extra information on there. You know, and it's always going to be up on the website when I'm casually talking about it. I won't have to always say, Oh yes, this is in original imports. So they're just like, Oh yes, this is that, you know, it'll be labeled. So, um, Amaculatum OG. That's actually what I have them labeled as in the bug room. That's the label that's on the, the container, uh, for my, my memory purposes. Not honestly, not like I couldn't just figure out which ones were which from memory because I could open the container and look at the ratio of phenotypes and just be like, oh yeah, this is the that this is the original stock. So okay, we got quite a bit more to cover. So here's an X. For the Armadillidium Maculatum OG, we actually almost finished two pages of isopods and have about a page and a half to go. <clears throat> Gone in for those uh, times. All right, Armadillidium Maculatum original import stock going once, going twice, sold to EDC Geek, Feek, EDC Feek. EDC Geek with a winning bid of $33. Your first win. Congrats. All right. Now we're going to do some. We'll do another 20 uh, Cubaris species. Uh, mi scusi, mi scusi, cappuccino, a starting bid of $1, because I'm going to go get another drink really quick. Mi scusi, mi scusi, espresso, espresso. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to get another drink. There is some discussion, if you could call it that. How many more auction, uh, isopods we got left? About 50, 60.
I will do everything in my power to prevent a day four from happening. Here's the X for the cappuccinos. Oh, that's a really good flavor, this cherry limeade. Okay. Cappuccino. Cubara species cappuccino. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Orang Mango. Winning bid of $75. Okay. All right. Now we next up we have something that's very near and dear to my heart. If twenty five Venezuelo Arizonicus from Sahuarita, you were at the Roach auction yesterday. You saw that these are being co housed with my uh, Aaron Vega from Sahuarita. Uh, one of the very few desert-adapted and desert-dwelling isopods. Of the, the pictures as, as unflattering as possible. Just somebody wait until a mutant is isolated. Then everybody will see. Wow, if you Google Venezuela Arizonicus, the first picture on Reddit is Armadillidium nasatum. It's uh it's uh, pathetic. A couple of very uh recent publications on Venezuela Arizonicus. I like their physiology and stuff like that. Got to read the abstract from that paper. All right, Orang Mango. Here's an X for you. Anyone wish to challenge them? Going once. Going twice. Sold to Orang Mango. Thank you, Alan, for the picture later. I do love these as they are extremely dry tolerant isopods. Dry tolerant, live well with the Aaron of Vega. What more could you possibly want? All right, so we have advanced care. They like more ventilation than other isopods do. And uh, I have a picture I, I showed on one the stream yesterday uh, from the side, uh, them living with my uh, Aaron of Vega sand roaches. Um, let's do a group of eight Cubara species amber, starting bid of $1. Day four is a given. For four, 50 to 60 is two hours at one every two minutes. Every three minutes means three hours. I know you love knowing that. Thank you, Chris. We'll go through a couple of these faster, maybe when we get to this next page of stuff. All right, here's an X for the Ambers. Get them out of here. Get them away from me. They're in my walls. They're in my walls. Uh, going once on the Cubar species Amber. Going twice sold to Lil Ninja's 18 with a winning bid of 54. Ridiculous. Again, guys, I, I want to get us to fun. I want to have fun tonight, guys. I want to have some fun. All right. So we'll do another group of 40. Cubaris, Murina, Anemone, starting bid of $1. Couple people speaking up. Mm -hmm. Chris.
Chris is looking for the dentist office auction on Tuesday. I mean, it would be sane of me to like to to quit after doing the isopods, wouldn't it? And then do an extended an auction extension, but uh, please no day four. I need the arachnid auctions to come up before work. <laughs> I don't want to do an auction tomorrow, guys. All right. Here's an X for the Murina anemone. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Phoenix, Arizona. Winning bid of $60. Okay, we're going to do a group of 30, Armadillidium maculatum. The name for this strain now is Skullstock. Starting bid of $10. There's an old Facebook photo somewhere of the founding male to the stock. I thought that I could get the cool skull pattern on his pronotum to uh, breed true. Unfortunately, I could not. Let's see if I can find a picture. Oh boy, it's gotta be buried, uh, buried in in all this stuff. I'll I'll do a quick look and see what I can find. Oh, there's pictures of Baby Victor. Oh, um, this is a nightmare to go through my old desktop and stuff. Uncropped sight images. Um, there might be a picture of it. I remember putting on the uh, Facebook. Uh, groups before I was uh, banished for speaking heresy against the powers that be. So I'm going to try and uh, trying to find it. There's completed site images. Um, I know there's a picture on the old uh, Facebook groups again. It's just a matter of finding out where... 212 2018 active business files. Oh, guys, I think I'm getting close. Working bug misc. Um, site update. No, it's not in there. Maculatum candy stripes. Somebody please get me my candy stripes back, please. I missed that stock. Really, really something fierce. Oh, I can't seem to find it. I'd have to go deeper into all this. Facebook crimes. All right, here's an X. Again, so the founding male had a skull marking on it. On you know, looked like a little skull in the head. I tried to breed for it, and I uh, it just wouldn't stick. So it's it wasn't hairable. It was something environmental that caused it. But you know, a lot of the 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 line from there on out. Very nice contrast of like. Well, I'm trying trying to find a pic to email port. I'd have to go back on Facebook and poke through the old Facebook group and see if they even kept my pictures up there. Um, but uh, Aculeum skull. I'm gonna see if I can find any anything. No. Um, it's just a very any chance there will be centipedes. There will be some centipedes. You can keep Silver Springs, Uricotus Floridana on coconut fiber as well. Um, but anyways, I sold some at the last auction, so anybody want to vouch for how cool they are if you got them? They are zebras, amaculatum. So they're just they're just kind of they have their stripes. Stripes is the dominant. Uh, I think they're almost ninety nine percent stripes in the colony with a very good high white quality. None of those weird like marmorated -y looking individuals that pop up in other strains. So you'll have to go on faith, faith. Um, there will be pictures on road crossing in the future. Here's the X. We'll wrap it up. We won't spend any more time here. You already did X. Oh, thank you, Bree. Second X. Everybody's just like, oh, okay. Sorry, I got lost trying to find the picture. No photos of this. There is a photo somewhere on Facebook, but I don't want to go dive around and find it. Going once. Going twice. Sold to mm, M. What are you looking at? M with a winning bid of 36. 
M, you will not be upset with what you're going to receive. Uh, it's a very pretty strain. I really need to get some pictures of it up. Again, there's a picture of the founding individual somewhere on Facebook. Somewhere. Winning bid of 36 to M. Just comes up with spikies. Something white and black. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it, I guess. Okay. Next up, we'll do... Uh, let's do 30 armadil... Not 300. 30 armadilidium badium castledacia. However you spell that, starting bid of $1... I will fix the spelling on Castledacia. Castledacia, Dacia. Two C's. There we go. Uh, somebody here sent me some of these as an extra. They were trying to claim the whiteout bounty for Perselio Scaper whiteout pure stock. And uh, they sent me some Badium as an extra, and then they ended up doing really well. How much longer do you think for isopods? Uh, nine. I'm going to keep the pace up as best as I can. Here's an X for the Badium Castledacia. Oh, that's interesting. Am I doing, well, I guess those are a lot of larger individuals. My, a lot of my smaller ones are less uh, vivid than that, I guess. More solid colored. Um, I think, I can't remember who it was who sent them to me, but thank you for sending them to me because now it's four or five months later and, uh, they're doing well. Going once for the Badium. Going twice. Sold. To Dr. Dead Stuff. Winning bid of $50. Somebody, uh, certain somebody by the name of Chris. Uh, oh, I'm wearing a white shirt now. That's right. I went out to do farm work. I didn't want to mess up my Roswell shirt, and I forgot to change afterwards. How embarrassing. P4 Montgomery. I don't know what that is. Uh, let's do 60... Porcelionides, Prunosis, Oreo Crumbles, starting, oh, I hate that name, uh, starting bid $1. All right. We're going to keep moving. There's an X. We aren't even at the speed section yet. There's an X, everybody. Going once for the Porcelanides Prunosis Oreo Crumbles. Going twice. Sold. To copy Cat Pack 811. A newbie with a winning bid of $28. Copy cat pack eight one one. It's weird not seeing it. The thing autofill something in. All right, keeping it up. Fifty Venezillo Parvis Dalmatian starting bid one dollar. Uh, this strain, I should put an asterisk there. I won't. Um, when you buy these from a lot of people, they uh, they didn't bother to completely select out the Dalmatian, so you usually end up with, like, wild types in the mix. I already did that. I took a bunch of little tiny Dalmatians and separated them. So you will be getting true breeding Dalmatians with these. You will not have to pick out anything. God, I wish isopod morph names were standardized. Uh, good luck, and actually that would probably cause even more problems, especially with the way that uh, some species are currently. So... You can see in that picture how there are wild types still. That's because, again, somebody did not finish the job of picking out the Dalmatians. So the stock that you are getting in this uh, batch is 100% true breeding. I already went through and picked out 
the uh, wild types and picked only teeny tiny unfertilized Dalmatians to start seed the colony with, and now it's 100% Dalmatian. There we go. Thank you. Okay, here's the X for the Parvus Dalmatians. Uh, I got to do that with my orange Parvus. There's Okay, here's the thing. Really quick, some of the orange Parvus seem to be multi-gene. I just checked on those. I was going to put some that I've been isolating up for the auction, and some of them looked really good, and some of them were still wild typey. So I'm going to go through and do another round of selection with just the teeniest tiny ones. But I think there is a multi-gene orange in Venezuela Parvus, kind of like how Hilaria have some orangish individuals, but it's not simple recessive orange. Um that there may also be simple recessive ones there too. All right, going once, going twice, sold to Neutroba, winning bid of And even the multi-gene red ones, you said, yeah, yours look like simple recessive. But I've been deceived by that in Parvis before, too, with some of the stock that I'm working with. Um, where did I pick those from? Okay. All right. Next up, we have a very special Porcelio Scaber. We have Porcelio Scaber Agni Kai starting bid of $30. This is a hyper dryness resistant strain of Percelio Scaber formed from a cross between lava and California stock. It is probably a good competitor for one of the most dry tolerant isopods. I have a vigorous process for picking the next generation of these. I dry them out like bone dry during the winter here, like the 30, 40% or less air humidity with airflow completely dry substrate and I let the let them all die back and then I take whoever su survives a couple days of these trials and that becomes the next generation literal isopod torture yeah basically satchel hey when nature does it it's fine so um yeah so it is an isopod agnikai it is a literal trial by fire and I've gotten some some fire results uh the Leukistic gene is innate to this because it comes from the California stock that was mixed into this. It's the same stock that was used to create the Lucy. I'll have some of those up for auction soon. So, but these things can take it ridiculously dry, and I keep pushing the limits. In fact, it was either last some last winter or the winter before. My the trial was so harsh, I almost lost them, and it was down to three. And like one or two of them were at the point where, you know, where ice pods, if they get too dry, they kind of start moving like they're like crinkly because there's no water in their system to actually power all their hydraulics. There was one or two of them got to like that point. And I remember seeing it be like, oh man, this is, this is not, this is not going to be good. Um, and then actually they turned around and then that found in the next generation. Uh, the trial, I think, yeah, I think that was last winter, not, not the winter of 22, 22 to 23, the winter of 21 to 22 was when that happened. Uh, was less fierce this last winter with my selections, um, but uh, I will probably be vicious again this year. Isopod eugenicistic uh, bug birder. All right, here's an X. I see our California armadillidium running on the sidewalks in summer. Yeah, again, the California scaber have are just a little extra... And on top of that, the lavas are very dry tolerant too. So combining the best of both worlds, I would say here. Um, all right. Going once on the Agni Kai. Going twice. They also look pretty cool too. The hats for the Lucy's in this uh, colony are really neat. Sold to Devin Noname with a winning bid of $45. Uh, I see this as a major win for practical isopod keeping for uh, people who have drier vivariums or something. Uh, honestly, you could probably keep and breed these in with death feigning beetles. You know, they're not, they're not, they can dry, the substrate can dry out all the way and they'll survive, but they won't breed. 
They need just they just just a little touch of water and they'll still be able to breed though. So as long as you have like a little moist area, um, you will get breeding out of them. I still need to get Lucy from you again. Uh, LC, no worries. You can keep Labra CF Peruvian this on cocoa cocoa fiber. All right, there's the Agni Kais. Let's do 40 Cubaris Urina Citrus slash orange. I'm not sure what name the isolator settled on. So, but this is just simple recessive orange and Cubaris Murina. It's just simple recessive orange. Too expensive, Dilo says. Uh, me being brain and hearing sold to brain in the live stream. Just like what? The Devon with the name versus the Devon with no name. Devin no name. It confused me every time because my name is Devin. Very humorous. Um, why? Uh, I don't. So I see the picture photo gallery put up, but I'm pretty sure that's actually Panda King or Pac Chaw. Yeah, there we go. He took it down. Um, species Citrus. Again, this is a more recent isolate. I think it was like last spring or early in the spring. I'm not good at telling time the last six months. Oh, yeah, there we go. There's a good picture. Um, isolated by a woman who lives in Florida who found them among her local uh, Murina. Has anybody gotten Dalmatian Murina yet? I would really love to see those. So, um, yeah, especially the adult males of these Murina can be more of like, they're more of like a dark fleshy color. Uh, definitely the orange on these is not quite as popping as it is in uh, some other orange mutants. It could also be a humidity thing in my place, but I mean, they're Murina. So X for these guys, for these Cubaris Murina, still need to get Lucy from you again. Uh, we do have some Lucy's coming up in the, the list. Uh, also, photo gallery. Uh, what's the what's the isopoda species tarragona again now? Because again, I'm not. I'm gonna have a difficult time comp comp putting some of these new Latin names to memory until I put them on the new site, and then after I filled out a page full of their information, then it will really stick. But I don't have them listed, and I don't sell the tarragona too often. So, um, anyways, okay, Marina going once. Going twice. Sold to Arbs with a winning bid of $28. Oh, I didn't mean to open up Microsoft Word. Victor seems to have found something to bark at outside. Okay, we'll do 40 Cubara species white. Pigeon, starting bid of $1. I really like these. Uh, this is, you know, with Tung Song, I was like, yeah, I can see the appeal. Yeah, this is pretty okay. Um, this, I went from, like, these white pigeons, like, the pictures, they're, like, really lame. I thought they were, like, awful. Then I got them, and I actually really grew to like them. There's some subtle variations in the colony of, like, this nice ivory color, and I really like it. I actually really like um, this species, surprisingly. Again, I went in very skeptical. It's a couple of isopod species that that's been like. And if I'm honest, I'm a little disappointed by the coloration on like the red Diablo Marulinellas. And even the tricolors, it's like something can be very pretty, but if it's too much work, you don't want to really have to deal with it. It's like a, like a macaw. It's like, sure, the macaw is beautiful and it's gorgeous and stuff, but then it like soul bonds to you and it screams all hours of the day and night and it uh, it bites your hand and breaks your bones you know, it's kind of like that to me. Um, yes to both of those, LC, in the uh, YouTube live stream. Every time he says white pigeon, but he doesn't really have any birds to sell. Yeah, they have more of a, it's more of an ivory -y finish in person. I really do like them. And pretty easy for me, too. Our partners bite and break bones and scream all night. All right, here's an X for the white pigeons. Of 
What I really need is like a little, I need like an app or something, not a timer app because numbers would make me very nervous, but maybe something like um, a circle with a little a timer that's just a circle that goes like every two minutes or something. And that way I kind of know to wrap stuff up. I think that would be very helpful for some of the stuff. Pigeons make way better pets than macaws. How long do you think the isopods will last? Uh, better question is how long do we think I will last? Going once on the white pigeons. Going twice. Sold. To Bree with a winning bid snipe of $42. We don't know for Tarragona yet. All right. Do we know the family for Tarragona? Because I'll, I'll use that here then. All right. Here we go. We have a group of a wonderful 30 armadillo aficionados from a Sicily in the nature. Starting bid of one dollar. I love armadillo aficionalis. It's it's probably up there in my top ten favorite isopods. Actually, they're big, they're chunky, they're squeaky. I really want a Dalmatian color form isolated from them. I think it would be absolutely baller. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah, no worries, no worries. We're at 51 people. Uh, now we're at 49 people, but same difference. We're at 51 people, everybody. Perfect. Absolutely wonderful. Length. Length of assistance of Officinalis Sicily. Uh, they get a bit bigger, like, well, noticeably bigger than Arbidilidium vulgari. Enough that you'd see if you saw the biggest of each of them. Next to each other, you'd say the aficionalis are definitively larger. Here's an X. I really do like these guys. Going once on the aficionalis, Sicily. Going twice. Sold. To Eric. Good. Do a control R here. Oh, M said crap, so I think it's probably Eric for $24, but we're going to find out. I think I hear Angela entertaining the, uh, the Fresno Fiends outside. 24 to Eric. All right. Next, we will do 30 Cubaris species Saba. Armadillo would, would do really well with uh, hissers. I actually need to start working on communal setups with those. I like these. They're little camouflaged, uh, like uh, jungle camo isopods. They're pretty cool. Timberdoodle Daily says, the best isopod and locality. Red is pretty cool, too. I actually like the uh, Aficionalis from Israel a lot. I will be listing some of those. It's a consistent thing that I list at the auction, and I really do like them. Um, they have a bit, they bit like an actual pattern on them, actually. Care like for the white pigeons. Standard Cubaris care, yes. Very easy. Same as Nasodillo, Arcane Jelly Eye, Shiro Itsuri. Um, Zen monkeys never owned a macaw. Had a lot of pigeons. A little biased. Uh, I wouldn't be biased, to be fair. Uh, Israel are the best, obviously. They come with little yamakas. Armadillidae species saba. Now, by the way, all right. I'll just get right on that. So they're not a cubaris. All right. I'm not too surprised with how dry they can take the conditions. So, orants crush maybe. We will have Aficionalis Israel and Aficionalis Red. I have Aficionalis Red, Aficionalis Orange, and Aficionalis Orange Crush, and they all appear to be the exact same thing, and I don't know anything about the origins of any of the strains, if they're all different localities or not. Um, the Saba can do dry better, about the same as, like, Murina can. Um, not... They should not be kept. The, the conditions that rubber duckies and white duckies and white tigers and pak chongs take 
uh, the, those those cannot be kept as dry as a saba in my um, uh, in my opinion. The solid uniform of the Sicily is what makes them stand out, winky face. Yeah, I actually use the uh, the Sicily for like kid handling uh, things. Yeah, you know, I try to make them hiss. They don't always want to hiss. So, but it's still nice because they see them and they see I take like big ones, and so people will be like, uh, "Hey, we'll put an X for the Sabas." Um, people will see the efficient Alice Sicily and look at them and be like, "Wow, that's a big roly poly." They, like they said stuff like, "I've never seen the one that big." And it's funny because, like, they probably look at it and their brain thinks it's an armadillidium. And they just kind of, there's probably a moment of like weird cognitive dis dissonance with, like, wow, that's a really big roly poly. But they don't really think past that. Like, why is it so big? Like, is it different from the other ones that I've seen? You know, that kind of stuff. Okay. Armadillidy, armadillidy, armadillidy species Saba going once, going twice. Sold to Stella's Springtails. Winning bid of $32. That was for a 30 count. All right, Saba. Um, we'll do some 50 Nyambia Capensis. Starting bid of $10. I'm going to look on my phone. The person who originally collected these sent me the locality at some point. Um, let's see. I think they're from California. Malaga Cove. Malaga Cove. Which is... Uh, in California. Satchel, you take that damn bit away. You get these because you are an OG isopod person, and these are one of the OG isopods. So you take that damn bit away. I'm deleting it for you right now. There you go. It's gone. You get some of these for free. Satchel is one of the OGs of the isopod hobby. Him, Eric Maxwell, me... I guess Alan was a little bit into isopods too. Um, Oren and who else was I? And Eric Maxwell said that's, that's kind of basically it. Um, we were all into all these isopods before other people, Bugs in Cyberspace, Peter Claus, and before everybody else uh, hopped on the bandwagon. All right, here's an X for the Niambia. And I'm going to delete Satchel's other bid too because he's going to get some for free. Um, so as it stands, it's Mandy with the winning bid, or not winning bid, the almost winning bid, the in the lead bid. All right, here we go. Wrapping up the Niambia Cape Pensis, uh from Malaga Cove, California. Going once, going twice, sold to Mandy, winning bid of $12. One of the OGs. Eric went all the way to Malaga Cove to collect them. Yeah, I wasn't that into ISOs. He's still tangent. Alan, you did you did send the founding stock for um, <clears throat> Orange Vigor, so you you, you have your, your speak there. That feel and Kyle won't let me give him money. You aren't allowed to give me money, Satchel. Um, okay, we'll just do 100 isopoda species Tarragona. Wait for Photo Galley to correct me. 
with the, the most correct up-to-date information. Starting bid of $1. There are both wild types and orange, or simple recessive oranges in here. Uh, I have not yet devoted a good effort to picking out the oranges and getting them proven out. You may have purchased the orange strain from somebody circa 2017. If you did that, then you would be getting the same strain as I have now because the orange does not prove out or has not proven out, was not proven out, sorry. It likely will prove out, but somebody's going to have to pick out some really tiny individuals and keep doing that. Um, we got Exotic Willis asking, Red Velvet Mites, can I reach Will to ask him for some info on them? Yes, you should find Will on Facebook, Instagram, etc. There's got to be an easy way to get in touch with him. All right, X for the Tarragona Isopods. Going once. <clears throat> Going twice. Sold to Chris slash Skyler. All right. Congrats. Ah, crap. I went all the way up to the beginning of the Excel sheet again. Winning bid of $30. Chris slash Skyler. Uh, should I just put Chris slash Skyler as, as the name there, or can I go with just one of those names for easier uh, reference? I'll put Chris slash Skyler there. It's, it is the full Discord name after all. Where are these from? Oh, wait, duh, never mind. <laughs> Um, let's do what is that word in key Anki Philosia. I know there's an identity on those now. A Philosia and Ulicornis. We have 50 Aphylosia and Ulicornis. Starting bid of $1, the checkered isopod. Uh, can be kept on just leaf litter alone. Might make a pretty good feeder, just like a one-to-one -one alternative to Procellionides. Oh, boy, am I glad we got through one of these isopods pages. They're so goddamn prolific, yeah. It's funny because Phylosia are not really that prolific. Um, we're going to do... these next. All right, X for the Aphylosia and Ulicornis, the checkered isopod. We got 50 people in the stream. Let's get some likes. If you haven't liked the stream already, please do. It's much appreciated. All right, did I put an X? Okay, going once on the Aphylosia. Going twice. Sold. To email port twenty, uh, email port twenty two, winning bid of twenty six dollars. All right, we got a special thing next. Kyle, special thing. We have. Um, wow, it let me copy it as an image, but it wouldn't copy the text. That's so dumb. Thank you, Excel. We have a group of thirty. Armadillidium vulgari from Beloit, 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 Wisconsin. Uh, these were sent to me by, uh, I think it was the isoma, isopod chick. Uh, I requested them with an order I placed back in like 2019. I was like, could you send me some of the like vulgari from your backyard? And surprisingly, 
a lot of these like northern Great Plains and like Wisconsin, Dakota's area, Volgari have very, very high amounts of yellow on them, even without any sort of selection, um, even more so than Michigan. And in my experience, Michigan had some pretty high yellows. It's like um, you go down into Alabama and into um, the Appalachians and whatnot, you get kind of more solid colored Volgari. And then you go, uh, you go out west. Texas has even Volgari that have males that have yellow on them, which is very weird. So this is from the Isopod Chicks backyard in Beloit, Wisconsin. Here's an X wrapping up the bids. Uh, we'll do another really cool Volgari locality in a second here. A very special one, too. Very far away one. Going once on the Beloit's. Bel Beloit, Belois, anybody know how to say that? Going twice, sold to Phil with a winning bid of $23. I hope that you have fun with this strain, and maybe you can get some good yellow isolated out of it, Phil. I'm really, not one pod was passed on. All of Algaria are introduced except for parts of Europe. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'll read the live stream in a second. We're going to do a group of 30. I don't think I did these yet. Nope, we haven't done these yet. All right. 30 Armadillidium Volgari from Oahu, Hawaii. Starting bid of $20. Oh, Volgari. I got to write Volgari. We have some uh, a, a beloved contact of mine was able to get me some Hawaiian armadillidium vulgari, and now I pass on the love to everybody here at Random Paleo Nerd. Oh, somebody specifically was looking for them. Let's see if I can find a picture on iNaturalist of them from there. They're not common in Hawaii, that's for sure. Uh, there's a picture of them, of a group of them on something on the grass somewhere. Not very vulgari -y looking vulgari. Probably glad to not be in Hawaii anymore. Someone grabbed them after, but yeah. All right. Here's the X for the Hawaiian vulgari. Going once, going twice. Sold. To Brian Chase, 22, with a winning bid of $24. You got yourself a very strange strain of Vulgari. All right. Um, this will be the last group of these that I put up. Group of 15, Reduct 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 Reductiniscus tuberculatus, starting bid of $1.00. Reducto, reducto ad absurdum. Um, Phil, if you find more orange vulgari, I want them, by the way. I will answer live stream questions in just a minute. I'm going to go get another drink. And I'm going to talk to Angela about joining us for our other auction stuff tonight.
All right, I got cheese, I got a drink. Muted, thank you everybody, still no volume. All right, we're gonna put an X for the tuberculatus. Mm -hmm. Got many, man, need some shiny gators. Let's see what we got these. Uh, how much longer are we expected to be on ice putts before I want to know if I have time to shower? Um, I'm trying to wrap it up by nine. So any vulgari locales throw cool oranges. Funny you mentioned that, Tennyson. I'll get to that soon. Question about splitting. Can you split an item with someone that doesn't win anything else in the auction or only people that – you can split them with people who, do, who haven't won anything. But remember, there will be a fee for splitting – um, and it's kind of dependent on how much of a convenience or inconvenience it, it is for me. My name is Gator, and I smoke crack. Is Angela going to join you? She's taking a shower right now, and she's kind of shy, so she may or may not. Um, but we'll see. There's no pressure on her to do so. Going once for the reductinistic, reductinistic tuberculosis. Going twice for the reduced clearance item on the... Tuber, tuber, tuberific. Sold to Phoenix, Arizona with a winning bid of $46. Okay, okay. Let's see what we're going to do next. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, let's do some Silvestrii. We have a group of 15, Porcelio, Silvestrii, starting bid of $1. Yeah, while I think that a, a visual timer would be great for me, I also think it would make me have sort of an existential panic because I'd be sitting there watching it like go around and each minute of my life tick by. Mm. That's a good cheese and cracker. <laughs> Alan says, plot twist, twist. Kyle doesn't actually have a girlfriend. He's just going crazy. Thank you, Angela. I love you. I'm talking to just the hallway of the house. Uh, exotic Wilderness. If you want to contact Will again, you're going to have to go find his Instagram or do the um, pseudoscorpions.com slash Will's Bug Room. You could also, so I do not dox Will, uh, send me a private message on discord and i'll give you his discord name and or if he lets me his snapchat or whatever male silvestri can also be gray and females can also be um red it's just not as frequent i used to have a true breeding strain where the males and the females were red um but i lost i was called red shift and uh, actually, anybody seen Redshift for sale? I wouldn't mind getting that stock back again. I don't know what his Instagram is. I don't even have an Instagram. There are some numberless timer websites. Yeah, I'm debating it. I don't know if I want to watch my life tick by, uh, though. All right. Going, uh, we've got the X up for the Porcelio Silvestrii. Going once. Going twice, I actually used to keep them with my Dorley at Or and I, and they did very well. Sold to Bree with a winning bid of $37. Almost had a heart attack. Love the demand for my favorites. Let's see. Okay, cross that off. All right, now we have a group of 20, Porcelio, Skaber, Lucy, starting bid of $20. Uh, this is the black-eyed leukistic strain, simple recessive black-eyed leukistic strain of Porcelio Skaber from, um, from California, of California stock. 
Mm. That's a good brie. I've had better brie recently. That's pretty good brie for how much I paid for it. It was like $16 for a huge wheel. <laughs> Stop eating me! Okay, now y'all were the ones scared to touch them Diablos. Why is the pod so angry looking? He's angry because I st somebody stole all of his pigment. Here's an X for the Porcelio Scaber Lucy, the bug keeper named Bree. Okay. Porcelio Scaber Lucy. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Hylas with a winning bid of $25. I scratch those off of here. All right. So I've bemoaned that I lost my uh, colony of Punta Canas, and I think it's going to be an uphill battle to um, get them back, get a pure line of it back. But I do have a pure line of Punta Cana. It's just I selected for oranges and het for oranges, much like how the, the sunset line is just orange vigor that got outcrossed to like wild type Bulgarian. So you get wild types and then you get oranges. These are pure Bulgari Punta Cana that I selected for just orange. But I like the fact that the het orange or that, that you, you get males um, that are like solid and sort of like a hazy bluish color with these. Yeah, very pretty much that. Um, again, they're not orange vigors. You can see that they're they're punta canas. Um, so I do have a line of pure punta canas, but I don't. I lack the diversity of colors because I selected down for this um, this allele. So starting bid one dollar. So it's just basically punta canas, but the whole color shift, the the whole colony's color ratio is shifted towards mostly orange or oranges. And I kind of like it that way. I know I like proving things out. And while I'm saying that, I also am working on getting proven out orange uh, uh, Punta Canas. But again, this is, it's removed. There's a little bit more work to it than just just having it be oranges and half and het oranges. It's, I also removed a lot of the, um, you get those nice solid big yellow individuals in Punta Canas too. Um, so I removed those again, which is why I'm regretting Losing my original Punta Cana colony is because I missed that diversity. Uh, I do have an iPhone, so I could pull that up. I don't know if I'm going to. Um, I'm going to put a poll up here. I've got the opportunity to get us some auction. I'm going to give you guys the auction to choose if you want me to do some auction off some Phidippus Johnson eye and some miscellaneous unidentified Arizona Phidippus. Um, Jojo, uh, do not worry. This is not interfering with your situation. This is um, somebody, yes, no, maybe so. All right, X for the Tutti Fruities. We know his favorite cheese. They need to be updates. Um, gang raid, a countdown on the Tutti Fruities. Tutti Fruity. Oh, we're fruity. We did Lucy's. All right. Going once on the Tutti Fruities. Going twice. Sold. 
to Lorraine number 13. All right, with a winning bid of $25. Again, yeah, they're 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 pure Punta Canas, but the, the allele shift have shifted way too much. Um you are auctioning off any Venezuela. That's uh that's coming up. We're gonna get to that. Okay, let's do some 20 armadillo armadillo officinalis red starting bid of one dollar this is the uh this is the only of whatever that that those like three uh red orange and orange crush this is the only one that i'm going to have for auction again i have all three they look identical if anybody knows the differences please educate me because i would love to know Mm. Lucy's are not as popular as they deserve, says Hylas. I agree. Skaver will continue to rise in popularity, actually along with Marina, as more and more selectively bred lines are isolated and refined. There's a lot of potential in those two taxa. Even more than in Vulgari, I think. A lot of potential in Murina and in Skaber, just because of how variable they are. How many rounds of pods? We have about 25 pods left to go through, about. All right. X for the Officinalis Red. Look at the next thing queued up. All right. Going once, I'm the official Alice Red. Going twice. Sold. To photo gallery got in on it with a winning bid of 35. All right. Come on, Excel. Why you like this? All right, we gotta speed it up. Chris Snyder says we got 30 Armadillidium Nizatum Pearl starting bid of $1. Uh, this is another, I, Valerie, Valerie O'Neill uh, left the hobby kind of early on in things. I think she had some health issues, but she also isolated these Nizatum. She called them Pearl. They do have a very pearlescent appearance, but um, if you raise them under the right conditions, you will find out that they're actually Dalmatians. So, you ugh. I don't even know if those are actually pearl. So they could be, but they're actually Dalmatians. That's the the, the mutation responsible here. I like the very base usage of tropical isopods pictures. Yeah, you can see the Dalmatian spots on a lot of uh, the ones in tropical isopods pictures. So this is a sock right from Valerie. Um, straight from the source. Again, they've been around a while. Back when, uh, back when on isopods, there was a small trickle of European species being smuggled in, and people were getting very hype over stuff they were isolating in their backyards. And we had a, we had a, a, a birth of uh, isopod selection going on. All right, here's the X for the Nizatum pearl. As I get the next thing queued up, next thing is something super special. Super duper special. All right, going once on the Nizatum Pearl. Going twice. Sold to Hylus with a winning bid of $18.
All right, super duper special thing now, guys. We have in the flesh a group of 25 Cubaris Benetensis Yuma, Arizona, starting bid of $60. 1 billion percent captive bred, baby. Photo. These are these were what was once being called the white Venezuelo Arizonicus. They have they were described and have been described for a while. They're actually a Cubaris that's mostly found in Mexico. The exact taxonomic uh, relation: Benito's reclined pillwood louse. Um, okay, I guess that that's all right for a Latin name. Um, or for a common name. I'll just call them Cubaris Benetensis um, forever in, perpe in perpetuity. Um, but this is a, 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 des a desert wood louse. Um, 16 yes versus 8 no on the Fittipus. Okay. This is a desert uh, wood louse. It gets about the size of Murina. Um, love those guys I got from you, Kyle. They love their sand and soil mix. These are only found in... Uh, extreme desert areas of uh, creosote barrens, basically. Probably up there with the most uh, xerophilic isopods in terms of their general habitat. Happily digging into rodent burrows for them. Home. Home. They have been identified as a Cubaris. Again, we're going to see what happens when genetic work or whatever is ever done on Cubaris, Venezuela, etc. But currently, they are described under the genus Cubaris. Here's an X. Somebody would really like them. We'll try to get them in their hands. I do keep them like Arizonicus. They do have a moist um, moisture gradient. I actually think I should. I might start keeping them with an Aaron Vega because the Venezuela Arizonicus have been so happy under those conditions. I think these Cubaris Benetensis will be too. I mean, they're fine. I've been getting really good production out of them, but it's just nice to save space sometimes when I know it's good for all species involved. All right, going once on the Cubaris Benetensis. Going twice. Sold to Phoenix, Arizona. Person with a gentleman's taste. Wait, yay. All right. Let's do 40 Cubaris Marina Papaya. Starting bid of $1. Thank you very much for the bids on that uh, Phoenix, Arizona. They are a very special species of isopod. Again, you have to fist the burrows in the creosote barrens. And that's the other funny thing. Somebody posting these papaya picks, you could very easily pass off Cubaris Murina papaya as the Cubaris benetensis. They are they are very, very, very similar to each other. And if people end up wanting benetensis more, Cubaris species papaya, I will kill you, photo gallery. I will kill you in cold blood. All right, X on the papayas. We're going to keep moving. Going once on the Murina papaya. Going twice. Sold. To Brian and Lagia with a winning bid of 22. Congratulations. Next, we'll do 20 Cubaris species Pak Chong Black. 
Starting bid of one dollar. Um, so these are the pack chongs without the red. Hey, our ice pod's almost done. We're getting there. I think we got about 20-ish left. They're pretty cool. I do like pack chongs are very cool. I do really like the species pack chong. Um, they are they're like a mid-range breeding species. They aren't quite as ratty for me as panda rats are. They breed a lot faster than rubber duckies do. All right, here's an X. We're going to keep moving. P4. Oh, those guys. No expanses, unfortunately, Dr. Hemroy, but we do still have a couple more top shelf things coming up. All right, going once on the Pak Chong Black. Going twice. Sold. To Patrick with a winning bid of 31. All right, next up 15 Troglodillo species soil. A spe another species I thought, well, like, this is kind of stupid. They're kind of ugly and all that stuff, like with the white pigeons. And then I actually got to see them in person and they were a lot more charismatic. The little white antennae really sold it for me. They really pop against the body color. So they stole my heart. I think they're pretty neat now. I think they're very neat. It would be interesting to get like a little thing set up of, you know, they do like, what is it, round robin or whatever, where you have two options and you have to pick one of the two. It would be interesting to do that with a bunch of isopods so that I could see which ones I actually like the most objectively and then see the end results of all of them scored against each other. Will the same piece going up something other than Polymorpha? Oh, yeah, there will be something other than Polymorpha. I don't know if you'll be very excited about it, though. Um, I'm very excited about it, given some advances I've made with their husbandry. So... Honestly, the one gimmick about this centipede makes them really, really, really cool to me. All right. Here's the X for the species soil. All right. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To random paleo nerd. This is a good deal. Winning bid of $31. It's a very good deal. I mean, they are, they need to pull the adults out of my crayon bin, uh, he says. All right. Really cool, really cool species here. Well, really cool locality, I guess, because they've been identified as officinalis. 20 armadillo officinalis. Israel starting bid of $20. These are larger than the Sicilian ones. They have uh, actual like markings on them too. I really like them. Again, big fan of a fish. Really big fan of the genus. Really big fan of this species. Really big fan of this locality. Of the Armadillo officinalis Israel. Are they bigger or smaller than Polymorpha? I'm mainly interested in bigger peds. They're about the size of Polymorpha. And get ready to have your perceptions rocked because a new publication coming out soon is splitting up Polymorpha. And there's a tons and tons and tons of morphological and genetic evidence to support their conclusions. So Polymorpha, as we know it, will no longer be Polymorpha. Um. Somebody claims from Chiricahua Desert Museum. I'll have to go back after the isopod frenzy and, and um, coordinate the list from the claim thingy. Mm, delicious. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Man, no one is dogfighting over these. You're sleeping on something good, guys. This is a really cool locality. Just don't house them together with the Palestine locale. I appreciate uh, very edgy jokes like that one. Of course, formerly Maze Armadillo, Ignamba species Nigeria aren't even from Nigeria. Uh, and I think the fact they get a little bit... I mean, again, I love both of these localities. I, I love them both for different things. But these may have more appeal to other people because they do get larger and they have the patterning. All right. Here's an X for the Armadillo officinalis from Israel. Going once, going twice, sold to green bugs, bugs with a Z, one, two, one, two, winning bid of $35. Green Bugs, that's your first one at the auction, I think. I recognize you from before, uh, from previous auctions. So congrats. All right, let's do some 40 Porcelionides, Floria, Montgomery, Alabama. I'm going to make a little note here that this produces. I was going to call the strain that comes out of this dove, but then... Um, mm -hmm. On isolating some of them, I realized that they're not solid weight. They're actually Dalmatians. Um, so I'm going to put throws Dalmatians under the notes here. Starting bid of $10. Uh, lizard Beans, you just have to send one email saying, Hey, I'm Lizard Beans checking in for my auction stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm Lizard Beans from Discord. I'm checking in for my auction stuff. The picture that photo gallery linked is my old picture of Floria. That's actually Florida stock, but it's just, again, it's just Porcelionides Floria. It's the only locale of Floria, Floria I currently keep, and they have been throwing Dalmatians, and I'm working on isolating the Dalmatians. And I have to pick a different project name for them because they're not actually, they don't deserve something a weirder name, like I was going to call them Dove because they were collected near a church. Um so I would they do you know they're very faint Dalmatian spots, so it just expresses differently in Floria than it does in Prunosis, I guess. Holy isopods, yeah. Oh, yeah, I come up with something. Oh god, were they collected near Korean church? I think it was a Baptist church. Holy polies. That's hilarious. Holy polies. Anthony Green, I win them in the spring and in the fall of victory. Oh, you got both sets of them. That's pretty interesting. All right, here you go. Porcelionides Floria. Again, you can go ahead and isolate the Dalmatians, and I guess you can call them whatever you wanted, but I got to find a good project name for them before they get distributed. Israel for the win. Gateway Baptist Church, yep. All right, going once on the Floria. Going twice on the Floria. Sold to Bark Toos, winning bid of $13. Yeah, I think Prunosis is the, the prominent species in culture. Floria has never really been too common. We did plural. All right, time to do the most unlikable isopod. I shouldn't say unlikable. The most indescribable isopod ever. Armadillidium insulanum. There is nothing particularly notable or anything about this species. They just kind of are. They There's no morphs or mutants. There's nothing particularly cool about their coloration. They're just... The isopod ever. The most isopod of all time is what Armadillidium insulanum is. The insular woodlouse. I don't even know if anybody besides me cultures these. I don't see them 
dare I type in armadillidium insulanum for sale? Um, nobody has them. It would seem. The insulin isopod. Kyle denies that Israel exists. I'm talking about isopod, of course. The most, the statement of uh, the most isopod of all time. is an accurate statement. Coworker, coworker was asking about the pods. I was bidding on it. had trouble at grasping they're all different species. It's a hard concept for some people to, to grasp. I like the, the most bug. Again, the selling feature of these is that there's nothing particularly noticeable about them. They're just... They're from wherever Armadillidium insulanum are found. They're in places that isopods live. Going once on the Armadillidium insulanum. I'm not even going to bother posing. The a most insular fellow. Going twice. <laughs> this is very interesting. There's a bid war. I'm not, you know, I have my eyes open. I'm just going to let this run out a little bit. Going twice. <laughs> Sold just for the ride the high for the meme. Sold to Ice Beam. Winning bid of fifteen dollars. You've won the most isopob isopob of all time. Be uh, enjoy them. They all look like a great feeder for Disdera. They are great feeders for Disdera. All right, let's get out of that haze with a uh, 30 count of Nasodillo, Arc, Angelii, Shiro, Utsuri, starting bid of $1. I hope I spelled Archangelii right. It's a difficult spelling. I think there's another L in there. There's two R's, Archangelii. Here we are. The, the most isopod of all time. Cubaris Dairy Cow. AKA Cubaris Dairy Cow. This one sounds like it should be the name of a giant mech. Ah oh, yes, Zishiro Itsuri, fade to black. I let the Archangelii Arch take him. <laughs> That's great. Okay, well, I'm putting an X in here. Here's the X. Going once on the Shiro Itsuri. Going twice on the Nasodillo Archangelii. Sold. It's a copycat pack. 811, winning bid of 26. Glad I don't have to type that out again. It auto filled. Okay. Next up is 12 Cubara species. White shark. Starting bid $1. Out of all the, the, the very tiny isopods, these are actually really cool. These are these are actually just really cool. I have no nothing bad to say about them. Um, the pictures, whatever pictures you find online, probably show the colors pretty accurately too. 
they are a very beautiful isopod despite their small size. Yeah, there's plenty of good pictures of them. The orangish, reddish color is a lot more apparent in person. And again, they're about the size of like Venezuela parvis, but they're really cool. Definitely a really cool isopod. Isopapa has been gone to buy milk but never came back. But as soon as I started bidding, Isopapa came back and laid a beating on me, saying no son of his will be this degenerate. Yeah, these are really cool isopod, guys. I have, again, nothing bad to say, only good things. I just wish some of these things came with more information. Wild Lamau. Uh, we'll put an X here. So write these into the thingy. Approximately, it's a tiny rusty panda king. Yeah, they're cool. They don't seem to. They nothing. Not a lot of Cubaras breed as fast as panda kings do, but these guys breed at a pretty okay pace. All right, going once on the white sharks. Going twice. Sold to Phoenix, Arizona. Winning bid of $45. You saved a bunch of money compared to everybody who has these listed online. These are the only pricey pot I want bad, but not 40 something for 12 bad. Honestly, that's not really bad compared to the pricing online. Uh, let's do 20 Cubaris species, red, ed, edge, orange. Starting bid of $1. That's a steal steal. He's like, yeah, honestly, it's not a bad prize. Oh, these are going 100, 150 for a 10 count. Is it just me or they have similar color? They do. They look like um, Dermestes Talpinus is what the uh, white sharks look like. That's interesting. Red and edge orange. Now these also, I received five or six solid orange individuals. And this colony produces some yellowy individuals that I think are females. So um, I've just accepted it as being a trait that was innate to the line. And maybe that could be teased out. It might be like um, uh, Skaber Sherbert where it is just part of – it might be the same mutation as in Skaber Sherbert's. You're doing great speeding through these. Um yeah, the white the the white sharks have been very easy for me personally. Alan, did I miss what what did I miss while I was rousing my pairing my big whips? I'm excited to grow my orange colony. Yeah, I like these. It's it's like the Scaber Sherbert, but a Cubaris, basically. Alright, here's an X for these. They're a lot cooler in person, I can tell you that much. And I, as you guys know, I'm brutally honest with the stuff. I had nothing to say about the insulanum, but these are very cool to see in person. I heard if you say Kyle three times, he turns into a rubber ducky. That is possibly true. You'll have to do it and find out. All right, going once on the Cubaris species Red Edge Orange. Going twice. Sold. To photo gallery, winning bid of 55. 55. All right. We continue moving. Moving and grooving. All right. We have a just a just a, a kind of forgotten isopod. You know, a lot of people like them early on. And now we live in a day and age of, of smuggled Southeast Asian stuff. So we just have a group of 40 Cubaris. Sorry, Cubaris. See, my, my brain's even wired wrong now. Um, of uh, 40 Silisticus convexus from Dearborn, Michigan. That's where my colony's from. It's one of the first isopods I went out wild and collected and got culturing. 
Um, I just want the red TBH. I need the Ukraine Pied, and I need the um, – I guess there's a red one now too, so I need Ukraine Pied and reds, I suppose, uh, whatever those pop up. If anybody here has colonies of those, please shoot me a message. I'll buy or trade you for them So, because I would really like more Silisticus. A neat little isopod, quirky. Not too many isopods that have this sort of body plan where they're like the more broadened, leggy, but they can also roll up. It's uh, not not too common. It's like us, was a Spherodillo have that too, or sp Spherillo, the um, uh, ones that used to be Marulinella species of Vietnam. All right, here's an X. I have wild stock of these from my yard, and they're by far the most prolific isopods I have, and they love to run fast. They do like to gotta go fast. One million dollars. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To M. Winning bid of ten dollars. Sniped starry, sorry. Uh, orang, orang mango has a colony living with some millipedes. All right, let's do some 40 cubaris species blue pigeon starting bid of one dollar. Uh, these are pretty okay. Sniped, sorry, big iron on his hip. It's hilarious. I'm not even in the live stream. The reveal, the ultimate reveal. What is that word? It's okay. We're getting down to the wire here, everybody. Here's an X. Start a convexus colony with a few I found near Samson area when I was there in January. Is it true that grat back guano is important for rubber duckies and other species? No. They will eat well-rotted leaf litter and do not even need calcium supplementation. Scratch that. Maybe some species might need it. For all the duckies I've worked with and all these two bars and stuff, I don't have any cuddle bones or any calcium supplement whatsoever. All right. Blue pigeons. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Patrick. Ah, uh, we'll do a control R. Email port might have sniped. And, oh, email port. Uh, yeah, no, Patrick did win. Patrick won fair and square with a winning snipey bid of $33. All right, see, we're making some good good time. Making some good time. Bro, U.S. Mantis has one wild assassin bug for $40. Crazy. Okay, we got a couple of uh, rank and file stuff to go through first, and then we're going to get into the final bids. Porcelo Levis, Cali Mix, starting bid $1. I'm pretty sure this is a heritable but non-genetic trait. It might even be bred in susceptibility and resistance to a pathogen causing this phenotype. So just be aware of that because I tried for years to isolate it without any luck. So just be aware of that. You get a nice, you get a lot of individuals that have sort of like a marbling coloration on them. Again, it does not seem to be heritable, or it does not seem to be genetic, but it may be heritable, which means it may be pathogen-induced. All right, here's an X. I'm going to queue up the next thing, too.
Going once on the Porcelio Levis Cali mix. Going twice. Sold. To Joy with a winning bid of $20. See, I can book when I want. I can book through it. Next up, 30. Porcelio Levis. Caramel. Starting bid of $5. This is the original oranges, basically, before oranges came on the market and kind of outshone them because the orange on orange is much better because it's simple recessive orange. However, caramel is the basal stock for how now, and perhaps in the future you could work it into other projects in different ways if you don't want the overwhelmingness of orange from the orange line. I am also working on up crossing caramel to orange to create an even better Orange looking Levis isopod. And also, yeah, they're true Levis. Orange, orange are Levis too. They cross with um, the US stock too. We just don't know where they came from. US Mantis, man, haven't heard that name for a long time. How are they not out of business? Probably not main job or they're retired and well off. Insect Central says, by the way, Kyle, I found over 100 tiger beetles on a beach in Florida. It was crazy. My mom got bit. She was mad. It's hilarious. Uh, Hylas says, I'd always assumed the white backs of Calimix were the same trade as milk back. Now it's a whole mystery. I think it's a pathogen. I think they may have resistance to like a porcelain disease or something that gets transmitted between generations. I've tried isolating the white individuals for years and they never reproduce. I never get any offspring out of them. But the mixed colony continues to go and continues to reproduce and predicts um, a mixture of, uh, of colors. So that's why I'm suspicious it's not genetic, but it is heritable, which means it may be a pathogen or some so, one, some weird somatic thing going on. All right, X for the Porcello Levis Caramel. Um, they don't re reproduce. No, they do reproduce, but you cannot get the individuals with that high white expression to reproduce. You can isolate them, and they will not breed, and they will not produce, they will not produce offspring. Um, going once, going twice, sold $12 to photo gallery. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. We're getting into the, the final stuff here. We have 30 Porcelio Skaber. Excalibur starting bid of $20. Uh, this is a newer, very nice uh, strain out of Wisconsin. Pretty consistent. I have been doing a bit of culling in the colony to keep the coloration consistent. So it's pretty much proved out, but it seems to need a little bit of management. So just a little bit. Kyle should sell isopod merch. It's in the cards. I got so much stuff going on. It's eventually. An isopod merch. I got to sell roach merch first. Well, there's an unfortunate chili reception to Excalibur. Hylas is in there. Real. Hades is in there. All right. Here we go. Hades and Hylas. Go at it. Porcelio Scaber Excalibur. Again, it's named for those very crisp white skirts on the edges. Loki has them. Says, I love these guys. There you go. There's the pitch for you. Uh, going once. Going twice. Sold. To email port 22 with a winning eye. Hades. You edited a bid, so I can't count it, unfortunately. So I have to give it to email port 22 because of the edited bid. Winning bid of $30. Remember, you must correct um, incorrect bids with X's. Thank you for being understanding, Hades. I appreciate it. I appreciate the civility. All right, 30 Armadillidium. I'm getting tired of writing out Armadillidium and Cubaris. Versicolor Ukraine. Starting bid of $1. Uh, I'm kind of afraid to 
work with uh, Versicolor strains now because I don't know if I'm going to get pure stock or not. So, but I got these early on enough in the, the flood of Versicolor into the hobby that I think I'm probably good. Um, bring on the misc. I'm working. I'm working fast. Thanks. I have the song Excalibur stuck in my head. Did you do any orange Porcello Scaber? No, my colonies have been picked over pretty clean lately. Uh, probably at the spring auction, unless the pace keeps up. And I have a big feeling that when I do the site overhaul and put up a bunch of these uh, isopods and stuff with full descriptions and pictures, that uh, people are going to kind of flock to them. So I do mix some roaches with some isopods and some isopods with some roaches. We have 60 concurrent viewers in the live stream. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. We got a crowd here now. No Porcelio Expanses, unfortunately. We're still getting to some other good stuff, though. Here is the X for the Armadillidium Versicolor uh, from Ukraine. Um, we're getting into the down to the wire, the last, the good stuff, the crazy things are going on right now. Get in the line. All right. Going once for the Versicolor. Going twice. Sold. To Uhoa. Uh, Stankosaurus might have uh, might actually have gotten it. So I'm going to do a refresh. See what it says. Stankosaurus, you are... Not the winner, Uhoa, with a $30 winning bid with a period. You have won. Still no. Oh, you forgot the period. All right, that's okay. Next we have 20 Porcelionides Virgatus from Lafayette, Louisiana, starting bid of $1.00. Uh, Virgatus will probably be transferred to a new genus and also busted up in the future. There's going to be some some shaking up of uh, of uh, Porcelionides. Do roaches like acorn caps? Yeah, they do. Well, pretty much, they do like them. All right, an X. Um, it's basically they're 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 pretty cool. They're like a like a olive green with some red and pink and whatnot highlights on the edges. Photo. I was just on iNat trying to find a decent one. Let's see. Dang it, Bobby. Okay, here's some reports from around. Bring it around town. Around town. Here's a very blurry Porcelanites simp is I. This is a picture from INAT from nearby. The picture that was linked um, is actually of Virgatus from North Central Florida, so I'm going to take that away. The picture that I posted is uh, from is from basically the locality that's up for grabs. All right, here's an X. Man, somebody might get a uh, sell of Springdales will probably get them for a pretty good deal. All right, Porcelionides Virgatus from Lafayette. Uh, Louisiana going once, going twice, sold to, okay, I'm going to do a control R because, again, you guys are all dogpiling on at the last second. It makes my life not very easy. I'm, uh, I'm just writing in my little uh, thing here. And let's see who actually won. Stella's Springtails with a bid way up of $23. Wow, that's an upset. 
Everyone got in after the sold. Hilarious. That's okay. 50 Armadillidium Granulatum, just the hobby stock, whatever came in in like 2018. Starting bid, $1. I do like just the standard Granulatum. They're like more colorful, Vulgari, basically, on average. I do like them. Nothing bad to say about Granulatum. Surely a lot of these Armadillidium that people really foamed at the mouth for originally. Are you putting up any lavas? No, my lavas have been picked over. A lot of my scaber colonies have been picked over pretty hard. Um, I'm going to put up, we're coming up on some gene machines and a project um, stock, and that's about it. Um, don't don't cry just yet. We, gotta, we always have a bang-up finale, so keep that in mind. You're just a bot. You're back. I like granulatum. Stankosaurus needs to read the rules. I just put that in there. <laughs> okay. Granulatum. Again, a pretty really good uh, beginner species. Granulatum are. They're quite dry tolerant, even more so than Vulgari are. Going once on the big old thing of granulatum. Going twice. Sold. To lizard beans. With a winning bid of $27. Okay, okay. Now we have 30 Porcelio Scaber Gene Machine starting bid of $20. This is a big old locality mix of Porcelio Scaber. It's good stock for refining projects out of. There aren't any glaring simple recessives that will throw off your perception of different phenotypes. So there's no simple recessive oranges. There's no whiteouts. There's no Dalmatians. Uh, there's none of that stuff that could alter you making your selections and getting your projects further along as you work with them. Crispy ducks may be uh, on, on the table. Loki saying, uh, "Spit these spit out great things. I've started isolating from last fall. If you look at that picture... You may think you see an orange, a solid orange in the upper right, but if you look closely enough, there's actually a bit of black below the other um, isopods antenna, uh, and that's from the lava influence, just like that sort of individual more like to the center and left is. Um, so that's uh, you get a good variety of different things. How many more rounds of isopods? We got like six or seven things left in isopods. All right, here's an X4. Um, Gene Machine Scaber. Do a couple of scabers here. Again, we got like two. And then we delve into madness. All right, going once on the Gene Machines. Going twice. Sold. To Uhoa, winning bid of $30. Okay, next up we have Porcelio Scaber. We go a little different way with uh, Porcelio Scaber. We go to Porcelio Scaber, 30 of them. Porcelio Scaber, clean slate, starting bid of $20. This is a completely just gray Scaber line that has been true breeding for I think we're at like 10 generations now. This is for proving out other projects. You can do back crosses to this line safely to see if traits that you're looking at are simple recessive or not and how they may interact when crossed back to a wild type scaber. So this is an excellent line for people who are doing scaber projects uh, because there's because it's not, it's not particularly special. There's no red calicos. There's no yellow calicos. There's no simple recessives. There's no nothing. Just cons. There we go. Consistently gray scaber with with no 
heterozygous, no homos, nothing, just gray scaver that you can use for testing projects to see if you're chasing after a het or if you, you're actually on to something. Um, crispy ducks, yeah, I brought that up too. Um, I added some Excalibur to my gene machine mix. Was that? Um, no, it's. I mean, this is just, just a mix. Uh, Excalibur seems to be multi-gene. That skirting is multi-gene, so you're just adding a little bit more to the mix. Although, if you were trying to pull anything out of the gene machines, then you did just kind of like make it a little more complicated down the road. But uh, the Excalibur seemed to be multi-genes. Um, someone needs to cross those back to Dalmatians to clean them up. Uh, somebody tells Stankosaurus that he got contaminated Dal Dalmatians. Uh, that's why his are not clean. He should get some roach crossing stock. My estimate was pretty close. I might have. 28, yes. 15 for Phidippus. Yes, I'm working on that still too. All right. X for the clean slate scabers. Going once. Going twice. Sold to Rachel W. Congrats, Rachel. I'm curious to see what project you'll be using these for. Again, a great way to prove out projects. All right. We get into the final madness here, guys. We're getting into the final stuff. I'm going to go find a picture for this because this next one is special. All right, so we have a group of 15 Porcelio Scaber from the Rainbow Project line. I was going to, I was this close to releasing the line with its new strain name. With so, so this Rainbow Project stock, this is the stock that I've been taking pairs and stuff out of and refining this uh, variety from. And I've been, it's been two, two or three years now. I mean, it's accumulation of like over a decade of work trying to make certain, uh, certain phenotypes in Scaber. And I finally done the, done some really good pro crosses and gotten a really nice line of very colorful, consistent Scaber. And I was just kind of back and forth on, well, what do I want the males to look like? Do I want to let, is it okay if some of the males look like this, etc.? And I finally got my golden pairing for proving out this line. And I will be releasing it with its actual, the actual strain name at the spring auction. We will be there, but I wanted to just get one more generation out of them because this golden pairing produced basically exactly what I wanted in the offspring. But I want one more generation just to be absolutely sure because I think these will be very popular and I want to leave a big impact with something to show that line breeding and, and perseverance can really get you somewhere with isopods. It's not all about smuggling in stuff from Southeast Asia. So we have 15 of the Porcelio Scaber Rainbow Project. Again, there's a good amount of diversity in this. Some of the phenotypes I don't really want, but this golden pairing has produced them. This is the stock that I've pull, been pulling everything out of to work on this new big line that I'm excited to release. So... There's that. Here's a picture of the female a couple of generations back. Um, there you go. No photo. Sorry, Kyle's fault, though. Not mine if you think about it. Take photos of your Skaber and Vulgari lines, please. So, again, this is not – it's not a – I'm not labeling it as a strain. You know, I have everything that's like an unproven out project I call like project, and I will – if I release any individuals of that, I just call it project. They will have a strain name at the spring auction, and I will proudly display the beautiful phenotypes that I've been working on for, again, it's been over 10 years of work on stuff like this. It's combining lines of um, orange calicos. It's got U.S. lines of U.S. wild caught lines of red calicos in the genetics there. It's got lava mixed in. Lava was huge for getting this phenotype where I wanted it. Um, again, they just needed a, they need a couple of contributions from lava to really push them in the direction that I was excited about. So you can read a little bit more about that in my, uh, 2022 was when I posted the picture of this female. And again, it's 2023, almost 2024 In 2024. I will release the project. All right. Here's the X for the rainbow project. 
the rainbow stock. Again, uh, the, the final release name will not be Rainbow or Rainbow Project or something like that. They will have a special name to them uh, because they, they deserve it. And I had a very, there was an evening where I was doing my selecting for them and I had a very euphoric experience. Um, and I want to sort of capture that in the strain name for these guys. What even is sleep? All right, going once on the Skaber Rainbow stock. Going twice. Sold to Lizard Beans with a winning bid of $50. Thank you very much for your faith in this stock. Again, you will have this very diverse and very colorful stock to take in any sort of project direction that you feel like. I think if I can ever get a, if I can ever get a just simple recessive hypo scaber going again, I have to go raid the daylilies at the, um, at the big house Michigan stadium to find that gene. And um, if I could ever, if I can get that hypo gene, I would like to work it into this project. I think it would, it would do some interesting things. So Anyways, thank you, everybody. Let's wrap up the bidding with a couple of neat things we're going to do. A whole swarm chilling outside in my yard of Earwigs 8. Christarma Dilidium Miracatum, starting bid of $1, starting bid of exclamation point. Starting bid of $1. Of course, this is, again, the spiky pineapple isopods. And boy, do I love putting them up for sale. Uh, it will delight people to know that after two years, I finally got my hands on pseudo armadillo uh, spinosis again. I received a group from Carlos Michelson in 2021. And unfortunately, you know, I, I had to purchase them small. They were insanely expensive, but I understood. Um, and all five or six that I got were male. They all matured into males, and it sucked. It sucked so bad uh, to, to do that. Uh, Loki says, Kyle, sell me orange porcelain escaper so I can make regular tigers. Oh, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Kyle, I'm getting anxiety for what's next. Those look like they'd be fuzzy on the tongue. Yeah, it sucks so incredibly bad. So, but uh, again, from Carlos Michelson, I was able to get, uh, we were able to work something out for more uh, pseudo armadillo spinosis. And so I got in a group of, I think, 15 or 20 of them. Uh, he may have sent a couple of extras. And I think I've set them up in a fail proof setup. And we're going to see, we're going to hope that the odds are my favorites. A mix of sizes. You know, there's some tiny ones, there's some larger ones. We're going to hope that I got a mix of sexes. Because if I do and they get producing six months from now, you know what's going to be going up for a dollar starting bid option auction. Um, limestone is not necessary for that species. Otherwise, my males would have not have gotten huge and lived for a long time. Fail proof. Yeah, unless they're males, that's the thing. But this setup has worked for breeding a lot of other rare isopods in the past um, with very good results. It's called the Kyle throws them in with a millipede and forgets about them uh, style of setup. Did someone say ear rigs? That's funny. All right, spiky pineapples. Again, guys, we're getting into our final bids here. Here's an X for the spiky pineapple isopods, Cristarmodilidium muricatum. Going once. Going twice. Sold. Two. I'm going to control R and see what's going on here. The ice pods eat the poop. The ice pods love the poop. Loki style of setup is good substrate and then forget them for a month or two and go, oh, expletive. Uh, open the container, babies. Yeah, millipede people would hate that. Uh, millipede people hate a lot of things, though. But uh, my Trachelopus caucasius, in with my Centrobolus, my Reductiniscus, in with my Flame Legs, my Cristarmodilidium, are in with my Ivory Millipedes, 
and everybody's very happy together. He eat the poo poo. All right, I uh, just refreshed and Z Arbs, Arbs has one with a bit of the nice number. Winning bid of $69 from Arbs. W. All right, all right. Next up, we have another group of 12 Cubaris species white shark starting bid of $1. I do really love these guys. Um, Insect Central, I mean, I had a Scarlet with my Zebra, no lie, a year later, he was chilling. I, it's, it's, my, it's one of my ace in the holes for starting a lot of stuff. If I have a happy colony of millipedes that's on the upswing and I really want to get an isopod going, toss the isopods in with them. You know, some exceptions, if it looks like it's going to be a substrate sh shredder, I won't put it in there. But uh, I'm going to be straight up with you guys. Those pseudo armadillo spinosis are chilling with the uh, Archaeospira streptus gigas right now. And that's how it's going to be. <laughs> so. Uh, Hyla says, Hypo would look amazing on those rainbows. Purple and orange speckles. There is a gene in Europe. They sell it as Porcelio scaber ghost. And it is a simple recessive hy hypo. But the thing is, the uncultured swine in the U.S. will probably not bring it in. And if they do, it's going to be lost in the sea of other things that are being called ghosts and have been called ghosts since like 2019. So that's the problem uh, with that. So to get that good hypo line, I need to go to the daylilies near the steps at uh, U of M Stadium in Ann Arbor and grab like 100 scaver there, get a huge colony going, and then pick out the hypos that are in there. Because I did it once and I'll do it again. It goes straight to twenty dollars. Yeah, you guys should let me win the next one for one dollar, just for funsies. Just a hilarious funsy funsy. How would you get an import from Europe? Um, apparently, people do it legally, supposedly supposedly uh same as they supposedly legally import from southeast asia so can we bid on a pair of your socks kyle um i'd go up to 50 for that trust me if that's your thing there may be something getting bid uh that you'll be very interested in all right cubara species white shark going once Going twice. Sold. To Hades 2 with a winning bid of $60. Hades has that beetle pixel strat. Of uh of uh dialing it up a bit. I haven't seen Beetle Pixel. You guys should be thanking your lucky stars. Beetle Pixel's not here today. Okay, now the moments you've all been waiting for. We have a group of twelve Cubaris species rubber ducky, and the line name has been picked. It is Crispy Duck. Starting bid of $40. These are the rubber duckies that I have bred to have solid coloration. Not solid gray coloration, but the picture-perfect rubber ducky isopod without the extra infringement of yellow. This is a line. I continue to refine it, and I actually have some really good stock that I pulled aside. So it's pretty much there. I will continue to, over the next couple of years, just keep really getting it, really, really getting it really nice and crisp. We're going to just, we're not going to let up on the crispiness. What I'll probably continue doing uh, for years is I'll look at the colony and I'll say, oh, wow, those five, those guys are real crisp. And I'll pick them up, 
I'll slap them in a random millipede or roach enclosure. I'll stick the little label crispy ducky with a little star next to it. And then I'll just continue doing that process for years and years. But I've gotten a good, the strain is at a good enough place that I can release it with the name. And I think it was, was it Loki who recommended that? I think it was. What makes them crisp? Lemon blues, please. No lemon blues or Jupiters, but if if all goes well, I just think they need. If all goes well, uh, we'll have a good number of both at the spring auction. Left in the oven for extra five extra minutes. Uh, opinions on keeping leeches. These guys have been going insane for me. That's really good, Hylas. Again, I would say if you have any weird ones that do pop up or any that start to waver in the color, I would do a call of them. Uh, again, we're a couple of generations in. But it's not simple recessive, it's multi-gene, so a little bit of work is required. Uh, but hopefully one day it'll just become so ridiculously fit. I mean, again, this next generation, I don't see any individuals that I want to call, but I will do a call anyways. I'll sit there for five minutes and eyeball like 10 of them in a white deli cup and think, mm, that one's got a little, little, little sliver of yellow. Maybe that could get bigger if it molted again, you know. We were to be an investigation into Beetle Pixel's sudden disp disappearance. Poor guy. Ice spots do like roach malts and they like the poop a lot. Very crispy. Oh, Loki sent some pictures of the crispy ducks. Again, they lack, they lack, they're not like the the straight up wild colonies of rubber ducky, which do have some variation, including more yellowy individuals. These have been selectively bred for several generations now. Did I put an X down already? If I did, then I'm going to put an X down and stop talking. All right, crispy ducks, Cubara species, rubber ducky, crispy duck. Going once. Did I say crispy duck or crispy ducks? Loki, I can't remember if you wanted to. crispy duck. Crispy duck. Yeah. Crispy duck. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To DUI with a winning bid of 130. Wonderful. Rubber ducky. Oh, once I autofilled it, just rubber ducky. Crispy duck. Oh, Victor really does not like something that's outside right now. Thank you so much for everybody who bid on those. I love seeing people who enjoy my projects. I mean, it's part of the reason why I refine stuff is that people will, again, I just think they're neat. That's, 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 that's what I can hope for with a lot of my projects is just people saying, I just, I just think they're neat. That's the best that I can hope for. Auctions once a month. This is fun. No, auctions are two-ish times a year. All right, crispy ducks are out of the way. All right, everybody. Loki says this is hilarious after getting some from you for free last time. I know. Well, Loki, you named them. You found the perfect name that stuck. So, um, Okay. We were entering the end game, guys. Some of you knew what was coming. We have a group of 100 Cubara species, rubber ducky, starting bid of $1. The end game of isopods. Actually, I say the end game, but there's one more thing I want to put up for auction, actually, because somebody was wanted said they kind of wanted to get some, and I think I have some more to spare. So I'll put that up after this. So this is the, the semi-penultimate uh, battle kind of i guess but uh okay okay let's check in my records here gotta check the records bro i'm gonna put baby roaches in all my bins i like to use dubious for that because they're quite versatile they don't climb uh they live a long time and they poop a lot Panthera Nico ordered a horseshoe crab roach. He out of the other roaches and is active. He won't burrow today. Just clean their cage with out with a fresh layer of coconut so he won't burrow. That's a pretty bad sign, usually, Panthera. 100 ducks. Yes, uh, 100 uh, Cubara species rubber ducky. I bid 
my own soul wallet six feet under um and it can be yours why do y'all need to go up so high right way would rubber duckies do well in the deaths had been maybe um i had i had blonde duckies the actual true blonde duckies in with my riparobia cf capeloi for quite a while and then I didn't water for a bit, and it got way too dry in there, uh, and that killed them off. Actually, um, what have I kept them with? Let's see. I had that viv in my bathroom where I left the light on twenty four seven, and so the the duckies actually never got to sleep. Uh, I was going to call those insomniacs, but I dismantled the viv and I let it dry out too. It dried out too much while I was on an Arizona trip, and they died out unfortunately. Um, so that, that flopped. Um, I've kept them with dubias. Haven't kept them with hissers yet, but I could. Kept them with millipedes. The current um, top picks of crispy ducks are in with my Narcius Americanus uh, albino uh, currently. Did I put an X in here already? Yeah, it is it actually 100, but is they, yes, it actually literally. People who are asking if it's 100, it is actually 100, and you will get 100 because to pack them, I will literally sit there and pick out and count every single one, which is what I do with most of my stuff. With orders of like 500, I will usually just, I will, it's a dollop of roaches or isopods or whatever, and I will get a rough count with my eyes. But then what I'll also do is be like, okay, let's make sure there's some gravid females in here and all that other stuff so that even if it's not exactly like 500, when, by the time you open the box and set them up, you're likely to have babies and be over that. Okay, here's an X wrapping up the bidding on the big ducky group. Going to sift my rhino roaches and toss the poop and ice. They will probably love rhino roach poop, actually. How many arachnids do you have lined up? Well, it's looking like we're going to do some uh, Phidippus act after all. Uh, some Johnson Eye and then some Desert Mix. Of stuff. Still a steal of a deal. Red runner poop. So Blanid's um, Paraplanita poop, uh, Paraplanita Americana and, and Lateralis poop, something may be weird about it that kind of discourages isopods from eating it. It's just something I've noticed with just those two species. I haven't seen it with Brunea, Australasii, Fuliginosa, or Doralea, all those I've kept isopods with over time. But something about Americana and um, Ladderless Poop is, does not seem the best for isopods. Beetle Pixel about to snipe with a thousand watch. All right. Going once on the big lot of rubber duckies. Going twice. Sold. Dare I open my eyes? Who's it going to be? Who's going to be standing? Eric with a winning bid of $202, beating out the resident master of Dr. Hmroid by a narrow margin. Congratulations. We're going to wind down from that really quick with a bid that for something that somebody wanted. Um, a group of 15 Porcelio Verneri, great Greek shields. I'm going to like that Borat, that Borat GIF. I got to like that. Um, 15 Porcelio Verneri, Greek shield isopod, uh, starting bid of $1. Again, I'm just going to get those out there. Somebody who wanted some and was disappointed because they, they didn't get something that they wanted. I figure I've got plenty of Verneri right now, so I might as well share a little bit of the love with everybody. Uh, I would also like to say uh, big McThankies from McSpankies, everybody, all 60 of you in the chat right now. This is not only the biggest live stream. Maybe I've hit 64. No, maybe it was 54. This is probably the biggest crowd at a live stream that I've ever had. 
as well as this as of now, actually as of a while ago, actually, um, has been the most successful auction yet by a very large margin. And I am horrified to see what next year's auction is going to be like <laughs> if this keeps up. Um, uh, Bitter Blood, the Simon Doe is a mixed count of uh, mostly, uh, usually it's just nymphs, um, but there may be some adults in there. Uh, Alan John says somebody needs to investigate where Dr. Humroid's money is coming from. Orang Mango, I feel silly stocking all my roach bins with miniature purples. Um, 100 online users on Discord, too. Just a landslide across the board. You guys are making me feel, you guys are making me feel so fine right now. Uh, and I would also say, I don't know if she's listening, but I'm just going to say a shout out to my lovely girlfriend, Angela, who's been keeping the house intact behind the scenes, not just intact. She's been doing a bunch of cooking and cleaning um, and just being an absolutely wonderful person. And I want to thank her because I would not be alive right now if it weren't for her, because I would have starved to death or soiled myself or soiled my environment. And I really got to I really got to give her some props for that. You can thank us by lifting Hermodorus. I tried to get Hermodorus, Phil. I tried to get Hermodorus for the auction, but I was unable to. So, um, Angela, everybody's thanking you for keeping me alive. And those in this Amorpha 100% have run out of food. So I'm going to have to go get food for these guys later tonight. I'm probably going to give them oak because I have an oak tree right outside the house and we're past oak wilt season. So, okay. We're not done with isopods, guys. We're not done yet. We have one last thing to go up. Are you ready for another five count of Marulanella species? Red Diablo starting bid of... Sorry, it says exclamation point. One dollar, a single dollar for five red Diablos. Would you say sea grape leaf litter is good for isopods? You can find Venezilla parvus, um, Cubaris murina, and Porcelanides floria in sea grape litter in Florida. So it's probably pretty, and probably the Illumoides, probably some other tinier isopods. Um, so and Atlant Atlantosia floridana as well. So maybe Floridoniscus. I think it's Floridoniscus, uh, Floridosia. Um, those uh, also do well in that. So I'd say yeah, it's probably pretty good for them. Who won the last one? I can't remember who. Uh, guy got the Roths brewing roaches. Will there be any roach? There might be. I got to see what's in the colony. I know I at least confirmed I had twenty five nymphs. Kyle didn't even end the Verneri. Oh. I didn't. I didn't end the Verneri? <laughs> um, well, there's just one solution here. Um, cause I got, I got in over my head apparently. Um, redo on both of them. I gotta keep the Diablos running, but, um, I'm just going to make a quick note to at Luch and at Dr. Dead Stuff that we will have a sudden death for you for the Verneri. Guys, I'm really sorry about that. I was just ready to throw the, the hype train into free fall. There. Where's the last bit on the um, Red Diablos? Um, okay. Dr. Humroid with a $200 winning bid. Uh, did, I, did I even do all of these? H. Huh. Okay. I guess we do have one more isopod bid after this. Uh, I was I was really ready to get onto other stuff, guys, but uh, fate had something else in store for me. We will get to the. I'm lost. What? Um. Oh, Luch. We're gonna we're gonna have to do the the Vernerize, guys. 
I'm going to, we're going to have to redo them. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry that this happened. I'm going to, I'm going to delete this and just do an ad. Everyone, we will redo the Verneri auction. Sorry. I got carried away in the live stream with the red Diablo hype. All right, there we go. Um, now let me scroll up and see where we're at with the Red Diablos. X for Red Diablo. All right, we're going to wrap up the Red Diablos before I end up responsible for heinous actions, according to somebody. Um, going once on the Marulanella Red Diablos. Going twice. And sold to I gotta scroll all the way up here to Dr. Humroid with a winning bid of two hundred dollars. Well all right then okay. Congrats on winning one of the uh, biggest hype things of uh, of today, Dr. Humroid. Uh, we're going to redo the Verneri auction. Rulinella, Red Diablo, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, I know. Autofill everything. We're going to redo the Verneri auction. 15, Orcelio, Verneri, the Greek Shield, starting bid of $1. Dr. Humroid, sorry, I... <laughs> It's like uh, it's a good derivative of a derivative. Mm -hmm. Dr. Hem Dr. Hemroid, Dr. Humroid, Dr. Hermroid. It just keeps going. It's good to leave leaf litter in water for months. I heard they, the water does not necessarily decay it, but it leaches out tannins, which allows it to decay much more quickly. And a lot of ice pods will not eat dry leaf litter, but they will eat it if it's been rehydrated and if it's lost a lot of those phytochemicals. So congratulations, Dr. Humroid. And thank you, Photo Gallery Bot. Again, I forgot we actually do have one more auction after this. I keep dragging my feet. But again, I don't know why I didn't put it up before. But it's pretty hype. It'll be a pretty hype species. You outbid yourself. That's okay. He's cementing his bid. All right, X for the Verneri. I do not want to be here. I will be here all night. Does not mean I want to be here all night. And I will probably take a quick break, like a 20-minute break after isopods to go see Angela, see if she would like to join us. And also, my parents bought some co some tiramisu, like coffee cake stuff from a, uh, a Arab bakery in Dearborn. It's divine, and it's calling me because I need to eat. So, all right. Porcelio Verneri going once. Going twice. Sold to Lizard Beans with a winning bid of $50, a snipe, Lizard Beans. Okay, I got a... Yo, man, can I get a... Lizard Beans. All right. Last one, everybody, for real, though. For real, for real, for real. We have eight troglodillo species, green spots, starting bid of $1. Vote for continuing this auction. I will not continue this auction tomorrow. If if post this, this section of auction does not go well, I will consider doing it on Tuesday instead after my freaking root canal finishing up i think that they're just they i think they killed it last time and i think now they're putting like the finishing thing on it uh and surprisingly though it may not seem like it with how much carbonated stuff i drink i do actually take good care of my teeth uh, i used to brush twice a day but i started to get gum erosion so now i brush once a day um pretty hardcore and i sometimes have mouthwash especially in the winter when my mouth is really dry and i floss i floss sometimes multiple times a day 
if I've been eating a lot of stuff that gets stuck in my teeth. Of course, Dr. Humroid did it. The Hopter Humroid, he, he T-posed and asserted dominance with a $70 bid already. Um, they say that would happen, not watching the stream. ML Port's not watching the stream. We gotta, we're at 65, 64, well, it was 65 a second ago, I think. 64 concurrent viewers. Absolutely nuts. Kyle, I had to get a root canal. You have to go back in and they take out the temporary and put in the permanent. It took 25 minutes. Yeah, that's what's probably going to happen. Um, but my dentist is also there. 65 viewers. There we go. My dentist is also about 35 minutes away. Um, so it's a it's a trek. And I will go see my mom because it's out where my parents live. So I'll go see my mom when I'm done. So don't talk about desserts if you're not going to share with the chat. I'm not going to eat in front of you guys. Not that stuff. You guys can watch me eat noodles and cheese all day, but I'm not going to eat something like that. Um, boy, we really, the movement here. Here's the X. Here's the X for the Troglodillo species green spots. The last isopod auction of the day of the auction. Well, we might do some lightning round stuff depending on things, but the last Troglodillo, the last big stuff. Here we go. Here you go, everybody. Get it in while you can. We only have two pages of uh, miscellaneous and grain pest stuff, actually. And actually, we do got to... Maybe if we get we get into 11 o'clock, I'll start going at the grain pass because we do want to do that late. I'll go get some drinks. We'll actually have a fun time. And if anything, if we do the auction extension, maybe we'll do the stuff that's not grain pass then. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Auctions, bugs to pay for root canal. Smart move. Here's an X. Ryan's Peter. These are actually quite large. Let me check uh, iRuler.net. Uh, the biggest ones I've seen are about maybe like 22 millimeters. They're quite large. Should put a green pass up during break. All right. Dr. Humroid versus Dr. Dead Stuff for the Troglodillos. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Zulo with a winning bid of $76. A snipe dethroning both of the doctors. Zulo laughs in the face of modern medicine. It is a joke to him. Congratulations, Zulo, for winning the last of the isopod auctions at the Roach Crossing October 2023 Bugapalooza. And now... I have no inventory left to do. I'm going to go enjoy Angela's presence, have some tiramisu, and I will be back in about 20 minutes. And maybe Angela will be with me, maybe not. And we will get on to the misc and grainy boys. I'm still going to try and get those Fittipus again. It's not confirmed yet, but I'm working on it. Uh, let me back at 10. Nazi sounds like she's being a pest. So I'll be back at, we're going to just say 10, 10 Eastern. All right, everybody. Here you go. Nazig sounds like she's being Victor up right now. Okay, guys. There you go. I put this over here. I'll see you in a little bit. I didn't realize that I was talking for a couple minutes, so I'm going to do 10.15, actually, for my sanity and everybody else's. <laughs> 